train for what's about to happen today. The world's best have arrived in Brisbane, Australia to once again challenge themselves and each other on some of Action Sports' biggest ranks. It's FMX, Skate, BMX, and Scooter, all under one roof, and it's about to go down here at the iconic Suncorp Stadium in Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. After two long years, we are back where we need to be in the heart of action sports in the Southern Hemisphere. Beautiful Brisbane, Australia. More skate parks per capita than any other country in the world. We are about to progress action sports in ways it has never been done before. These ramps you see here are not available to the public. They are only debuted at the Nitro World Games and we have the greatest riders on the planet just fiending to ride them. Today is going to be about progression. Today is going to be about awesomeness. And I cannot wait to see what's going on. We've got some good friends down on the course. One of the greatest female action sports riders on the planet with Mr. Travis Pastrana. Caroline Buchanan, take it. I'm Caroline Buchanan. We are down here in the middle of Suncorp Stadium, the iconic Brisbane. The sun is out, which the guys are very happy. I'm down here with none other than himself, Travis Pastrana. Tell us about the history of Nitro World Games and how we've ended up here today. Nitro World Games is the big air of action sports. It's when you have something that you've never done before. So many athletes with so many tricks that they've never landed. So many tricks that no one has ever seen anywhere in the world, and it's all going down right now. This event's been postponed since 2020. We had rain delays all week. They are chomping at the bit and ready to send it. History is going to be made. Give everyone an insight into these ramps, the courses, what's changed and what can we expect to see? Uh, there's nothing that you can uh, even explain the height of all of these ramps. The riders have so much input. It's not just like this is your standard ramp. It's like how can we possibly make this ramp so you can do something that no one else has ever even thought of, no one has ever done before. So to get out here and just to see everything on this magnitude here in Suncorp Stadium, I mean there's quadruple backflips, there's to contemplating on scooters, there's triple backflips on dirt bikes. They're warming up with double backflip variations on dirt bikes. I mean it shows my age. This is something that made my career and it's a warm-up trick here at Suncorp. It is. Well, while the world went to the sleep, these action sport athletes went to work. Suncorp Stadium, give it up for Travis Pastrana. Thank you so much for the sense Caroline, I love that you just talked to the GOAT of all times. From the, from the words himself, the man that's pushed action sports so hard and now opened up the doors. We are going to get right into our uh, list, start list. Go ahead, Was. So, first off the bat, we're going to have Jaden Stanley, a local from here in Brisbane, backed up by Nick Seddon, fresh off the plane, He's just been to the World Championships. Tommy Dang from Victoria, Luke Berlin from Sydney, Byron Mitchell from New South Wales in Newcastle, Dane Forbes from a similar region, Jack Ward all the way from the UK, Reese Rogers as well, and then onto the current world champion, Chris Farris, Dylan Morrison, Jack Churchwood, Will Barlow, Hunter Frost, Zay Chapel, Rumet Salik, and Ryan Williams. Today they're going to be sending it. Best trick, it is literally go down the ramp, throw the biggest banger you can, and then it's up to the judges, which I'm glad we're not dealing with, Marco, because we are in for one hell of a show today, guys. Absolutely, and with that, why don't we learn a little bit about Scooter with uh, our next piece. My favorite moment in Scooter Best Trick has to be 2016, Wright Zeckel Stadium. All the skateboarders and all the people in the crowd were looking at like, ah, oh, And then our Willie drops in. First rider down, triple flip, double twisty mix, whatever he did. And everyone's jaw dropped. No one had any idea what just happened.
the Gigantic Ram. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Micah Kranz. With me, Warren Bynum, we call him the Waz. We are getting a bird's eye view of one of the greatest sights you will ever see. How to properly use a stadium. You put stunts inside of it. Look at this amazing setup. We have the greatest crowd here in Australia. And let's not waste any time and get right into what we do best, and that is competition. You see it on his shirt right there. Team Stanley, the whole of Australia, and especially the home crowd here in Brisbane is going to be getting behind this young lad. Jaden Stanley is known for the Stanley flip, and we might see it on this first hit here. There it is. Stanley flip to late flip. So he does a double back flip and a Stanley or an inward bra flip in the middle of that. That is insane. Making it look like light work for the first hit. As you can see, he's just trying to relax there. Let that adrenaline sink into the body. What a way to kick this competition off, guys. How hard is it? You're at the biggest stage of your life. You're the first guy in a contest for two years. You better pull something you know you're going to roll away from. Mate, he's got ice in his veins right now. I know he does this trick quite a lot up at our Willy Land, not too far from here on the Sunshine Coast. But to make it look that epic, first hit in front of the crowd as well mate I don't know how he's done it here we can just see another replay of it there boom straight into that second flip as soon as he catches the Stanley flip he just dips his shoulders back rotates it around like I said light work for Jaden there he's gonna be stoked with that one and hopefully the judges are too mucker you can see him just taking deep breaths trying to make sure he's where he needs to be well, that's a perfect first trick that's what we like to see people rolling away smooth and uh, literally, this is the biggest we've ever had this ramp set up. It's at 40 feet. Normally, in the live show, it's about 32. The riders said they wanted to go fast. They brought single lane Giganta. We are going to see nothing but monster-sized tricks all day long. It's going to be different, different echelon for sure. There we go. And Jaden Stanley's scores come in at 81.33. He's going to be stoked with that one. Like I said before, what a way to kick this off. Young Nick Seddon dropping in next. He's fresh off the plane, literally been back in Australia maybe four or five days. He was in the States for the World Championships. He's just 18 years of age and from the Gold Coast, just a little south of here, so he's going to have a lot of the family out here supporting him. I wonder what he's got. Oh, a little shaky there, but a huge Whoa. backflip into the late flip. The boys are going for the doubles, Micah. I think because the ramp is so much bigger than what we get at the skate park, they've just got to send that second flip around. And that's just it. You mentioned the World Championships just last week. That was at a concrete skate park in Havasu, I think. Yep, We're talking yep. about a six-foot-tall box jump. This is almost a 13, 14-foot-tall box jump. I mean, this is a whole different world. You can see him kind of get the G out wiggles at the bottom of that thing. Exactly. He didn't look in control coming down the roll-in, but then he hits the jump, take off, super smooth. Nick's going to be stoked with that one as well. As you can see it there in the replay, a little bit sketchy, but huge extension there laying it out into the second flip. Nick's going to be really stoked on that one. I love it. Just getting something ready for his next trip, get his score laid down. I mean, he completely, we, we've, we've abandoned all of the formats we had. We just went to the best trick, which is, I think, the best format we can have. What you can do, how you can do it, it's now back to freestyle competition, and I love that about 100%. this. 100%. And you know the craziest thing about this, he's got 30 on a double backflip. You do a double backflip in a normal skate park run, you're scoring podium, pretty much standout. Here we have Tommy Dang. He's been around the sport forever. 28 years old from Victoria. This guy is around the world. Backpack, scooter, you name it. Wow! wow. Tommy going huge on that one. I think he was going to go for a backflip body burial, which is in his trick bag, but not really in many people's. He's, uh, he's one of his own. I mean, that, one of his own. that is cool. That's some creativity. And he took a shot there, too. I mean, you saw him try to kind of walk it off and shake it off, but... This stuff hurts. There's no two ways about it. This ramp is no joke, Micah. We don't really get to play around on this too often. Our Willie's got the bag up at his house, but the guys are really going to take this opportunity to throw the biggest and baddest tricks they can because we do not get the chance to ride this off. Oh, that's crazy. That is awesome. I mean, a short score, but as you can say, he is motivated to get back up there. It says a lot about the mindset of these athletes to take a shot like that and want to do it again. 100%. Tommy's one of those guys as well. He's just stoked to be out here. But another legend on stoked. deck right now, <laughs> Luke Berland. I grew up riding with this guy in Sydney. He's originally from Padstow. These days, he's on the Sunshine Coast. What's he got for us here? Huge backflip Superman, losing the bars a little bit on that one. I think he might have tried to throw a little bar spin in there, but he's just a Jecto Cito cast, and he's literally chilling. He's in shorts and a T-shirt. Yeah, he's marker. got tattoos for protective gear. I'm pretty sure is how that works out. If you know Luke, that's kind of his factor. He just doesn't really care. He's super cruisy, tough as nails, and he's been battered years and years. I've seen him crash, get yeah. back up, crash, get back up. Next on deck. Byron Mitchell. This guy has some bangers in his locker, Mark. Uh, riding for Envy Scooters. We're not sure what we're going to see this first hit, but it could be one of the best tricks you've ever seen on a scooter if we know Byron. Whoa! 
going huge. Just, just going over that one. And as you see, the speed carries him over. He's gone for the double backflip. I believe it was double whip, kickless, kickless. I could be wrong. We do only have the quick viewing of it there. Hopefully, we'll get a replay of him. We're not too sure. No, we'll give him another chance at yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But he's going to have another hit, which is the most important thing. I think the hardest thing for a lot of these guys, Mike, is, you know, they've had practice and stuff like that, but the adrenaline kicks in, and this is one of those ramps where that split second more time or that little bit extra pull, it just keeps you going. Like, you're going to over-rotate, you're going to go too big. It sends you way higher than anything they're used to at the skate park. Yeah, I mean, what's it like sticking your foot in a ceiling fan of just scooter decks going like crazy? Honestly, mate, I'm not one of the ones that does it, to be <laughs> honest. I like to stick to the rails, doing board slides and stuff like that now, but we've all copped a razor to the ankle in our time. Dane Forbes is no stranger to that, and he's on deck right now. One of the other guys that was representing Australia at the World Championships not too long ago, he's uh, riding for Apex Pro Scooters, and they're based not too far down the road, so I'm sure the whole crew will be out supporting him for this one. How much of a hub is this area for action sports? Mate, right now, the hub for scootering is definitely here. Southeast Queensland, the Gold Coast. But there's riders from all around Australia. Dane's from the Central Coast in New South Wales. Um, Whoa. I knew we were going to see something like this. That's why I took a little breath there because Dane is one of the riders that just has his own unique flair. You'll see a bri flip or a back scooter flip or something like that, but Dane chucks a little twizzle in there, does like a little bar spin in the middle. For a commentator, it's a nightmare to call because yeah. you pretty much don't know what you're going to watch, but I've seen Dane do this kind of stuff time and time again. That is so cool. He kind of grabbed the scooter in the air and then flicked it around, caught it again. I mean, it's almost like a finger flip on a skateboard, but on a, what, 30-pound aluminum scooter? Yeah, like, that's exactly. That's a different game. And he kind of throws it like a back scooter flip or like a bra flip to set the motion and then twizzles it around. It looks like something out of the Harlem Globetrotters, oh, to be honest. Oh, I love it. Look at that. Brisbane is all about this. I can't wait. Well, Stanley set the mark. Uh, and by, I mean, you can see he's well, well ahead. I think Luke Berlin has a chance. Who do, who do you like seeing going forward? Well, mate, dropping in right now. We have a running joke. For, like, whenever half bars, Jack Ward right here drops a clip on Instagram. Whoa. Wow, getting tangled up on that one. Like I was saying, though, whenever half bars drops a clip, we all just go, oh, did you see half bars clip? Because it's usually something that blows your mind. It's like one of those things that goes around the group chats. But Jazz, you see there, Jack coming a little unstuck. He's going to hope he can get on for the second one. He, uh, in practice this morning, came off early. First hit, the sun was scorching on the resi landing and he tore some skin off his hand. So you'll see on his right hand, it's bandaged up. That could have came into play. It, just, it does look like he just got a little tangled there, which when you're in this game and you're doing the tricks that Jack's doing, it's kind of part of Let's talk about how long he's in the air, just clueless. Because when that goes wrong right about there, you normally would think the ground is coming quickly. You have another two, three, four full seconds before you brace for impact. And that's gotta be a, kind of a mind-jarring scenario. 100%. It's one of the beauties of riding the Giganta ramp because you do have those extra seconds. And for these guys, that's focus. They can look at adding that extra trick. They can spot their landing and get away with it. But this guy right here, yeah. Reese Rogers, 19 years old. He's from Melbourne. I've known this kid since he was a little whippersnapper, about four or five years old. He's actually got the world's youngest backflip on a scooter. He did it at six. Whoa. There we have it. A huge triple backflip, no hand up. Reese letting all guns blaze on that first hit. I thought he might have played it safe, but Reese is definitely yeah. not out to play games today. Dude, I follow this kid on Instagram. He's got some of the wildest clips out there. I mean, I love watching the style guys, and he's definitely one of them. And he went for the biggest uppercut possible in the fight of the world games. Three flips, no hands, and that's a 40 foot gap. Like, that is monstrous. And more importantly, should we talk he over rotated? <laughs> like, what does that say about it? It says a lot for the progression <laughs> of scootering. I was one of the first to do a double backflip way back in the day, 10 plus years ago now. Reese makes doubles look like light work, and all morning he's been doing the triple to the bag. So to see him take the hands off first hit, the confidence is definitely there. Look, he looks calmer exactly. now, that, now that he took that shot. He looks almost more like. He's ready to go. Talking to some hill willies over yeah, there. Yeah, getting some tips from the boys, Harley and Gecko. He's just going to want to relax for this second one. He knows he's got the rotation down. It's all about just sticking it in his next attempt. Oh, what nerve wracking this must be. Again, everyone's chasing Stanley. Our first competitor is still on top. Well, this man has something to say. Yeah, Chris Farris. His current rank is world number one, Mike. 23 years of age. He's out of just north of LA in a little place called Morro Bay. Oh, Whoa. going huge. I know Chris wants to put down a huge cash roll combo. I know he wants to chuck a couple whips and bars in there. So I think that's just him easing into the trick he actually wants. But nonetheless, going absolutely wild on that first hit for Farris. I watched that cash roll by people houses in my life. To see variations like this just shows how much this pulls, pulls forward. It's yeah, a yeah. wild trick. 
the cash roll makes absolutely no sense to me, Mike. I've been around guys like Brandon Lupos, you know, R. Willie. There's plenty of other dudes in scootering who make it look so easy. But I just can't wrap my head around it. And here we have someone else that's got it in the locker, Dylan Morrison. The ramp is so much speed. A huge Whoa. triple. Oh! Dylan just going down pretty hard there, but he looks to be unscathed, Micah. Man, he took a shot at the bottom there. And that's just it. If you don't land perfectly in the sweet spot of this ramp and you go too long, you pay dire consequences. And the only way to look at these ramps is it's not safe. It just takes the edge off. Yep. Instead of us having to rush paramedics over there, he can walk off and now talk to them. That's about the only difference of these things. It is a horrific, violent crash. Yeah, the way that I like to put it is, you know, it might soften the landing, but it actually gives the boys more confidence to send. So the send factor goes up, the difficulty and the risk that they run is there. There you can see a huge triple flip. Oh. Seems to land perfect, but I actually think he landed just in the middle of the mat or the tarp on top of the ramp. Yep. And I think that that's just kind of giving him a little bump, throwing him over the bars, but Dylan looks all right there. He went 56 feet on a 40 foot gap. Yep, it's no joke out there. And the speed is one of those things that it's just hard to judge. When you've got that much adrenaline in you, you kind of forget where you are and you just have to take the ramp for what it is. There's no turning back once you've I mean, gone down that roller. I dare you to speed check a triple backflip in nah, your life. There's I'll no one's, no one's ever going to say, oh, you're going too fast for a triple back. Exactly. Here we have the man, the myth, the legend, Jack Churchwood out of Gladstone. This guy currently rides for MB Scooters. Going for the huge backflip bar spin. I think Jack just wanted to feel one out, get a nice little score on the board. As we've seen a lot of crashes early on, that could come down to the podium later in the day. He's on the podium right now. I mean, yeah. that says a lot about game planning. And I mean, how much is that going into that? Did, did, did the scooter guys think about that much? Do you guys get together and like put some formulas out there or just send it and see what happens? Jack's one of those guys that usually just sends it and sees what happens. But I spoke to him a little earlier today and I said, mate, this is one hell of a competition. It is going to be so tight. You really have to play it smart, get that first hit out and then go for gold. Yeah, exactly. It's a beautiful maneuver. It's a great way of thinking. Again, he's going to be on top three in the podium just for that one jump. And, and he's going to get a couple more shots. I know what he's going to come in. Well, I think I know what he's going to come in in his second and third hits. And it is a way, way, way more difficult trip than what we've just seen from Jack. So fingers crossed you guys are in for the show. Here we have it. The man, Will Barlow, a.k.a. Barzi. We know he's got a big trick in his locker. He's, there's rumors oh, he floating it. around camp that he wants to try something that has never been done on Look a scooter at his before. Eyes. You can see this kind of adrenaline in a man right now, and I think he's going to send it, Mike. Oh, let him hear you, Brisbane. Here we go. Drops in. Flat. Oh, that's going to be four. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. Barzi trying the first quad flip right there in front of this crowd here in Suncorp Stadium. Terry Price. The actual man behind the double backflip and scootering, giving him props. And he's just doubled Terry's crazy game-changing trick. Will Barlow is pumped right now. The vibes are high. The crowd are loving it. Come on, Barzi. We want to see that one stuck, mate. That would change the game. He would be the third person in the existence of the world to roll away from a quadruple backflip on anything with wheels. There's Jed Milden, Brandon Schmidt, and it'd be this man. And what an absolute way to cement your name into the history books to get it done on this stage, on this ramp. How close was he? How close was he? You know, we're watching the replay there and I still put my hands on my head. I have goosebumps after watching that one. Barzi would be running on pure adrenaline right now. As you can see, Mike, scores are 16, which is kind of a variant for the difficulty. of. Obviously, he didn't uh, roll away from it and land it, but the gnarliness of that gives him a couple of the points to jump up. And he's sitting in fourth place right now just for that send factor. Yeah. That's just it. Like, a lot of contests have lost that where they want consistency, consistency. Like, we want burliness. Yep. And right here, Hunter Frost. He's had a pretty rough couple of days off the plane, got food poisoning. Wow. Whoa. Nothing front scooter flip. Catches it. He's just come unstuck. He's risking it with the all white, don't you think, Micah? On I the don't know. <laughs> you know how the guys think. I'm wearing all white so I don't fall. And then that comes back to get you once in a while. But I think it helps you be in scene and help you do variations. Again, there's some conscious things that you can do to make yourself bigger in this sport. 100%. He goes for the nothing front, kick heel, goes for the grab, and I think he wants to finger it back on that one, but just coming unstuck. Massive shout out to Hunter Frost. He hasn't been he hasn't been well, sorry. He's been sitting in the athletes' lounge, feeling sorry for himself. Been in hospital the last couple of days, on wow. the drip, everything like that. So to see him out here hitting the ramp, you know he's doing it for the crowd. Yep. Everybody at Suncorp Stadium, if you got to find a better seat, please be polite, but you're more than welcome to uh, get a better line of sight. Here we go. And here we have Zach Chappell coming in real hot for this one. Wow! Whoa. I believe 
move on first glance. Backflip, kickless, kickless to inward. I don't know what we've just seen, but that is something that Zach does and posts on the ground like it's nothing week in and week out. He's been a little off the Instagram screens lately, but oh, I'll tell you what, he doesn't look too stoked with that one. Hopefully he hasn't hurt himself. But much. doesn't that say something about the level we're at where you said he'll do this trick in his sleep and post it all day long. You put a two ramp like this and now he's hurting from something he can do in his sleep. This it, ramp absolutely takes souls. It, Exactly, yep. Brumet Salik wow. out of Estonia. This man is every scooter rider's favorite scooter rider other than R. Willie. It's <laughs> literally out, arguably out of those two guys, and that is because he's a dual action sports athlete as well, going to be competing in BMX, but he's just got tricks like this. Whoa! Wow! Oh my god, going absolutely huge on that one. He's gone four spins, Micah, yep. which is how many? Oh, let's see, 7, 1440. 1440 and adding a front flip in there, so it's like a corked 1440. We've seen R. Willie do stuff like this before. Yep. Do you think he's going to back him up with it today? I See, what I've learned from Ryan Williams is he loses when people get him off his game, and this is something that gets him off his game. When someone goes in front of him and does tricks he's done and one-ups it or does it better, like, I say Ryan needs pressure, but that's what, how he gets beat, is when someone goes in there and just stomps something like that, you can tell he's hungry. That man is going to give that another shot. That is correct. And think about it, it's a 14, you know, 1400, but it's an 18, if it's not cork. Yeah, like, it is cork. Wow. It is a little extra pressure, but the man behind it all, Ryan Williams, he's helped to put scootering on the on the world stage, and he's about to do it once again right now. Let's get behind our Willie. Come on, mate, let's have it. Riding this event, triples as well as best trick. Front flip forward, front oh. scooter flip, and doing what Ryan does. So for everyone at home, he's gone for the front flip, nothing front scooter flip to late bar. The mum loves it there. She's <laughs> done that in the crowd. Oh, I love our <laughs> Willie shirt. He's stoked on that one. And for Willie to land a trick first go, that just opens up the door for progression after this. Give I am not sure what we're about Give to see, some, but... I mean, mate, that, that wasn't world's trick. first. That was a never been done trick. I he's, mean, one, he's one of those guys that just does that. It's just our Willie. He just does world first like no tomorrow. Wow. As you see here, the full extension on the nothing front, grabbing the bars, pulling it into the feet, and then wow. the late bar spin. Just shows pure control and the stoke on his face says it all. Just a solid trick. I mean, I've watched him hit himself in the face and give him black eyes with that trick. The fact he added a variation of a bar spin is just nuts. That is not human. That is not what a normal individual can do. Ryan Williams doing Ryan Williams things. And the scores were fed. I was about to say, look at the score on him, 91.33. That oh, is a yeah. huge one from R. Willie there. He's stoked. The crowd getting behind him. Going to get some props from the homies there. There's that beautiful skyline. How right. good is this city? Brisbane City. R. Willie in top spot with a score of 91.33. In second, we've got Jaden Stanley, who was first off the bat with an 81.33. And then Nick Seddon in third with a 30. Following him in fourth, we've got Jack Churchwood, Will Barlow in fifth, Brunette Salik in sixth, and the list goes on. A lot of those guys lower down, they're going to want to get just a land in this next one, aren't they, Micah? Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's time to get us right back to the top of the list. Again, each rider has three attempts. Best trick that they land is going to determine our leaderboard, and let's get right back to the top. Jaden Stanley sucking in a big, deep breath there. It's one of those things at the top of this ramp you just have to... And let it rip. And as you see, he's coming in hot for this one. What? Stanley, Stanley, oh, just tweaking it out on the landing. Cannot put wheels down there, but he's gone for a huge, huge banger. Literally, double Stanley flip, back to back, back flips, and rotating the scooter the opposite direction. It doesn't make any sense to me, Mark. The air awareness of the scooter guys are crazy because there's so much that can come around and go wrong, and you don't have the weight of a mechanism to keep yourself straight. So there's just so many variables. It's one of the crazier sports out there. Here we have him, Nicky Seddon. He's keen to go for this one. Currently got 30 on the board. He's in third place. So this one, he's going to be letting rip. I think it might be another double backflip variation. That's three. Oh my God, he's gone oh. for the triple. Just not getting around, but he looks all right. He looks all right, Micah, and that's the most important thing. Exactly, exactly. Again, this ramp just takes the edge off. Like, it's not a safe thing to be doing in any way. Like, these are absolute gladiators of the game going through what they're doing. And here's a triple flip. Can you talk about opening up and closing for me? Yeah, so pretty much what it kind of dictates is the rotation, how fast, how slow. You really want to open up on a landing so you can control it and put wheels down because the scooter wheels are only usually 110 to 120, 130 millimeters. Well, Nikki, not looking too good there, but 
He's put down the triple for us. He's currently in third. Fingers crossed all is well with Nick Seddon. And I know that a bunch of the riders following him are going to be wishing him well as well. I mean, is there a place you can go to work on a triple backflip? I mean, is, I mean, there's not really foam pits that give you that much of a lip, right? There's not really ramps this large. I mean, obviously 40 feet in the moon boot ellipse, that is a Travis Pastrana specialty. Like, where can you even go and practice a rotation? Because when he was flipping, you saw him get larger and, and, and tuck it in, pull it out in, in every which way. And as you said, Sure, you're speeding up and slowing down the rotation, but how do you get to know, to learn what to do, how you do it? It's one of those things that these guys don't really get to practice it too much. I was trying back in the day, you know, double flips to a foam pit at Monster Skate Park in Sydney, and there's a couple of foam pits and resi ramps getting around, but there's no ramp really big enough other than our Willy Land. Our Willy's hooked all the boys up. We go up there, the Hill Willies are running it when our Willy's overseas. It's, it's pretty much running year round when the boys can make it up there, but it's one of those things. It gets so hot in Queensland. You know, we've had all the rain lately. It's been hard for him to judge. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. Well, we are going to take a quick break to get everything situated down there. There's that beautiful Brisbane skyline. Check out this awesome stuff courtesy of Nitro World Games. Be back with you shortly. Thanks. World Games. And Waz, I want to know, what is it like to be included in such a large spectacle? There's other action sports companies out there doing contests. What does it mean for scootering to be involved in the Nitro World Games? Mate, our Willie's been putting us on that stage around the world for years and years, but now he can bring his friends along. And you see what it means to these guys. The level of progression that this is giving our sport is world class. Every single one of those riders out there is just stoked to be here. There's so much camaraderie in scootering, and it's one of the things that I love to see. It definitely. I think uh, other nationalist contests are kind of taking the camaraderie out of action sports. And in scootering, you can still see the roots. You guys like each other, you push each other. And it, Travis himself said it's one of the best industries out there. 100%. Tommy Dang, he's an absolute legend down from Victoria. And going for that. Oh, oh my God. He's going for a backflip body burial, Mike. It's one of those things you just don't see very often on a scooter, but he's one of those guys that's always got a smile on the face. I guarantee he's going to turn around and be stoked. He teaches kids all day long down in Victoria at Bolo Park. He's all about scootering. So for him to be out here, he's just gassed right now. That's rad. And this trick isn't done in any action sport. Uh, they do it in mo freestyle motocross rarely. I don't even know if you'll see it here today. BMX, it doesn't happen. Skateboarding has like, you know, some body burial stuff, you know, board burial, but this man is absolutely blazing trails. It just shows how difficult it is. And on a scooter, like you said before, they're so light. You know, they're made from things like titanium and carbon fiber bars, Reese Rogers is riding and stuff like these. The scooters just fly away from you. So for Tommy to try this over, you know, one of the biggest ramps that we've ever seen, insane. It is, this is the biggest contest ramp in existence of any time ever. That's why this contest today is gonna progress action sports in ways it's never done before. Exactly, and here we have Luke Berlin coming in for his second hit. Wow, yes. sticking it on that one. Nice little extension. He goes for the backflip cannonball to finger whip. As you see, nonchalant. 
Lukey. He's just in his own. Is he wearing swim shorts? I don't understand. Honestly, he, <laughs> he used to wear the shorter shorts back in the day and just cruise around the skate park in it. So it wouldn't surprise me, fresh from the beach. There you see the extension and the finger whip, bringing it around. He makes it look like light work. I know he's done a lot of laps up at R. Willie Land, but for him to put that one down, surely the judges have got to give him a decent score. And he does. That's going to put him on podium right now. That puts him into third place. Yep, a nice little 62 there for Luke Bell. And on mention of the judges, we have some of the greatest athletes from the scootering history. We've got Cody Donovan, Jackson Bartlett, Adam Bolton, and Max Peters, all Australian legends. And here we have another one writing his name in the books for the future. It's Byron Mitchell, yes. a.k.a. by Rome's. He's stoked with that one. Look at, the, look at the expressions on his face, Micah. For him to put that down, it means a lot. But to do it in front of this crowd, you can see he's gassed. Oh, trying to relax. <laughs> don't, don't get too excited, guys. He stomps this landing. Here we have the repay backflip. I think he kicks it in there for the rewind. Triple rewind. And there, the fist pump. It says it all into the airbag. He will see the replay. Yes, he does kick that first one. And then it comes around three more times. Just dodging that little line in a landing, which is going to yeah. play a big part in today. I know a lot of the guys like to drift a little to the right, so if they do get stuck in that, it could bounce them. But another huge score, putting him into third place, Mike. Yeah, it's, I think people are getting comfortable. I think they realize they can land and roll away from these things. And we have us a whole new contest. 100%. He's just waving some shackles to the crowd. But now Dane Forbes up next. Dane's about to be a dad. I know this is him sending it for the crowd and for that soon-to-be family. Here we yes! Have. Yes! Oh, just coming unstuck. He couldn't straighten up the deck on that one, Micah. That is such a cool trick. So much originality coming out of him. We've all joked about it in the in the dressing rooms and stuff before this. Travis has said he would hate to announce a scooter contest because you don't know the, the tricks and stuff like that. And for me, I've been around the sport for 10 plus years and I still have no idea what we just watched. <laughs> so it says it all. The trick level is just insane. And these days, they're inventing their own tricks, chucking them on the gram and not even naming them. So you don't even know where to start, whether it's a nickname, the technical name. That one there is going for like a back scooter flip, spinning on the finger almost, like I said before, Harlem Globetrotter style. Yeah. Here we have half bars. I've got a great story about how he got his name, actually. It's actually a terrible story, but we like to say it's a great story. Coming unstuck there, going for the full extension. He does almost like a finger kickflip looking thing. I don't know if you've ever seen any half bars clips, Micah, but this guy does those kind of variations where you just throw the scooter and hope for the best and catch it and bring it back in. So to do it upside down, you know, he's really pushing the bars. But he actually got his name because his mate was called Half Bars on Instagram, and they were like joking around and said, oh, you should make your Instagram Half Bars too. And now he's blown up and it's stuck. I love it. Reese Rogers gone yes! huge. Just sticking it to the back wheel and shotgunning off the back there. He's going to be disappointed because he's only going to get one more crack at it. But yeah. fingers crossed for Reese, he can put that down because I've seen him do the triple so many times, but he wants that huge tough no hander in the middle of it. I love it. Like a triple backflip is nothing to play with. That is absolute fire. You That's can see on. the speed wobbles when they come down that ramp because these guys, you know, the wheels are so small, the stability isn't really there. Like you have the weight on a bike or in a yeah. motorbike, you know, it's so much weight that the power holds it upright. But on a scooter, you've got this much speed, it definitely wobbles a little bit. Getting a 9.66 there just because you can't stick it. But if you can land it, I think that was good. Score yeah. really well. That'll podium him, I'm pretty positive. 100%. Chris oh, wants yeah. a little better on his second run here. We're going to see it. Whoa! Yes! Oh, just slipping the foot at the bottom of that landing, but he's going for the cash roll quad whip to bar. Mm. Huge combo. You don't see him any like it. He whips it around like no tomorrow. You know, it's hard for us to count the whips sometimes. It's only that I've watched him do this so many times that I know that that's a quad because it's so easy. Four, five, mate, I'll tell you what, it just it blows my mind. You just get lost in it sometimes. It's funny watching the guys when they do the trick they want to do and they catch and they still have all that extra time left because they haven't landed yet. Like, that's... It's something scenario. that I, I don't know the feeling of that, Mark. I, I start living <laughs> and it just gets lost. But Chris, representing Lucky Scooters, Dylan Morrison got their big scooter wheel on the front, which is Proto, a brand out of the US uh, from the godfather of scootering. He's been in Nitro before, Andrew Broussard. He was one of the first guys to do it. You know, he's been around the sport and done some great things for us, and he's supporting Dylan out here at this event today. Dylan scoring a 7 3 in his earlier one. He's gone huge on the triple yes! flip, making it look like light work. He's going to be stoked on that one. As you can see, the froth yes! is real. I think he's just going to be happy to get a score yes! on the board because Dylan's one of those guys that has a huge lock over tricks. So hopefully this just opens up that third attempt for him now. It's, it's crazy because you see the joy on his face, and that's because he conquered a demon. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, 
The triple flip is no joke. As you can see, spots the landing on that second rotation, drops the shoulders one more time, and boom, stoked right there. Dude. I know his family at home are going to be gassed on that one. He Look how wild he is. He just puts those elbows back and just, yeah. <laughs> He's got one of the best flip styles in scootering. Oh my, I just yeah. noticed he's yeah. getting a bit buck wild on the flat there. Yeah. So it's not really the triple backflip that's troubled Dylan, but an 86.66 is going to put him all the way up to second place. He is going to be racked on that one. Yep, he is chasing Ryan Williams. Well, it's time to get an update on our friend Nick. Caroline, you tell us what it's like down there. Yes, we're down here. Nick Seddon is currently going to be sitting out his third run. He is okay. He's getting the best medical attention. He's being assessed. These things happen, and all the athletes are up ready to prepare for the next run. So get loud. Let's reset, and uh, Nick's okay. Caroline knows all about that stuff. She's taking care of a shoulder injury from a mountain biking event, so pumped she can be out here for this. But let's keep the scooter and going. Yeah, it's great news about Nick, but here we have his mate Jack Churchwood, like I said earlier in the stream, from Gladstone. So these days he's based here in Brisbane. Stanley Flip goes for the Superman. Micah, are you kidding? That's some FMX stuff. Yeah, it's cool seeing him. everyone inf influences everybody, right? BMX goes to skate all came from skateboarding, and then BMX to freestyle motocross, and now scootering. I mean, the bri flips and everything we're doing from your mats. Another great example of just the creativity and how it kind of you lend it from one another. 100%. Jack shouting out his sponsor, Envy, there with a little shirt flick. But a huge extension on that one. Mate, I think the best thing about Nitro is that all of the sports come together. And when you watch this, the impression of FMX that we grew up, you know, the Travis Pastrana back videos back in the day, we all watch them. Doesn't matter what sport you ride, we all love TP. And to be out here at an event that he's helped found and brought us all together, we're so grateful for that opportunity. Yeah. Good looking score, it's gonna put him up in the ranks, but to get in that top three, you pretty much need to do a world's first, never been done at this point, or it's, a triple variation. Exactly, I think the judges are still waiting on that one to come through for him, but uh, Jack's gonna be stoked just to put a trick down and just kind of roll on from that and have that momentum and that confidence build up for this next hit. I mean, that clip in just general, that guy, he was upside down, you know, completely inverted, you know, chin to the ground and rolled yep. away smooth. It's 100%. Epic. Jack's in fifth place there with a 65.33, right behind one of his best mates, Byron Mitchell, who's on a 75.66. But the score to beat to break into the podium is 81.33. And the man behind the quad is I gotta back. Stand up. I gotta stand Will up. Barlow, AKA Barzi. Everyone knows him as Barzi. He's hyping up the crowd. Come on, guys, let's make some noise right now. I know everyone at home will be sitting in their seats, goosebumps Dude, ready. If he rolls away from this, it's like seeing a dinosaur in person. This doesn't happen in public. This is awesome. Let's go, Barzi. Send it, buddy. One, two, three, four. Oh! oh. Just a little short on that one, and it is a huge price oh. to play. Like we've said a bunch of times, Micah, this ramp is forgiving, but not when you're doing the tricks that these guys are doing. They are really putting everything on the line for you guys out there today. Right, in every way possible we said, like this, it's not safe. This isn't a safe situation. When you're doing things at the level that they're at, it, it's terrifying, but they know what they're doing. You saw how excited he was. He needed to get in that frame of mind to execute a trick at that point, and he knows the games we're playing. He knows that it, you roll the dice, sometimes you lose, and unfortunately, bad things happen. I think Evil Knievel said it best, like, when you live the way we live, sometimes bad things happen. When you challenge consequences like that and that's how you get happy, these things are going to go down. But the fact that we saw a quadruple backflip in person, like I said, that's like seeing a unicorn. That's like seeing something that doesn't ever happen in the world. And it's huge. Look how high he is in the air. We're talking 50, 60 feet. And he knows Cased. We talked about him over-rotating the first one, so he slows down the rotation on that one, obviously. But you can't even talk to people that do the quad. Jed Milden's not here. Brandon rides BMX. You can't really talk about them jumping over. So he is going into deep, deep waters by himself. And it's one of those moments, you know, it's not a trick that just keeps getting done. A quad takes so much energy. So there's so much risk involved. But one thing we like to talk about is the bigger the, the bigger the risk, sorry, the bigger the reward. And here we have it, you know, he's tried to put on the biggest show that Barzi can for the crowd, for everyone at home watching. He's really pushed a huge one on this one. Yo, he's got a fan for me, to say the least. We are pumped to be here in Brisbane. We had a little bit of time because of weather delay. We got a full on how amazing this city can be, and I can't make it enough. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to keep on going with Scooter Best Trick. Over so many years, in and out of 
venues, buses, traveling, airports. It was kind of cool to come back on the road after such a long break and really enjoy a city for what it has to offer. And I don't think we could have done it at any better place than, than here in Brisbane. cities for action sports fun times here in Queensland we got a heads up everything looks fine our rider is okay but uh, before we get back to that look at that skyline they know how to build them here don't they Mate, it's a beautiful country I'm so blessed to have been raised here and I get to see this day in and day out but how have you found Australia so far Mike you've been here a few times before right I found the skate parks that's what I'm looking for all the time yeah we are pumped welcome back everybody we are pumped to be here we are scooter best trick here in Brisbane, Australia. My name is Micah Kranz. This is this is Warwick Bynan. We call you Waz. Pumped, yeah. honored to be here with you here in one of the, the greatest progressing action sports contests, Nitro World Games. 100%. We're based here right now, Suncorp Stadium in the heart of Brisbane. It's one of the best stadiums in Australia, and to see scootering and the rest of the action sports out here putting on a show for the people, I'm just stoked to be here, honestly, yep. Mike. The energy is high, the stoke, the stoke is up there, but we are going back to our 50-foot rolling, the Giganta ramp. Let's keep the party going. Mate, I'm so keen for this one. We've got a couple of the guys still to go on their second runs. I believe we are up to Zach Chappell, who's a local up here. Hunter Frost giving a little shout out there. I'm not too sure if he's about to drop in. He's representing Fusion. Yep, he looks keen for it. Like I said earlier in the stream, Hunter battling a little bit of sickness and stuff like that. It's so good to see him out on the ramp. Hopefully he can put this one down for us. Exactly, and that's what we like to see. Just wow. Roll. Just get a trick underneath you. He did that thing rolled away so hard to follow a stunt like a quad. It's going to backflip, but hey, look at look at the relief he has. He knows yep. he's got one more trick. You know, you got the one, you know, get the rust knocked off and give you another chance. Hunter's been battling it. He hasn't been feeling too well, so to see him go huge on the nothing front there, just missing that right hand, which I think threw him off a little second. He's kicked it, tried to do the triple whip, and it's one of those ramps. If you don't land perfect, it's so hard to get away with it on a scooter. Yeah, is that plastic pretty hard on those wheels? Yeah, it's just because the wheel is so small, so your center of gravity can get put off in, you know, split seconds. The tiniest lean the wrong way, you know, not straightening the deck up enough, it can really buck you straight off. Yep, absolutely. And you can see a couple of riders left getting their second runs underway. We are going to stay with you and let's keep going. Here he is, Zach Chappell, another Queensland local. He went huge on the first one. Wow! Getting lost in the kickless motions there. Zach's going to just want to put down a really solid trick in his third one. You know, he hasn't been able to do it in the first two, scoring a 5.33 earlier on. But he's also just going to be stoked to be here. Zach's a brick his labourer when he's not riding a scooter. <laughs> so, you know, he's going to be stoked to not be out there in the sunshine of Brizzy today laying bricks. Yep, all the co-workers wondering, where is he? What's exactly. Uh, sorry, mate, can't come in today. Chuck a little sicky. He's out here at Suncorp. The man from Estonia, dual sport athlete, Rumet Salik. He rides for Triad. Whoa! Wow, going for that 1440, I believe, again. Yep. Just not being able to rotate the front flip in that one, going to the ass on landing or sitting out on his butt, getting a little bit of a butt check. But he seems to be all right, and he's, yeah. and he's bounced away from it. I mean, we are in snowboarding territories. We're trying to count how many spins they are doing, and this apparatus is what does it. Exactly. You've got the big takeoff, you've got the big landing, and these guys know how to send it. But behind it all, this guy right here, R. Willie. 
He put down a huge one. He's currently in first place. What do you think he's got in store for us on this second hit? Willie's here to go against himself. He's not going to take it easy. He wants to do world's first, world's first, world's first. Let's see what he has here. Whoa! And he rides Are away. Are you kidding? Puts it down. Wow. Was it four or five? We need to see, we need to see this replay. We've been, we've been going back and forth in practice watching him do this one. The Super Saiyan. You see the oh. move? You see him do the meme thing? The meme thing. Dance for us, Willie. <laughs> He's loving it. Mumsy in oh. the crowd. Stoked to see him put another one down. Willie is literally doing this time and time again. He's backed it, it up five. there. Run wow. number two. 92.33 sees him secure a little higher place that was a on quit. top of the podium. Let's count the rotations. One, two, three, four. And he gets and out of it. And it down. Yep. So, so there's two ways to look at that trick. 1440 court, or that really is an 18. Yeah. Like, it's awesome. insane. I know, I know Willie's been talking about the cork 18, so I think that's what we should go with if that's what he wants yeah. to call it. But it is one of those tricks. You get so lost in the spins and you add that front flip corky variation to it. He was the first to do the 7 front. Yep. The first to do the 1080 front. Why wouldn't he be the first? As everyone tries to catch up with him, Willie is on a, a, a competition of his own. Exactly. He wants to beat Willie, and right now, Willie's winning in every way possible. It's one of my favorite things about Willie, and one of the best things... Tony Hawk, Absolutely. Let's go down to our friend Caroline Buchanan, who is with Ryan Williams. Oh, we're here. We're here. Congratulations, Ryan Williams. You've gone out in full form, throwing down from your run number one. Can you tell us what it's like to have this platform for Scooter and how important it is? Oh, this is amazing. One hour down the road from our Willy Land. I'm so stoked to throw down uh, on the scooter. Shout out to Barzi. I hope you're doing all right, man. You are an absolute legend. So hands goes to hands off to Barzi, but uh, let's keep this comp going. Do it for scooters. The camaraderie down here is so strong. You never want to see your buddy go down. What's been going down at Arlie Land? You had the qualifiers. What's in the water? So much. All the tricks you're seeing here right now have been practiced at our wheelie land. Shout out to all the scooter homies. We've got so many more things to go down. I love you all. Let's do this for action sports. Does it get any cooler than Ryan Williams? I don't think it does. No. You have a private training facility and you have the only ramp in Australia and you open it up to your competition. What does that say about you as a human being? Mate, he's one of the greatest friends that we all have in scootering. But little story for you, Micah. We're actually born on the same day of the same year. And he took all the powers. <laughs> That's exactly it. Keeping all this talent for himself. Let Ryan Williams hear you if you like him. There you see him. Look, the crowd favorite, the man, the myth, R. Willie. He's on top of the podium right now. But in third, our next athlete to drop, Jaden Stanley. We think he's going to go huge on this one. I hope he can put down what he's been talking about prior in practice. But here we are. Final runs. Three of three. What has he got for us? Get it, get it, get it. Dude. Just slipping a foot there on the double Stanley flip. You can tell he saw it the whole way. You're like, exactly. I saw it, I just put my foot on. But he's relieved. You just went to war, sir, and you're walking away. Congratulations. It's one of those things. They only get three hits at it. The adrenaline's high. These guys want it so bad. He's going to be stoked either way. A little rota whip at the end there on the resi ramp. But Tommy Dang waving it out right there. He is stoked. Nice little deep breath, trying to suck one back, get that relaxation to come over his body. Come on, Tommy, what have you got for this hit? Run three. Oh, it's so hard to imagine him even getting that, but I know that Tommy would have done some variation of it to the bag or something like that in practice. I haven't seen it yet. I'd love to see that trick landed. So fingers crossed we can see Tommy put that down one day at Nitro World But Games. that's the level you have to be if you're going to be Nitro World Games. If you want to even compete, you have to do something you're not comfortable with, something you've never pulled before. This is that setting to get it done. And it says a lot about his character to go out there, three tries, body bag himself, and smiling. What exactly. Cool he's just stoked to be out here. But most of all, he's stoked to be pushing the progression of skewering. And another man that is going to do that, Luke Berland. Currently with a score of 62 flat in sixth place. This is third and final here. Come on, Loki. What have you got for us? Whoa! Go Whoa! On. Is there some sort of saran wrap leg thing? He's one of the <laughs> only guys in scootering that does this. And I don't know how he does it. He's got the most flexibility you've ever seen for someone that doesn't stretch. I can guarantee he doesn't do any form of prep. He's like, yeah, mate, let me just throw my leg over the bar here. But there, he's going for the cash roll. Leg wrap, I believe, to bar spin or to whip. We kind of got a little lost in there, and I'd love to see a replay. But not really phased. He's just stoked to be out here, you know, chill. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's going to go right back to our Willie land and be a stud over there. 100%. But Byron Mitchell representing MV Scooters. He's coming in huge for this hit. Whoa. 
Oh, my God. A little too much salsa on that one. He's overcooked it, gone back seat. But stoked. Look at that. He's just running on pure adrenaline right now, Michael. I can't believe the pop you can get off scooters on this ramp. I mean, you only have so much speed because the wheels are so big, you know? The bigger the wheels, the faster you go. So you guys use these small wheels for maneuverability. The fact that you can get that much speed to go that high on this ramp. It, it's the ramp, Michael. It does it all for us, you know? These guys are putting on a show right now because they don't get to ride ramps like this. Dane, Whoa! oh! He spins the third one around. You hear the grasp from the crowd there. They wanted to see you put that one. Unfortunately, today's not the day, but Dano's stoked and he's given some props out there. Huge shout out to him. And that's just it. Maybe you don't nail it this time. We're going to keep going with this competition. You have a chance to be an absolute all-star next time, but you are going to live in infamy for being part of this contest. Two years in the waiting, it's been worth it every minute. Here we have him. half bars Jack Ward representing Core out of the UK. Wow. Dude. He's gone for it again, and he's just, just not been able to get the scooter away from him there. Landed pretty heavy, but you see, back on his feet, Micah. It's one of the blessings of these ramps. These boys can send it cop a little bounce and get away with it. So far, we've been quite lucky. The boys are pushing the level of scootery with yep. every single trick that we're seeing, and they're walking away from it. Yep. Next up, though, Reese Rogers on top. He's got the no-name bars. They're one of the only carbon fiber products in scootering. I don't know how he gets away with riding them when you see him do things like this. The amount of force that he pulls back on the bars. Going for that triple again. Yes! Sticking it. Let's yes! go, Reese. You see, pumping it up yes! to the crowd right now. Terry Price in there, gas. A huge triple backflip, no hand up. The extension on that thing was insane. Chris Farris up there, fist pumping for him. Props from half bars. The whole scene is going to be going mad right now. Oh, the attitude of this contest has just changed with this trick. Three backflips, taking his hands off in the first rotation and stomping it. That's, he just got the card on the river he was needing. He tried two other times before this, and this was the attempt that's going to put him He's going to be up there. That's one of the wildest tricks. I've seen it on BMX one time. You tell me, has it been done on scooters before? People have done triple flips. They're taking their hands off here and there. But I don't know if one's ever been done in competition. We've I seen it so. done right there. I think it's so the first time. clean. In that third flip as well, he spots the landing, puts it down. 93.33. That is first place, ladies and gentlemen. Reese is going to be gassed on that one. Wow. We said it. It's going to take a world's first trick to get on this podium, and that's what just happened. Imagine the stage he is on. You are in the biggest contest in the world, and you just put Ryan Williams, you put all the pressure on him. He's done two for two world's first, now you gotta make him do a third world's first if he wants to take away. And he has lost this competition before. I'm just saying, there's a couple of Funk Brothers out there with some trophies, hey, you know? There's a couple of boys out there with some trophies, but the best thing about R. Will is he's putting it on for this whole crew. He doesn't really care about winning right now because him out here, he's gassed, he's stoked. We have Chris Farris dropping in. Yes. Oh, he just can't straighten up there on the cash roll, going for the quad, waving it off to the crowd. He's had an amazing week so far, but on the R. Willie note, you know, he's got the crew out here. The pressure's really going to be on him on this third hit. A lot of the guys, they haven't been able to stick a trick yet. Is it going to come down to run three, you think, Michael? hundred percent. Ryan Williams is not here to lose. I mean, like you said, he's stoked, and if he gets beat, it's not going to ruin his day, but he's got some points to prove. He's done some things and taken some slack, and this, you know, this is his contest to win. I think the biggest thing about R. Willie is he always pushes himself. He wants the best out of himself, and that's what we're going to see on this third hit. But Dylan Morrison dropping in for this one. He has the chance to do something huge. He's currently in third. Whoa. Oh! Way too much speed on that yeah. one. He's ejected. He did Very the right smartly, thing. very smartly. Super safe, walking off, probably a little bit sore on the old booty. The tailbone won't be too kind to him when he needs to go to the dunny later on, Micah. <laughs> but you can see he's walking away, and that's the most important thing. That's part of the win here. Maybe you don't pull your tricks, you walk away, that's a win. 100%. 100%. You can see the podium right there and the rest of the list. Reese in first, Arwilly in second, Dylan Morrison in third, who just landed. But right now we have in sixth place Jack Churchwood. What can he put down? What? Oh! He's going for the Stanley flip, and then he whips it around like a back scoot deck grab. I would have loved to see him put that one down. You can see he's just like, mate, I'd love a couple more cracks at it, but it is what it is. Exactly. You know everyone's going to be trying to book tickets to our Willie Land even after this contest, you know? Yep. I'd love to see more of these on. Hopefully we can get them on in some amazing locations around the world. But yep. right now we're in the heart 
of Brisbane City in Australia, Suncorp Stadium. There's been so many amazing sporting events here. But for us, we've got action sports in the house. It's perfect cup of tea for you and me, Mike. It really is. This is a dream situation. All these ramps, all these beautiful people, and an action sports knowledgeable crowd. Yep, exactly. They know what they're watching. The Aussies love this stuff. They're full throttle, just like Hunter. Oh my yes! God, are you kidding me? Hunter has been in hospital yesterday, the last couple of days. He hasn't even been riding this ramp, and he's gone ballistic. That was Ballistic. Stoked. I need to see the replay. He doesn't even know. He's like, wait, did I get away with that? Nick said and running over. It's good to see Nick up. He, he went down hard early, but he's out there supporting the boys. Hunter is just gassed. I mean, he, he's had a whirlwind of emotions. He was after the, the quad flip and everything. Exactly. Here we see the nothing front scooter flip. He grabs the bars. Bar twist to kickless. He really, what? He really manhandled that thing Mate. on the way down. I watched this guy tear up Lake Havasu last weekend at the World Championships. And now Whoa. on one of the biggest ramps you would see, he is no joke. Hunter Frost, mate. Wow. What he's almost say? embarrassed. He's, <laughs> like, he, he's like, oh, did I land something? What did I do? Exactly. He had, Like I said, guys, he hasn't been practicing. He hasn't. He's been unwell the last couple of days. So to see him put this down, you can see the bar twist or untwist even there. Kickless and getting away with it. Look at the surprise on his face. How many tricks was that? Let me count. Nothing front scooter, untwist or bar twist. It's hard to see from that angle. And then kickless. So three technically, but a kickless is a whip rewind without a kick in the middle. So technically four. And now Zach Chapel. He's not laying bricks. He's out here on the Giganta ramp. Stanley flip, Whoa. nothing front. Oh my God. That was great. I've seen, him, I've, I've seen him throw things like that at R. Willy Land, and if he put that down, this crowd would have erupted. No, oh, they loved it. Even the attempt, you could see him just being stoked. As he literally, you know, inward, throws it. Pretty good stuff. All right, Waz, well, set this up for us, man. What do you think? I have goosebumps. We have our Willy at the top right there, giving props to the Estonian legend, Runet Salik. Look at his face. This guy has had a little trouble in the first two runs, but what can he put down now? We're just kind of on the edge of our seats. Oh, he's trying to back up our Willy. He just hasn't been able to get away with it there. He's going to be more gutted than anything. I don't think he's injured. That was stomped. That was so close to being pulled. You can see the frustration in himself. But now, it's Mate. time. Again, I've said it for years. Ryan Williams eats pressure. He's the kind of guy that makes diamonds for stuff like this. But can he do it again? You're only as great as your last success. And this is quite a contest. What does this say to the scooter industry as a whole right now? You know, he's gone a 91.33 in his first one. He's upped it to a 92.33. If he wants to take that top spot, he's going to have to step it up, that extra point. He looks ready. You can see oh. the focus. The nerves are there. The nerves are always going to be there, though, Michael. When you're pushing the boundaries like this, the nerves are always going to be there. The mouth guard's in, the helmet's on. He pumps up the crowd. You know, he's going to suck this one back and just focus right now. Really focus. A little bit of visualization. Here it is from R. Willie. Fingers across. Let's go, Willie. Final run, the walk off. It's going to be. Oh. Double backflip. 720. Didn't roll away. That means Ryan was just beat by Reese Rogers. Unbelievable. Ryan Williams locals were the only ones that were putting pressure on him. And as you can see, the scooter industry is absolutely stoked. That was the greatest scooter competition I have ever seen in my entire life. There was so much drama. There was so much success. There was sadness. And at the end of it, he pulled one trick out of the three of them, and he did it. Caroline Buchanan, get in that mess and tell me what it's like. Yes, please. <laughs> She's going to have trouble getting him right now, guys. <laughs> Reese. Hold right in, Reese. Oh. Reese, as you can tell, the guys are over the moon for you. How do you put this moment into words? You won the qualifier at R Willies. You've now gone head to head against one of your idols, now your rivals. This is the power of sport. Can you put this moment into words? I honestly can't. I am speechless. This is the best experience of my life. Let's go! Now, surely you've got people to thank. Is there anyone behind the team? 
I just want to thank Ryan for letting me come out to our wheelie land and practice this trick. I've been trying since 2021, and I got it on my last attempt in Nitro World Games. Let's go! Congratulations, Reese. You are the 2022 Nitro World Games champion. Thank you, thank you. Real emotion at the greatest scooter contest that ever happened. Reese taking home the win. What a trick, what height, what a variable. Mate, I have goosebumps still. This is gonna change Reese's life. Reese actually opted not to go to the World Championships after podiuming in the Aussie Championships. He opted not to go because he said, I wanna go to Nitro, I wanna put on a show. I have tricks that I wanna do that are gonna push the sport to greater levels than me getting on a podium at, you know, Worlds could ever do. It's about the sport and you can see the level there of stoke on Reese's face. The whole community is behind him. He's getting props from Boyd Hilda, a BMX right. athlete. Everyone is out there stoked because they know what they've just witnessed. Wow. Absolutely wonderful. Well, was. That was one of the coolest things I've been a part of. I'm over BMX head on this end. But you scooter kids, you are having it together. What an unbelievable community. What a great group of people. What a contest. Let's say we try it again sometime. Yeah, huh? I cannot wait to get back in the booth here, Micah. Thank you so much. Nitro World Games, it's been real. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, Brisbane, for hanging out. Thank you, Scooter Best Tricks, to everybody happening. Be back with you shortly. In 2016, Travis Pastrana invited the world's best action sports athletes to America to compete on never-before-seen ranks. Since 
since then, Nitro World Games has continued to break barriers and blow minds around the world. And while the global pandemic put Nitro World Games on hold in 2020 and 21, it did not stop Action Sports Best Athletes from continuing to innovate and train for what's about to happen today. The world's best have arrived in Brisbane, Australia to once again challenge themselves and each other on some of Action Sports' biggest ranks. It's FMX, Skate, BMX, and Scooter, all under one roof, and it's about to go down here at the iconic Suncorp Stadium in Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. Welcome everyone to the heart of Brisbane. We are here in the capital city of Queensland, home to more than 2.5 million people inside the iconic Suncorp Stadium. It's been three years in the waiting, but the Nitro World Games finally makes its return and it finds a brand new home here on Australian soil. Welcome everyone to the land down under. Jimmy Coleman here in the booth, sitting alongside Renton Miller, and we are about to get this party started. The weather gave us a little bit of a curveball earlier in the weekend, but now we are about to kick things off and finally make this thing happen. The fans have been packing into the stadium here as we get set to kick off the skate vert final. But first, let's check in down on the field with none other than Caroline Buchanan. We're down here with Skateboard Vert. The guys are warming up behind us. Unlike the best trick format, we're now going to a different format. This is a jam format. So the riders are warming up. This is unlike the other disciplines. We've got the biggest international contingent lineup with a star-studded field, so it's going to be a great time. Send it back to you guys. A good time is an understatement, Renton. We've been waiting for this one for a very, very long time. And, uh, you know, I can't think of a better way to kick this off on my end. Uh, one of my favorite events, Skate Vert. You've been in the ranks for a long, long time. Tell me how psyched you are to be here today. Man, Jimmy, what a location. What a crew of dudes. Sunshine. We got it. It's going to be a mad comp. I think uh, we have a lineup of skaters from Brazil, Japan, Australia, super gnarly skaters, and I think this is going to go off. Yeah, and basically what's going to happen out here today is uh, originally we were going to have three runs each, and it was going to be the best run counts, but uh, now we're going to go into a jam session. A little bit of controlled chaos, if you will. They are going to have to stay in the same order as we run through this competition, but uh, still, as we run through the jam session, it's the best run that counts, and for me, that's one of my favorite formats because I feel like you get the best skating that way. Yeah, well, best run counts, that's the best way. It means you can bring out your hardest guns, try your hardest runs, and uh, it basically means you can take a couple of falls and you can still win the competition, which is really important. Pushes the level of the skateboarding, and uh, I think it's going to be great. Well, taking a look at the format here, we start off with a couple of rookies right there, uh, and then I believe we're down to 11 in the lineup as of right now, but you got some heavy hitters here at the bottom of that list, Brent. Yeah, we got Ash Wilkins from the Gold Coast, first big competition. We've got, in, we've got Marcelo Bastos out of Brazil, Kiefer Wilson out of Melbourne, Clay Kreiner, I mean, what an absolute stick of dynamite. Mitchy Brusco, one of the technical wizards of skateboarding. And the last skater, we have Moto Shibata, one of the most stylish skaters around. Yeah, it's super stoked to be here in Brisbane. Couldn't ask for a better venue and a better city to put on this event. And speaking of that, a couple of our heavy hitters got a chance to uh, check out Brisbane from the air earlier in the week. Let's take a look. Howdy, 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 so that was pretty awesome. Yeah. Didn't fly over the fly over the stadium. Suncorp Stadium, yeah. Brisbane. Ramps even look big from from the height. It's yeah, they filled up the whole the whole stadium with, with these massive ramps. I'm so yeah. excited to be announcing yeah. after seeing how big everything is. Yeah, I'm still in it, but I mean, there's, there's a little more pressure on a few other riders, so yeah, I'm excited to see that. But yeah, that was awesome. Awesome way to start the day. 
Big Air of Action Sports. Uh, game on. Good luck, buddy. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Don't die. <laughs> I feel like skate vert was the original action sport. This is so much fun to watch. These guys are going so big. I like the guys that just absolutely set as high as possible. I know they're looking for some technicality. I know I'm not a judge, but whoever sets the biggest has my vote. Good luck to all the vert skaters. skateboarders have brought it today. Hold the phone, this is John O'Schwan. Oh my <laughs> goodness, he that, that was the best recovery I've seen in a long time. But 720 tip the scale. Test. This is Elliot Sloan, he's won twice before and taken home the gold medal. Can he do it again right now? Yeah. Easy five. What a run! Nice Could it be the three-peat? as we come down to our last competitor, Moto Shibata, coming out of Japan. Here it is. Frontside Cal Madonna. Oh, oh got it. Three Sugar seconds. Game. Oh, and then oh. a jelly bean coming out of Osaka, Japan. Look back right there at how Skate Vert went down the last time it was contested here at the Nitro World Games. This is only the second time we've had a proper Vert contest at that event, but as you saw, that was none other than Corey Van Harris and uh, Tony Hawk with the call on that one right there, but it was Moto Shibata that walked out of there in top honors right back in 2018. Wow, Moto Shibata, I mean, what can you say about the dude? Super stylish, goes really, really big, got a bag of original tricks. Amazing to watch, he's gonna be on fire today, as well as all of them, uh, but he's definitely one to watch today, Moto from Japan. Yeah, he's just, you know, he's got the arsenal of tricks, but he's also got that style. He's so smooth, he makes things look so easy, but uh, this one's gonna come, with, uh, not gonna come without a fight out here today because you've got uh, the tech style and prowess of Michi Brusco out there. Like you talked about Clay Kreiner earlier, I like the way that you teed him up. You call him a, a stick of dynamite, if you will. I mean, that guy is absolutely <laughs> explosive. Not only, he's the complete package. That guy can do the big boosting hires and the rotational and the flip tricks, but he's also got this crazy tech savvy. Uh, it's, uh, I can't even describe it. I mean, you just have to see some of the video edits this guy has. And that's not leaving out Ronnie Gomez, who's one of the most technical skaters around uh, from Brazil. But the lineup today, we've got Ash Wilkins, Lockie Abbott, Ronnie Gomes, Reef Orlando. Man, the youngster Reef from Florida, absolute shredder. Beaver Fleming and Luigi Cini. Luigi, an up and comer, absolute shredder from Brazil. Marcelo Bastos, a bit of a veteran at this stage. Kiefer Wilson, one of his first vert competitions against pros, absolute shredder. Clay Kroner, as I said before, an absolute machine of human on a skateboard. Michi Brusco, technical wizard, and the style master, Moto Shibata. Yeah, I forgot all about Marcelo. He's another one of those guys that has that air flair, but he's also a technical wizard when it comes to the flip varials and different combos and whatnot. And it's kind of crazy looking at that start list to look at Marcelo and see that he's the elder statesman in the group right now. But he's the oldest guy out there in the lineup. I had to double check my math on that one. But uh, like you said, Renton, we've definitely got some up and comers, some young guns in the mix out here today and uh, actually it's one of those young guns that is going to start it off for us here today it's ash wilkin he got fourth in the australian skateboarding league qld state qualifier he was actually out at the nitro junior games last weekend competing in park out there in the gold coast and he gets to start this party out here today as he is our first skater in at a party it is his first pro competition super stoked i think this is going to be the day of his life Let's hope he stays on his first run, blows out the nerves, and has it go. Yeah, Ash. So you see him up on top of the rolling, just getting, waiting to get the all clear. So it is a 30-minute jam session here in this final. We'll see how many runs they get out here this afternoon. But it is the best run that counts. And we are in Renton with our first skater. It's Ash Wilkham. Yeah, just rolling an alley -oop mute, kick flip Indy, landing a bit low. Yeah, Ash, going for the hip flip Indy. Got a bit of nerves. It's no rebates, which means once you fall, your run is done. Yeah, you get 30 seconds max or when a fall happens, so that's a tough break right there. But again, as we talked about with that best run format, you gotta have a short-term memory right there. Shake that one off and come back for more in round two as we get set to bring in Lachlan Abbott. Yeah, Lockie, absolute ripper of a human. Likes to go as big as he can, as fast as he can. He had to squat that one out. I got a little bit of a crazy pump going across the flat right there, but hangs on. 
Yeah, that's what it's all about in competitions, making stuff you wouldn't normally make, hanging on to all sorts of stuff, going for the cab mallet, not quite. He'll be back for another run for sure. Now, he was actually on the ramp crew. He's been here for a while. He came up and actually helped set the ramp up, and then at the last minute, they had an opening, and he got to compete in the comp, and he was, I was talking to him last night. He's like, you know what? I don't really have a plan. I'm just going to get out there and make it up as I go along once I come down that rolling. As you're taking a look at Ronnie Gomez right there out of Sao Paulo, Brazil, known for big air as well as vert skills. He's a four-time X Games medalist, Renton. He owns two silver and two bronze in his X Games career. Man, Ronnie's absolute all-rounder on vert. Lots of different tricks on the lip, in the air, rotations both ways, skating switch. Absolute shredder. I wouldn't put anything past Ronnie to put down the most technical run you've seen. Just gearing up right now. Yeah, Ronnie. All right, so getting the thumbs up from our competition director for skateboarding, Chris Ortiz, and here we go. Ronnie Gomez is in for his first attempt. Yeah, big front set there. It's all about just taking that medium line of making your first run, getting your confidence up big. Mallet 540, yeah, Ronnie. Veteran of the game. Just absolutely just laying it down. Kick flip, varial mute. All about making runs. Getting one run on the board and making a better heel flip into the fakey. Coming down heel to the flip, last front side it. Wow, that trick is super, super hard. Last couple of seconds, and that's going to be the horn, and we've got our first complete run right there. Wow, kick flip Indy very <laughs> Ronnie Lance. Get up, Ronnie. He that just was insane, keeps on man. going. He was like, I don't think you heard the horn right there. He's like, you know what? I'll throw one wall, one more wall into the mix for good measure. You can see the reaction up on the deck there, Kiefer and the boys. Giving him a pat on the back for that one, but nicely done by Ronnie Gomez here in this opening round. Yeah, definitely setting the standard with a lot of tech tricks, some rotations. Switch heel flip front today is a super, super hard flip trick, and to risk it on the first run, that's someone that's pretty confident today. You've got to be watching out for Ronnie's next runs. Okay, on the ramp right now out of Jupiter, Florida wow. in the USA. It's another one of the young guns. This is Reef Orlando. Well, just coming out swinging front side invert. Wow, what? backside what? 360, shove it, taking the street to vert. Do you see where he put that one down? It was right. Wow, oh, cabin come nose on. grind, cabin was, nose grind, shove it, man. That was insane. Wow, like fourth wall in his first run. I mean, these are these are ender walls in your last run. Ollie 540 hanging on. You got to be absolutely wow, big kidding. back decker. The level of difficulty on those tricks. I mean, one of those tricks would be uh, enough to sort of blow your weight at the end of a run, but to risk your whole run on making of, of trying one of those first off is absolutely is next level. And then to come out with four or five of them, I mean, that that is uh, someone that's not mucking around, that's for sure. That was insanely tech savvy right there. And at the fall, he only had about seven seconds or so left on the clock right there. We'll have to see how that shapes up as we roll deeper into this jam session as we get set to bring in one of the guys who's a staple on the Nitro Circus live tour out of Knoxville, Tennessee. It's Beaver Fleming yeah. up on top of that roll in. Yeah, Beaver, what a positive dude. Like every time you skate the ramp with him, he's got a big smile. He's always stoked, always someone that is going to bring you up, bring the session up. Look at him, gearing up to get down. Yeah, Beaver, yeah, taking off from that roll in. Just big energy out of this young man here. And here we go, starts it off with a big uh, backside air with a method thrown in there for good measure, Renton. Yeah, Beaver, alley -oop, frigid to judo air. Oh, just missing the grab on the hip. And man, that, that's what it's about. Like when you when you flip your board, you risk it. And uh, and that's why, I mean, seeing the first few skaters like Ronnie and Reef come out swinging and do so many flips, particularly Reef uh, not grabbing his board, it's super, super difficult. And uh, I, I reckon that would almost shake the other guys, seeing how confident those guys are. Coming yep. down the rolling right now out of Curitiba, Brazil, we got Luigi Cini. Yeah, Luigi, bit of a rocket air. Melon 540. Super solid front set. Whoa, going to disaster, man. A bit of a late decision on that one. So this first round of runs, people having some problems here. The only complete run we've seen thus far, Ronnie Gomez. We will not have rankings. We will not see scores as we run through this vert final here. It's a big reveal at the end of the competition. Taking a look at Marcelo Bastos, the elder statesman in the crew out here today. Two-time X Games medalist. He owns a silver and a bronze. He's known for some very tech lines, and he also likes to link up a lot of very difficult tricks in his runs. Yeah, so vert skating, you know, you got to go through the whole competition to see everyone's best stuff. It's best run counts, so you might see a couple of bails first for someone and then see him make their last run. Got Marcelo in there, kickflip Indy hanging on. Tail grab, ah, oh, not quite. Marcelo's been injured, you know, like he hasn't done a 540 for a while. I guess he's in your competition to sort of get him back. Um, but he's had a sore shoulder, I believe, so he hasn't been skating so much the last six months. Normally the super consistent skater out of everybody. 
But he's got another one coming. Yeah, we'll have to see more of him in round number two as we bring up another one of the young guns here. This is Kiefer Wilson uh, of the southern part of Australia. He, too, was out there competing at Junior Games last weekend. This guy's even got a mega ramp in his own backyard. Yeah, Kiefer coming out swinging the big Melon 5 kickflip Indy. Tail, oh, oh, not quite, just using its tail five. It's that front foot started floating right there, so the tail five is done in our last two skaters right there. So it's all about like just, just walking that tightrope of doing enough stuff that you know you can make versus doing your hardest stuff. All these guys just trying to find that niche right now. Ronnie in a rad position, knowing that he's already made one run, can only better it. But right now we have Clay Kreiner. Hey, this guy is an absolute powerhouse. I mean, you think you know what he's going to do, and then bam, he just throws something in the mix and absolutely surprises you. But this guy just skates with just raw power. Absolute raw power. Spontaneity. Makes it up as he goes along. Alley, Melon 5, I think that was. Love his mute fives. Any place, any time. Backside air, come on Clay, kick flip, you hanging on, not quite. So these guys, you know, the last few days they haven't really had too much practice on the ramp. They're just still figuring it out. Well, Clay Connor went rogue earlier today, decided he'd had enough vert, he wasn't really feeling it. He went out and skated to some of the local parks out here today and then just showed up here right before uh, we got things underway earlier and decided he was going to put the right. pads on and session some vert. Wow, right now we got Mitchie. Mitchie's been shredding in practice. Absolute ripper, technical wizard of skateboarding transition on any any place, any time. Yeah, he too, another one that's got Wow, well, kick the melon five! Oh, oh my goodness, puts that one down, and that is early in the run. Mate, it, oh. And then they just jinxed him right there on that one. So well. something is in the air in this first round of runs. Well, skateboarding is so technical. Every time they take off, you know, they're, they're flipping their boards, grabbing it. Um, I mean, they're not grabbing with their hands across the flat. It, it's, it's difficult. They all know that. It's all about just making your best stuff, trying to make those flips, rotations. But right now, we've got Moto, the winner of the last Nitro Games. Yeah, that was a, back in 2018. It starts it off with a rocket air. Check out that style, wow. ladies and gentlemen. How's that alley in a twist? Stalefish 5, super confident. Yeah, Moto, how's that lean, classic style? Mute to Fakie, where's this going? Yeah, the cab nose grab to Fakie. Fakie 540 nose grab, wow. 360 Madonna. Yeah, into the sugar cane. Mixing up these tricks. This has got to be close to the buzzer. We don't see the time clock with our graphics, but look at this run that Moto Shibata is putting down. Oh, wow. Well, I'm not sure if he made it for a full run, but that was that had to be sick. 30 seconds. Just pulling tricks from all eras of skateboarding, giving his own Moto Japanese style to it all. Absolutely ripping. Yeah, Moto. So again, it is a jam session out here. It's 30 minutes on that jam session clock. So they skate in the same order. Runs are 30 seconds in length or a fall. We'll end the run early as we get set to go back up to the top of the order and bring back in Ash Wilkham. Yeah, Ash, kicking off with an alley -oop mute. Oh, we do get Kick scores. Kick for hanging on. Oh, not quite. Coming super close. That's the deal with skateboarding, particularly with vert. You, you know, you, you miss it by an inch, you miss it by a mile. But again, with this best run counts format, I mean, you may be down, but you're definitely not out. Ooh, man, so what is going on? Lackey's up on top of the rolling right on there. The, on the, on the, on the top railing. Rope. He was talking about this last night. I want to bring it up the first round of runs. He said he did this earlier in the week where he actually bomb dropped off that railing into the rolling right there. Well, look at that, man. <laughs> yeah, he can't get high enough. Oh, look at the balance right there, trying to Whoa! make that happen. Oh, that was just sheer determination right there. He was well, wiggling all over the place, but makes that one happen. Yeah, likes to go off, likes to risk his life. Yeah, lucky big fronts there hanging on. Frontside Smith cry, part of the ramp crew. Knows a ramp better than almost anybody. Mute, 540, hanging on, not quite. That yeah, lucky. Kind of a weird point in the rotation right there. When he got halfway around, he kind of slowed down and then sped back up. And that put him down in a weird spot just underneath the lip right there on the sticker tape. But again, how about that start to that? He was talking about it last night. I wasn't sure if we were going to see it today, but there it was. As we get set to take another look here at Brazil's Ronnie Gomez. So far, really the only, well, I, we'll have to see what happens on the time clock right there. We didn't have a time clock, but I think him and Moto are the only two that have had a full 30 second run thus far in the comp yeah absolute wrecking ball of a skater tail grab 540 yeah ronnie mallon five got one in the bag already he'll flip front of there did you see how he just lofted into that tail grab five it was so smooth so oh. dialed right there 
But again, he's got a he's got a solid run in the books for that first round right there. So you got room to improve after that. After you got one in the books, you can keep expanding on that, throwing some different things into the line, if you will. Here comes right. Reef Orlando. Are we going to get another look at all that tech Ten. wizardry that was going on in that first round? round? I can barely comprehend what he's doing. It's absolutely difficult to do the highest level on all of these no grab lip tricks. Front side style here, yeah, Reef. See how he just styled that one out, just making that one look Tail absolutely fly. effortless. Oh, my goodness. Just too easy. Wow, front side. Of the Tail grab to Decker. Did you see his foot come off on that last one? That front yeah, foot was, oh Whoa. my gosh! What is happening right now? Fake five out of fake. A little bit safe on this run. Cab backside Decker. And that's the one that got him in the last run right there. We'll see what happens here with his last couple of seconds there. Uh, wow, that's the fakey switch nose grind to switch front side, shove it in. I can barely even say the tricks that he's doing, man. Well, we had a run clock going up there on the graphics for a while there, so that had to be close again to the 30-second mark, but we will wait and see. And again, this uh, no scores and no rankings as we roll through this contest out here. It's going to be a big reveal once it is all said and done. So uh, here we go with run number two. He's up on top of the rolling right there. Beaver Fleming had a little bit of uh, trouble there in that first round, trying to put it together here in round number two. Yeah, Beaver using all the ram, alley -oop, judo to frigid air, frigid to judo air, kick flip indie, late hand flip. How in the world did he get that one back wow. under his feet? I'll have to see that one on the instant replay later, but that was pretty impressive. There we go, the time oh, clock. Just missing the five. Back in the mix, he had about 12 seconds on the fall right there, so there we go, next to the uh, Lego City branding right there. The time clock comes back into play right there, so a tough break there here in round two. We'll have to look to round three as we get set to bring back in Another Brazilian athlete in the mix, Luigi Cini, a park and vert rider. Yeah, Luigi, absolute ripper, starting from the top of the roll-in. Love the roll-in starts, lots of speed, a big front side sailfish, yeah, Luigi. Just full extension with that back leg, almost looked like he got that back knee on the grip tape. Melon 5, absolutely no worries. Front side bone air, super styling. Just missing that key flipping. I think, I think to be honest, like it's been really hard skating this ramp. Not, not much practice for most of these dudes. They're still working it out. So it's just an extra bit of gnarliness when you see someone like Ronnie make a run like he did before. Okay, so that's going to bring up Marcelo Bastos once again. Originally from Brazil, now a U.S. citizen, skates and travels the world with his wife, who is a luxury travel agent. He's coming down the roll in here for attempt number two. Yeah, kick it over the backside, kick flip Mallon, front side air, smooth style, kick flip in the air, Marcelo. Ah, oh, just missing the tail five. Yeah, you mentioned in that first run, it's been a while, that skating injured, and uh, you could just see on the wind up on the spin right there, just a little behind that one, if you will. Well, it definitely gets a little bit hard if you haven't had a lot of practice. If you, you know, you've been injured and stuff like that. You've basically got 12 walls to make. But right now we've got Kiefer Wilson starting out out of the gate. Do you see the height right there? I mean, th this kid's hungry right now. He's got something around. to prove. He told me last week we're at the Junior World Games. He said, this is my thing. I'm going to shine next week. And so far in the first 15 seconds here, Kiefer Wilson putting it together right now. All right, what's he got now? Coming in fakey from the roll-in. He'll flip Indy Gates, who's not quite. Man, the flip tricks here, getting them all today. He's not happy. That's all right with the jam format, best run that counts. You get another shot at it right there. So again, try to shake that one off. Short term memory right there. Get back up to the top and keep the eyes on the prize for round number three as we get set to bring back in Clay Kreiner, originally from South Carolina, Simpsonville, South Carolina, if you will, now resides in the San Diego wow. area. Absolute innovator of all transition style skateboarding. Big airs, kick the pinny. Yeah, he, Clay, he, hang it on. He got a lot done in the first 10 seconds uh, of that run and still right there at the halfway point. Got a silver medal at the inaugural Nitro World Games when we had uh, Big Air. As we mentioned before, this is only the second time we've contested skate vert in the history of the Nitro World Games back in 2018. But in the inaugural year at the Big Air, Clay walked out of there with a silver medal in that event as we bring back in Mitchie Brusco. Wow, this is me one to watch. Mitchie is an absolute shredder. Such difficult moves, such as that kickflip, Melon 5, straight off the bat. Front side air, kickflip, Melon hanging on. 
Mallon 540 putting it together. Yeah, Mitchy. Just now at the halfway point, 15 seconds down, 15 left to go. We'll see what he caps off the last part of the run with here. Backs at Mellon three, switch backs at what's coming up next. Les twist, yeah, Mitchy. Backside lip slide. Two seconds, one, and that is going to do it. Mitchie's got a full 30 seconds in the books here in this second round of runs here in our skateboard vert final jam session. Yeah, that's right. Mitchie's got one in there. We'll hope to push that one up next run, but right now I think we've got Moto coming in next. He has four X Games medals to his name. He has a gold and three silver. First Japanese skater to win X Games gold as he comes down the roll. And I'm pretty sure he was right at the 30 second mark. I think he had a solid run again. We didn't have a time clock on our monitor, but he is putting it down here in run number two, Renton. Wow, front foot impossible, Lena into an alley 540, Stalefish 540, really turning it up on this one. How is that, Lena? Absolutely classy skateboarding from Moto. Faking nose grab 540. Oh, bailing with eight seconds left, Moto. Man, what a run, that, uh, that, that was insane. Yeah, just the, the style, the, it was just effortless. And just with a little bit of time left right there, we're being told that there's seven minutes left here in this jam session. So we will go back up to the top of the order here and at least get another round of runs. Will there be four runs? We will have to wait and see as we welcome back in Ash Wilkham. Yeah, Ash making the kickflip indie. You get a little loose uh, going across the flat right there. It looked like you got a little bit of speed wobble coming across the flat, and that might have thrown him off there. But again, tough break right there for Ash. Welcome. Ah, uh, it's a good day. Skateboarding in front of this crowd in a rad place with all these rad crew. I think it's a great day, man. Yeah, these guys have been chomping at the bit all week long. And as you said, with the rain earlier, earlier in the week, there wasn't a lot of practice How's time. This, and, oh, man? lucky. Wow. Bob drops again off that rolling. Whoa. And then that one does him in on the first wall right there. And as you mentioned earlier, there is no first wall rebate. That is unfortunately going to do him in. But you got to give him credit for trying to start off his run in that manner. Not once, but twice, Renton. Yeah, well, right now we've got Ronnie. As we said before, he's got one in the bag. Big backside air. Frontside air. Yeah, Ronnie putting it together. Tail grab 540. Mellon 540. Gonna want to better his first run. Heel flip frontside air. Ultra smooth. Kick flip Indy Varial Revert. Wow, Ronnie turning it up. Fakey Rock. Just hangs on to that one. He's under 10 seconds. What? He's gonna be able to hang on here and get another full run in the books. Last couple of seconds, ticking down. Well, Ronnie, what's he got here? Switch heel flip front. Oh, oh, so close. Was that in time? I, I, the judges got their work cut out for him on that one. I, he was fighting to hang on to that one and get it back under his feet. But man, how about that run right there? Remember, him and Moto were the only two guys to put together a full run in that opening round. And that one was big right there for Ronnie Gomez. So here we go, waiting to get the all clear. All right, we've got on Reef Orlando. Looking to make a run. Normally someone that makes runs that go for about four or five minutes for this dude. Absolute consistent machine. Did you see that? The alley, backside alley kick out. Kick? <laughs> was like a judo frontside decker. Alley, frontside nose grind, backside lip slide. Wow. Backside one foot disaster. Just playing yeah. with the lip. Whoa, alley, low C grind. Man, these are definitely not standard tricks. Wow, the fakey frontside 5 0 frontside shot. I don't know what Just it was. Look backside at that tank speed disaster. Frontside nose got lip slide. Wow. And that's going to do it right there because right there, as he said, it's on the rock to make he set wow. up. Wow, oh, Cap nose going to shove it. I, man, some absolute amazing creativity here from Reese. Alley and Cap shove it. He just keeps going. Those last wow, two. Wow, backside 360 shove it. Man, wow. I mean, just throwing it out there, not downplaying what just happened, but those last two were after the buzzer. The last second tick down as he came out of that rock to fakey right there. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll have to wait and see how that one gets ranked, but man, that was such a technical run out of Reef. Man, I don't even think he planned that run. I reckon he just dropped in and just went for it. There was just so much going. The hits just kept coming on that one. Pick your highlight reel. Here we go once again with Beaver Fleming with a big method here once again to start it off first wall. Yeah, Beaver gone super big. Judo to Frigidaire. Just missing that kick flip, oh. but hand flipping it. Oh. I was going to say, he was scooping, pointing that back leg out, trying to make that one happen. He's kind of, he got like a miss pump coming down the transition right there, late on that hand flip. But look, he's, you never see that guy in a bad mood, just smile on his face, having the best time all the time. Ultra positive. We get set to take another look here. Here he goes, coming down the roll. It's Brazil's Luigi Cini. 
Yeah, Luigi, frontside stale. Kickflip Indy looking to get it, to put it together on his third run. Backside Mallon 540. Wow, Aliyu, oh. kickflip stale, body varial. Little rocket air. Kickflip body varial 5, wow! Putting it together, Luigi. Coming down to the final 10 seconds here. Hit the 10 second mark right at that tail grab. Kickflip Mallon. Is he going to play it cool at the end or is he going to go for it? Front side lip slide. So, yeah, and that's going to be time. Yeah, Luigi. So Luigi putting one in the books there. That is his first full 30 second run here in this jam session. And you can see just the relief right there. He is super stoked on that one. Man, kick with body burial five. Definitely a highlight of that run. Number of flip tricks. I know, wish we were getting replays right here. I'd love to see the slow-mos on this, but there you go. Luigi Cini's got one in the books as we get the thumbs up here for Marcelo Bastos, who's uh, going to send it down the rolling. Remember, he's had, a, he's had a little bit of a rough outing these last two runs on the tail five. Just missing the kickflip, Mellon. Yeah, Marcelo, we're stoked to see him in Australia no matter what. Always happy to have all these international crew come to Brisbane. Man, what a place. Okay, we get set to drop back in. Kiefer Wilson here. He was knocking on the doorstep in that last run. Can he put it down here in round number three? A big. Such a solid melon five, but missing at that time. Oh, yeah, just, Kiefer. You can see the body language right there, just frustrated by that one. Let's see if they get another round of runs, though. We'll have to wait and see as this unfolds. Here comes Clay Kreiner. Wow, well, straight out of the gate with a big 540. Style and frontside style for Shia Clay. Gearing up for something here. Kickflip Indy. Alley of Mellon 5 putting it down, going through the moves. Mute 540. Yeah, Clay. Hitting the halfway point here. Kickflip mute. Indy to fake that a little bit low, but there's the cab mute. Last couple of seconds ticking and down. That's going to be time. He's yeah, Clay with the full level oh. late shot. It. Wow. <laughs> What? Wow! Right wow. there. At that the was buzzer. exciting, man. That was that was sick. It was Back almost late, late shove it. It was almost like he heard the buzzer and just threw that one in. It was just like after the fact in his brain as he was coming across the flat bottom, like, you know what? I'm just gonna try this, and then it panned out right there. That's what a run right there by Clay Kreiner. Man, that's like typical Clay, you know, whatever he does, he's definitely gonna be surprising, he's definitely gonna be exciting. That's what I was talking about earlier. It's like you think you know what that guy's gonna do, and then bam, he throws he just throws you a complete and total curveball. And you can just see by the reaction by everybody else up on the deck. I mean the smile on Mitchie's face said it all right there as he gets set to drop in for his third attempt here in our skateboard vert final. Well, how's that move? Kick with Mellon 540. Difficult difficulty level absolutely super high. Backside kick with Mellon. Mellon 540. Yeah, Mitchie. Kick with Lean Mellon. India getting it done. That needs to get this one in the bag. Backside at 360. Mellon switch back to there. What's coming here? He's got a couple of seconds. The Mellon here. seven. Yeah, Mitchie. He's got three seconds at right there at the backside lip slide. And Mitchie oh, gets one in the bag. Yeah, right there. Mitchie. Man, I heard you. Of course I heard you. Man, Rad, look how stoked they all are, man. Look out, everybody. It is going down here in this third run. We have one skater left to go in the lineup, and then we'll have to wait and see if we have enough time on the clock to go into the next round and get another round of runs. He is your 2018 Nitro World Games Skate Vert Champion. Yeah. Here we go, Moto Shibata coming in hot. Love the classic rocket there off the roll in. Homage to Krishna Soy, alley -oop mute five, love it. Yeah, Moto, Stalfish five, super solid. Lean air, absolutely style and skate moves right here. Yeah, the cab backside, nose grab, revert, fakey 540 nose grab into the front side cab, Madonna. Yeah, Moto, the sugar cane, super styling. What's he got here? He's just got to hang on for a couple more seconds. Wow, yeah, the front side, oh my goodness. Cab into the McTwee. Wow, Moto just squeaks that one in. Wow, Moto. What is happening here in this third round? That was absolutely Holy insane, smokes. Jimmy. So Fourth run. We're getting word from Sports and Comp that there is time left on the clock. So that means we will start one more round of runs here. So everyone's going to get one more crack at it here. That third round. 
that really picked up the pace, but it's far from over yet. So here we go. Fourth and final run for Ash Wilkham. Things definitely starting to heat up. Yeah, Ash staying on LU backside. Mellon. Come on, Ash. He's got it here. Lay it down, my man. Mute 540. Yeah, Ash. He's at the halfway point here, right there at that front side stale fish. 16 years old. LU backside air. Bit of an indie dive bomber. Keep him hanging on. Yeah, Ash, man, that's pretty sick, I reckon, for his first pro comp. I thought that one, he was going to force that one back under his feet and skate away from that one. Ash Wilkham, fourth and final run there as we take another look at Lackland Abbott here. Remember, Lackey tried to bomb drop him. He made it in the second run, but then the last run, he got speed wobbles coming down that roll in there, and it just uh, threw him out on that first wall. So electing to bypass that here with a big alley backside nose grab here to start off his fourth and final run. Yeah, Lockie got some serious minerals. Indy dive bomber, frontside grind, going as fast as he can. Smith grind. Yeah, Lockie, solid skating. McTwist, ah, oh, so close. That was again just kind of a weird windup. We saw that, that last run. He got into it and then just kind of slows down the rotation and then all of a sudden just like speeds it back up in that last bit. But again, yeah. he's had a full week out here working on the ramp crew and whatnot, having an awesome time and then finding himself out here competing at Skate Vert with the 2022 Nitro World Games. So we welcome back in Brazil's Ronnie Gomez. Well, wow. starting out with the banging mute 540. Yeah, Ronnie, tail grab five. Mallon five, wanting to better his run. Ah, oh, just missing the front side heel flip. Front side air, yeah, Ronnie. Yeah, he's got two solid ones in the books. Again, if you're looking at this, you're like, why don't I see scores? Why don't we have any rankings right now? It is the big reveal here in the Skateboard Vert Final. No one knows where they are in the standings. We don't see any scores. We're going to find out once everyone's taken their fourth and final run, and they hand out the medals here inside the Suncorp Stadium. Here comes Reef Orlando, who put on a tech clinic out here today with some wild lip tricks. Absolute wizardry in the last run from Reef. Wow, alley backside Ollie. Yeah, Reef frontside alley. I think it was a frontside alley of Ollie, but he grabbed. Wow, big tail grab disaster. He just kicks Nick. the foot off and then throws that into disaster. You didn't like it frontside, you got it backside right there. <laughs> Man, mixing lip tricks with airs in one trick. He's got glue shoe. Like, how in the world does he do that? It's so impressive oh, to watch. Ah, yeah, Reef. And again, the tech savvy that Reef has shown out here today, absolutely stellar. Beaver Fleming, last attempt here, shaking it out, up on top of the roll in there. What's it gonna be for Beaver here in this final 30 seconds? Yeah, super keen, super mean. Yeah, Beaver on his final run, big backside method. Frontside air. All right, here we go. Yeah, Beaver, kickflip Indy. Yeah, there's the Axe Murderer. Yeah, Beaver, frigid air. Coming down to the final 10 seconds here. Can he hang on and get a full one in the books here this last round? Yeah, the Mallet 5 hanging on. Oh. No, not quite. Yeah, Beaver. Just with the last <laughs> couple of seconds, that one gets him going across the flat bottom right there. But he still tries to throw it back under his feet as the board comes back at him right there. Yeah, he's smiling. Always smiling. Always stoked. What a positive dude. Yeah, the energy that this guy brings into the arena when he's out on the Nitro Circus live tour, I mean, it's uh, you can't accurately describe it. You just have to see it for yourself. The fans absolutely love that guy. But right now, we shift our attention to Luigi Cena out of Curitiba, Brazil. That third round, he was able to get a full run in the books right there. So the judges have their work cut out for him here today. And again, it's a big reveal. We don't know who's going to be on that podium until it's all said and done. Yeah, man, that's a hard one. You got a few gnarly runs in there. Luigi's last run, super gnarly with a kickflip body, varial five, amongst other flip tricks, gearing up to get down off the rolling. Yeah, Luigi. Okay, we got a green light. Here he comes down the rolling. This is the fourth and final round of runs. If you're just joining us here. Yeah, there's the backside melon five. Ah, oh, just missing it. Yeah, he's got one in the bag. That was right. Yeah, Luigi. Yeah, that third round of runs is good. That...
Okay, so here comes Marcelo Bastos. Yeah, Marcelo laying down the kick for Mallon. Ah, oh, not quite gone front side. And again, I mean, long-time veteran competitor. This guy's been in the game for a long time, and as you mentioned, I mean, out here trying to do this with an injury, and when you don't get a lot of practice, that is never an easy thing. But again, happy to see Marcelo out here in the mix. All right, Kiefer's final run, rolling in to the big backside melon five. Alley backside air, super smooth style, kick flip Indy, yeah, Kiefer. Indy five, mixing it up. New tricks on his fourth run, front side stalefish. Coming in fakey. Yeah, he makes it happen, the that heel flip. Up. That's what oh. got him in in that last round there, and he hangs on here. You got five seconds, Kiefer, hang on, Backside, buddy. Backside, lip slide. Frontside blunt, yeah, Kiefer, he made a run. In the last round of runs, the young man gets it done right there. Yeah, Kiefer, he's gonna be super stoked. Yeah, 15 years old from Nyora in Victoria. Yeah, big smile on his face. The yeah, mood has changed. What a polar opposite to the last few runs right there. You see, he was frustrated, he was shaking his head, but then in the fourth and final run, and when it counts, the young man puts it together right there. So we are getting some standings. We're being told in our area that we do have some standings as of right now. The next skater you are going to see in, Clay Kreiner here. Uh, we're being told that he is currently sitting in that number five position as of right now. We have a little bit of a battle going on for uh, our top couple of spots here, Renton. Yeah, man, Clay, if he goes off, he's got one in the bag, not a lot to lose, and he's got some absolute wild skill to throw down. Always an absolute ripper to watch. Clay rolling in from the roll-in. Big backside melon five. Yeah, Clay. Kickflip, body variable, melon five. Bit of a trademark of Clay's, bringing it out on his fourth run, binging it up. Backside Varial getting his board back into the classy McTwist. Yeah, Clay. Just missing the front of there. Yeah, Clay. So that'll yeah. bring us down to our final two skaters here. Mitchy Brusco and Moto Shibata, who, by the way, happen to be sitting in the top two spots as... So Reef Orlando, I'm seeing right now, Moving up into that number four spot, Ronnie Gomez sitting in third, Moto Shibata sitting in second. And, and Mitchie Brusco currently sitting in that number one spot with an 88 flat right there. Moto sitting just behind him with an 85.33. So it's literally gonna come down to these last two runs, Ren. Ah, uh, just missing the kickflip Melon five, but in first place at the moment, yeah, Mitchie. Absolute technical wizard, throwing down all sorts of tricks all over the ramp. Kickflips, rotations, rotations and kickflips together, pushing skateboarding every run he takes. One skater left to go. It's Brusco, Shibata and Gomez. You're one, two, three. Moto is the last man standing here to shake up our top three and he's in for one wow. last run. Oh my goodness. alley -oop, front side lean, front foot impossible. Alley -oop, McTwist, classy skateboarding from Moto Stalefish 5, big and gnarly did, lean air. Did you see how high that backside Stalefish 5 was? It was massive. That might have been the biggest one he's done out here today. Yeah, the fakie nose grab 540, pushing it. Fakie mute 5, yeah, Moto. Cab Melon disaster. He's got time for one more wall here. What's Front he got? Oh, impossible to lean the tail. Moto bringing the fire on the final run. I almost look like he to tail, maybe to disaster. Yeah, I knew no, he was, was going to tail, but tail, man. Looked, that was a front foot impossible lean to tail. Absolutely shredding. What a competition, Jimmy. I mean, that really came down to the wire there. That third round of runs ended up being the game changer for a couple of these guys. But again, Mitchy Brusco with that 88 flat, and then Moto with that 85.33, and then Ronnie with that 80. Point three three. So that is it for runs here. So now the judges have to sit there and deliberate and they have to talk it over, go over things to make sure that they are happy with these results. So we now get to play the waiting game here. And this is where uh, you and I get to uh, walk that proverbial plank and uh, talk about some of the standouts here. Man, that was some absolute shredding there, Jimmy. Uh, just the technical moves from Mitchie. Moto's super styling, skateboarding. 
How about Ronnie, though? I mean, it, you know, and, and Reef as well. I mean, he really put on a show out there today as well. But let's take a look back at how this all went down in the skate vert final. Yeah, Rocket Air. And the front foot impossible lean air, absolute ripper of a move, absolute mayhem from Moto Shibata. So many different st styles of skateboarding on display in this vert competition. So many different tricks from different generations of skating pushed to the absolute limit of how it can be done. And again, Moto skating last because he comes into this year 2018 skate vert champion at Nitro World Games. But you have to talk about the intensity of Clay Kreiner. I mean, this guy is an absolute powerhouse. Yeah, and how was that late shove it after time? You really never know what you're going to get with Clay. You just know you're going to get something crazy. Yeah, it was that third run for him as well where he squeaked it all in there right at the buzzer. And speaking of the buzzer, how about Kiefer? He was down and out, and then he gets into that fourth run and makes it all happen. That's a cool thing about this format. You get four chances, three throwaways, and it's all about the best stuff that you can do. And Ronnie Gomez, yeah, man. He started this thing off with us. I mean, he was, him and Moto were the only two guys to put together a full run in that opening round. Yeah, man. Switch heel flip, front side airs, kick flip, indie, burial, revert. Man, like such strong flip moves from Ronnie. It really is such a mission to judge this stuff. Just so many different things getting thrown down, different areas of the ramp, different types of skateboarding. You know, and you got to give Blackie credit as well, starting off that run in rounds two and three with that bomb drop off the railing, the roll in there. But again, I mean, pick your highlight reel for Moto and Mitchie out here. So a lovely aerial shot here. Looking at beautiful downtown Brisbane and the iconic Suncorp Stadium. And what is that shining orb in the sky right there, Rent? And the sun decided to make an appearance out here today on this Monday to allow us to get this event in the books. And it looks like the results are official. It's going to be Mitchy Brusco with the win in 2022. That 88 flat is going to hold up. And you are looking at your skate vert Nitro World Games champion here in 2022. It's Mitchy Brusco. Let's send it down now, deck side with Caroline Buchanan, who's with Mitchie. Congratulations. How does that feel? Thank you. Thank you. It's been a long week, a lot of rain, a new ramp, very little practice. So I don't think anyone knew what to expect when this comp started. You mentioned to me that one of the other athletes gave you some motivation mid-run. Can you share what that was? Uh, Clay, Clay told me to make a good financial decision and make my seven. He yelled it while I was skating, and it helped. Well, I think you've got a good financial decision with the win here today. Congratulations. I'm going to send it back to you guys. <laughs> make a good yeah. financial decision and make the seven. That is absolutely awesome. So Clay Kreiner now adds another thing to his resume. He's a financial advisor mid-comp, Renton. Oh, man, that's, that, that's just a lesson for life, isn't it? Make that seven right now. What a comp that was right there. You know, what a week. I mean, mitchie has been here for a while. He's been here for, uh, for two weeks now. He came out earlier. Uh, he was out there at Gold Coast last weekend. Uh, he was a mentor and a judge there at the uh, Junior World Games. Well, and it's all said and done. How about Reef Orlando finishing out in fourth place right there? You got Clay Kreiner in fifth. Luigi Cini from Brazil finishes out in sixth. But your podium here, Ronnie Gomez, Moto Shibata, and it's Mich Mitchie Brusco walking out of here in 2022, your champion. Nitro World Games Skate Vert Final. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better comp right there. I mean, the action, it was a little bit of a rough go in that opening round, but the energy kept building. And guys started feeding off of one another once those runs started happening. But, uh, well, it's just that atmosphere, you know, when your mates start making stuff and uh, then you start making stuff. And it's just like everyone just wants to push skateboarding to where it's never been before. We got Reef doing all those no handed airs and switch craziness from Ronnie. I mean, it just went down.
Yeah, and again, a big shout out right there to uh, Kiefer as well. I mean, you could see the absolute frustration on that young man's face after that second and that third run, but then he comes back in round number four and puts one down. So hats off to him. But let's take a look once again at your champion here. Kickflip Melon 5, that trick difficulty cannot be understated. Run full of technical moves from Michi Melon 5. The hardness of the tricks definitely win today. And this switch backs it there into the 720. Absolute hammer moves. So that is a wrap for the Skate Vert final here from Suncorp Stadium. Beautiful downtown Brisbane. Right now, we take you out of the booth and send you down to the floor to none other, to none other than Micah Krantz with our podium ceremony. Brisbane, Australia. Can I get some noise for these amazing skate vert riders? Can you please give them a yell? How sick was that? Vert is alive, it is well, and it is part of the Nitro World Games. It's time to get our podium up and on here. In third place, how about a big round of applause for Ronnie Gomez? In second place, absolutely shredding this vert ramp. It was just so close between first and second. How about some noise for Moto Shivana? And our winner, making fine financial decisions. How about some noise for Mitchy Brusco? some noise for all three of our competitors this evening. We have one more award to give away. That is our Lego City Innovation, giving away the best trick, because Lego City loves to see innovation. And that is going to go to the Kickflip Melon 540. Give it up for Mitchie Brusco, also winning our Lego City Innovative yeah, trick of the event. Make some noise for our podium. Mitchie Brusco walking out of here in top honors out here today and uh, having a very, very great year. Did a uh, very old Flip McTwist in X Games Cheap to take best trick gold earlier this year. Walked out of uh, X Games this year with a bronze medal in Vert back in July. Got third in the Vert Alert Contest or Vert Attack, if you will, back in uh, Utah in August. And now he finds himself the Nitro World Games Skate Vert Champion. Well, that is a wrap for us, Renton. It has been a pleasure to call the action with you here in the booth. Your final thoughts, sir, before we send you on your way? Jimmy, thank you. Thank you, Brisbane. Vert skating, what an amazing sport to do. Stoke for all the people to be here. Stoke for the skaters, and I can't wait to see what's coming next. Well, Renton Miller, everybody, he's heading off to Argentina, sir. Again, I'm going to shake your hand. Safe travels. It was an honor calling this action with you here in the booth. We're not done yet. we got plenty more still to come. we got BMX triple hits still to come. Plenty more from Nitro World Games here in downtown Brisbane.
Nitro World Games is brought to you by LEGO City. Ready, build, race. Head to visitbrisbane.com.au to plan your next Brisbane escape. And by City Beach Australia, your number one destination for the latest skate, street, surf, and fashion. So love here at BMX Triple Hit, Alex Colborne. 360 triple tail whip into a truck driver to 360. That's like a dream chase. I went quad, that went four times around. I went quad. Oh my god! Back with Mars to tell him. Oh, 360 double tell him. Truck driver, no problem. That one worked out good. That's one of the most amazing feelings ever. This next rider looking for redemption. Brian Fox. Nice big bar spin backflip. Into a 1080 on the second set. Into a double backflip. I just did it. I, I'm, I'm still in shock right now.
This next rider looking for redemption. Brian Fox. Nice big bar spin backflip. Into a 1080 on the second set. Into a double backflip on the last set. That was insane. This rider here known for his technical skills. Number one qualifier from the Lake Paris event. This is Nick Bruce. Nick Bruce 360 triple tail lift. Into a 360 backflip. No hander. He is the last man to rise. Can he claim it again? Bar spin backflip to tail lift. Solid. I honestly can't believe I just did it. I, I'm, I'm still in shock right now. Welcome back everyone to Brisbane here in Queensland. We are downtown just off the banks of the Brisbane River here inside the iconic Suncorp Stadium. It's the return of the Nitro World Games after a three year hiatus. And as I mentioned before, finding a new home here this season on Australian soil. Two events in the books, four more to go. Coming up next, we've got BMX Triple Hits brought to you by none other than Brisbane, Queensland. Jimmy Coleman here in the booth. I am now joined by Todd Mine who is going to be calling the action with me out here today. And well, we have been waiting a long, long time for this one because we haven't actually contested this event at the Nitro World Games. You gotta go all the way back to 2017 when we were at Rice Eccles Stadium, all the way back in Utah. We broke off for a couple of years. We did some park competitions inside this California Training Center. So it's been a long time since we've had these ramps back out here at the Nitro World Games. But right now, let's send it down to the floor with Caroline Buchanan and Travis Pastrana. We're down here in the middle of the floor of Suncorp Stadium. The sun is out, the event is firing, and I'm down here with none other than himself, Travis Pastrana. This is your vision, Nitro World Games. Tell us about the history and how we got here. Uh, this is the big air of action sports. All these riders have been throthing to get out there and do stuff that's never been done, stuff that they've never done and stuff that no one else has ever seen. So many riders from BMX to skate to scooter are trying tricks that literally no one in the world has ever thought of. You can't even do it in video games. So thank you all for coming back. The sun is out today. Let's get it on. And we are about to kick off with BMX triples. What is it that people love about this course behind us? You know, this is a really awesome event because you have three best trick events back to back to back. They have to be absolutely spot on. Definitely a crowd favorite, one that I love seeing. And then what's really cool is you got R. Willie, who just came from Scooters. He's doing this over here, and then he's got Big Air later. The trifecta, absolutely awesome. Cannot wait to see what they all throw down. And uh, local hero, Olympic gold medalist, this is going to be awesome. Get behind the riders and give it up for Travis Pastrana, everyone. We're going to send it back to you guys. Okay, so there you go. Todd, mine, take it away. Take a look at that start list. Talk us through it. Who are your standouts here today? Without a doubt, my favorite standout is Logan Martin. He is now an Olympic gold medal. BMX just debuted in the Olympics. He took home the win, but we have a heavy list, the list of riders. David Godiak, Brandon Lupos, Pat Casey, Kieran Riley. He's also a new guy to the sport in terms of coming to these contests. He is, without a doubt, going to be throwing down some massive bangers. Justin Dow, Daniel Sandoval, they've made their way over from the USA, and I cannot wait to see what goes down. Yeah, and as Travis said, it's kind of like a best trick contest, but you've got to do it three times in a row. I mean, the, you've got to have the big tricks, but the hits come three in a row right here. And I mean, what we saw at the inaugural season in 2016 and then the follow-up year in 2017 inside the Rice Cycle Stadium in Salt Lake City, Utah, I mean, it was absolute mayhem out there. And you have a heavy hitter start list out here, a veritable who's who in the world of freestyle BMX. And this one, I always get a little extra wound up for this one, Todd. It is BMX 
triple hits brought to you by Brisbane, Queensland. Queensland, we are about to start it off with a young man out of Omaha, Nebraska. It's Jacob Thieb. He rides dirt and park, won the Pannonian Challenge in Croatia back in June earlier this year, as well as the Butcher Jam in, Germ in Germany June of this year in both park and dirt. Yeah, the thing with this contest as well, Jimmy, is, you know, out there you have a lot of one trick hits. These guys have to land their tricks perfectly in a row to hit the three jumps. And uh, on the on the last jump there, you have a resi set up. So this is a little bit safer for the guys. And this is where the big tricks are going to go down. You can see everybody hanging out up there and athletes staging at the top of the rolling there, just steely eyed looking down that rolling right there. With the exception of Ryan Williams, he's just got a big old smile on his face. But here we go. We started off first rider and it's Jacob theme out of Omaha, Nebraska. He is dropping in 360 double downside whip into a quadruple tail whip into a 720 bar spin. Oh, just sliding out there. Just a little too much rotation on that seven right there and slides out on that res. He gets up, waving that one off to the fans right there. You can see you got a little bit of road rash on that one. That resi will burn you up a little bit when you slide down that thing, Todd. It's definitely not nice falling on the resi, even though it is a bit softer. But as you said, just seeing a perfect quad whip there mid set with with just a 720 bars been unfortunately just overcooking it there a little bit but we have many more runs for them to make up yeah it is the best run that counts out here today in this event and i believe at this point in time we are down to two rounds of runs if i am not mistaken so we will have to look to the next round of runs there for jacob right there so he's going to clock in with a 44.33 for that first outing right there it's always tough being the first guy in todd yeah it's always tough being the first guy in uh, to kind of set the bar, you know. But uh, up next we have a favorite of mine, Boyd Hilda. Uh, this guy's super tech, has lots of street skills, starting off with a bar spin backflip right here. Uh, one, uh, one handed Superman seat grab into a quadruple truck driver. Wow, it's, that happened so fast right there. Boyd Hilda out of the Gold Coast. Your simple session 2022 BMX Street Runner back in June, and he also won best trick out there, Todd. Yeah, Boyd normally rides a lot of street, so he doesn't really compete too often in these kind of contests. So it's going to be cool to watch him compete this weekend. Big backflip bars in there. Into a Superman C grab one hander. Watch this one. So fast. It's the bar catch, bar catch, bar. It's in the middle of a 360 right there. So that'll put him up there in the low 70s. He's got a 71.33 here. Just our second rider in as we get ready to go back up to the top of the rolling here. Take a look at another Australian rider, Todd. This is Jake Walwork. He is a Ramp Fest local. He's also a carpenter, full-time carpenter, in, addi in addition to being a professional rider. Yeah, Jake uh, definitely has some big tricks in the bag. So I'm certainly expecting to see something pretty big here. He's the BMX Park winner in the 2018 Feast World Series Chengdu China event. Right, he's dropping in. We got a massive double flip on the first set. Into a front flip tail whip. Into a 360 triple whip. That's an awesome run there for Jay. That double to start off was wild. It almost like he slowed down in the second rotation right there. We'll have to take another look at that one. But a big run right there for Jake Walwork here to open it up here in round one. This double flip was absolutely unreal. Spot is landing there on the first flip. Did you see how he kind of extended a little yeah. bit on that? Am I wrong to say that? No, a lot of guys on a double flip, you know, you kind of spot your landing coming around on that first rotation. But that, that was an unreal run. The double flip into a front flip tail whip. Not many dudes are doing that out here. And then finishing it off with a 360 triple whip. That was an awesome run there for Jake. I know he's going to be stoked with that one. So the judge is working off of a 100-point scale out here today. And we're into the high 80s here in the opening round. It's an 87.66 right there in round one here for Jake Wallwork. So nicely done there. So you get one in the books there, Todd, that takes the pressure off you a little bit, right? Moving on into that next round, taking a look at Ryan Williams coming off of a second place finish already today in the scooter best trick category. He happened to uh, walk out of here with the win both in 2016 and 2017 when we held BMX triple hits. Ryan also starting off with a double flip into a front flip no hander coming in on the last set. We've got a double backflip 360. That is absolutely out there doing that and especially to do it on a jump this big 
It's uh, not very often you see that trick get done on, on a box jump this size. You can see him pointing at his eyes right there. Maybe he got a little bit of sweat in his face right there. I don't know, he was talking to somebody as he rode away from that one. But let's take another look, see what went wrong here, Todd. The double flip, spot that landing again on the first flip. Into a front flip, no-hander. Getting set up for that massive double back flip 360 on the last set. Unfortunately, just coming up a little bit too short. But that's what I was saying, Jimmy. You have to land perfect on all these jumps so you can get over the next one and and, and clear the jump. Because he unfortunately just come up a little bit short there. Yeah, a little under-rotated and got the back tire on that knuckle landing right there. But he's got a smile on his face. He's already seen the podium once out here today over at Scooter. Best tricks with a 47.66 for him. So he's going to throw that one out and look to that uh, second round of runs. I mean, and that's tough, too. You only get two runs. Uh, you don't have a lot of shots at it out here on the BMX triple hits. Going back up to the top as we get set to welcome in Mr. Josh Matthews here. Lots of Instagram clips. This guy's got uh, big rotations, makes him look easy. He likes things like 1080s uh, and double back flips over spines as well as double flares. Double flipping straight off that first jump. It seems like that's a... Speaking of oh, 1080s. Unfortunately, just coming up a little bit short there on that 10. That was just another day at the office right there. He's dancing. Second hit, you know what? I'll just do a 1080 right here. That It was such a casual spin right there. Yeah, Josh is really good at 1080s too. So I just think, unfortunately, he landed a little bit low on that double flip, which didn't set him up good enough for that 10. So he too will have to look to that second and final round of runs right there. Take another look. A double flip. Just getting a little bit uneasy there on that landing, which just threw his spin off there on the 1080. But as you're saying, Jimmy, there's two runs. Best run counts. So he has another shot to make up for that. I mean, he had the height, the rotation was there, just a little too over amped there, Todd, a little too anxious. Yeah, as I was saying, Jimmy, it just kind of looked like he just didn't kind of land as good as what he wanted to on that first jump. Okay, we go back up to the top and welcome in our first Polish rider here, David Godziak. This is your X Games 2022 BMX Dirt Gold medalist, by the way. Dropping in into a 360 double bar spin, into a cash roll. What do we have in the last set? And a triple whip to finish off. I don't think he got quite what he wanted on that first jump, Jimmy. Let's see if we can take another look at the replay here. And uh, you can kind of see by the reaction right there, you are absolutely right. I think he wanted a little bit more right there and kind of thinking that one through. But you get two runs. Remember, it's the best run that counts as we take a look back here for David Gontiak. Dropping in with a 360 double bar uh, spin. He wanted to send it back the other way. Yeah, maybe. I think he definitely wanted to spin the bars a couple more times. Into the cash roll, into a triple tail whip. You know, it's crazy. David rides both mountain bikes and BMX. He is incredible on both. Oh, yeah, he is an absolute beast in the mountain bike world as well. But, yeah, you can see on that replay, he wanted more in that first hit right there. So that's going to put him down there in the low 70s with the 73.66. So uh, it's going to have to come down to run number two, possibly, if you're going to get on that Nitro at World Games podium here in BMX triple hits. Taking a look at Chris James right here from just down the road out of Gold Coast as he loves riding big bulls and going as high as he can. In addition to being a pro rider, he's also a butcher as well. He's multifaceted, Todd. Dropping in with a backflip no foot can can. Haven't seen that one yet. Into a front flip no hander. Land a little flat and finishing it off with a Superman secret shaking his head there. Yeah, that first one was weird. You're to see another camera angle on that one, but he, he definitely looks like he wanted more by the reaction there, Todd. Yeah, Jimmy, as I said, uh, James throwing down massive tricks. Didn't quite get what he wanted, I think, but that flip no foot can there on the first jump into a massive front flip no hander. Landed a little bit low. Not get quite too set up there on the last one into a Superman seat grab. And that's what's so gnarly about this chorus. I mean, if you don't get that perfect landing, that next hit is coming at you super fast. So if something goes wrong, you've really got to think fast. And a lot of these guys don't have brakes, so it's super hard for them to slow down if they're carrying too much speed through. Well, that'll slide him in just out of podium contention for now. 61.33 puts him in that number four spot. So it's Walwork, Godziak, Hilder, your one, two, three as of right now. But again, this is just the opening round out of two as we get set to bring in Sydney's Brandon Lupos, two-time X Games medalist. He owns one gold, one silver. Both of those are in BMX dirt.
Brandon Lupos is certainly a contender to take out first place for this contest. He has some massive tricks. Also was a part of the Australian BMX Olympic team, unfortunately having a big injury which set him back, but he's back and ready to send it. It's also your Nitro World Games 2017 BMX best trick. Silver medalist as he's coming down that rolling for his first of two. Starting off with a flip triple whip on the first hit into a 1080, unfortunately putting a foot down and just making it over that last jump. Unfortunately having a little bit of trouble there with that 1080, not getting quite what he wanted, but expecting big things on his last run. Again, it was just kind of a slow, just super casual rotation on that 1080 run right there. Just last second I had to take that foot off, maybe to slow down. Yeah, spinning tricks are kind of weird. Like the more, when you, when you carry a lot of speed, your rotation does get thrown off a bit. And it looks like these guys are carrying a, a lot of speed into that second jump. So again, it is best run that counts. So again, looking to round two there for Brandon Lupus as we bring in Placentia, California's Mr. Pat Casey, five-time X Games medalist. He owns one gold, three silver, one bronze, including a BMX Dirt gold medal in his own backyard when they hosted X Games BMX Dirt and Park and Park and Dirt Best Trick in his backyard last season. One of the best styles in BMX. It's pretty much a dream to have X Games in your backyard especially to take home the win. Here we go, let's see what he puts on. This guy is all about crazy rotations and big combo moves. Pat dropping in, starting off with a 360 Superman seat grab into a 360 bar spin tail whip, getting set up on the last, into a cash roll. <laughs> Same deal, I don't think it's quite exactly what he wanted, but at least he put a run down and got a score on the board. That was nice, thank you. So right now that high mark to beat is an 87.66, if I'm not mistaken, as we take a look back at Pat Casey's first outing here. Look at the extension. Massive 360 Super C into that 360 bar spin tail whip. Landing perfect. Is that a 360 bar spin to tail whip? Into a cash roll. As I said, Jimmy, I think he's just stoked to get a run down. At least he's got a score on the board so he can throw down something massive on these last runs. Yeah, and it's kind of the same boat for these guys as we were talking about earlier with Skate Vert with the rain this whole week. It's not like these guys got a ton of practice out here. So with the sunny conditions today and just getting out here and making some stuff happen. So that'll put him in that number two spot right there. Pat Casey checks in with an 81.33 to slide him into that number two position. So that'll bump Boyd Hilder out into that number four spot. So for right now, out of Newcastle, UK, this is Kieran Riley. Very explosive comp rider who's been making waves on the BMX scene since he was a kid. He has a very heavy YouTube presence. This guy is constantly putting up new edits and content, Todd. Yeah, it's pretty hard these days to do a trick no one's done before, but Kieran just constantly throwing down something new. Got a 360 double tail whip to bar spin, 360 double bar spin into a 720 whip on the last jump. That was a lot going on in that run right there. That was a good run there from Kieran. Kieran is just such an explosive rider, has so much power, and just has some of the biggest tricks in BMX. 360 double tail whip to bar spin. And the late bar spin as well. 360 triple bar spin, possibly wanting a fourth one there. One, two, three. I think he might have wanted to go for that fourth one, Jimmy. I think so too. Looking at the body language right there, I think he wanted to throw the quad bar spin. It's crazy too, just spin him, catch, spin, catch. That was unreal. Kieran can spin like no other guy out there. He's just, his combinations are just wild. So again, working off of a 100 point scale out here today in BMX triple hit, you get two runs that is the better of your two runs that count. So far, we haven't seen anybody jump up into the 90s yet. We've had a couple of scores up there in the 80s. We will have to wait and see. Your judges are uh, obviously talking that one over as we have not seen the score populate next to uh, Kieran's name here. So what's it gonna be? An 88.83, so. That should put him in that number one spot for right now. So nicely done there, Todd, by Kieran Riley. Yeah, he'll be stoked with that one, Jimmy, especially being on, on top at the moment. Putting a score, good, good score on the board. So getting ready to go back up to the top. 
There he is. We're looking for J2. They were zooming in on Logan Martin right there. Your X Games 2022 bronze in Mega Park, and he got a silver in dirt. Also a fixture on the Nitro Circus Live Tour. This is Jay Tui. Joyce, massive front flip, bike flip there into a flip. What do we got on the last? And the quadruple tail whip to finish off. As you saw, Jimmy, just landed a little bit low and then set him up not tight quite well on that second jump. That's all right, Jay, it's best run counts. You got another one still to come, but yeah, he wanted more. He just got a little bit of a wonky landing here. That one looked like oh, it was gonna get away from him. Yeah, he definitely had to reach out extra extra far for that one, but I think he quite possibly may have wanted to double on that second one. I mean, Bump flip, bike flip, no, nothing at the same time. Yeah, the way he tucked into that, he was thinking about that double. I'll walk that plank with you as well. But again, it's best run that counts, so we'll see him change that up in round number two right there. See how extended he was? I, I thought that thing was getting away from him. When he I, does that, I watch it time and time again, and I'm always amazed about how he's able to grab that thing and pull it back under him at the last second. Yeah, there's not too many guys out here doing that one. Our uh, Willie was the first guy to throw that one down, and then Tui came in and started throwing variations into it. You can see right there as he's waiting for the react shot. He's thinking about that one. But again, uh, two runs, best run counts. He's going to shake it off. Going to get another crack at it right there. Yep. See what he checks in with the 73 flat here. That's good enough to put you in that number five spot right now. So you need to be in the 80s as of right now if you're getting that top three. Pat Casey sitting on that bumble podium spot right now with an 81.33. But this thing is far from over. We still have some uh, names on the start list here and another round of runs. Taking a look at your BMX Park Olympic gold medalist right here. This is none other than Logan Martin. Yeah, this is definitely going to be a wild run. Logan just has an endless amount of tricks. Dropping in. What do we got? We're starting off with a flip bar spin to no-hander. Into a 720 double bar spin on the second jump. Into an op opposite quadruple tail whip. He's stoked with that one. <laughs> I was going to say, did you see the smile on his face as he rode across the resi over the, after that last hit? Man, that's great. Not, <laughs> not, not many people are even doing quadruple tail whips. And Logan just did that one opposite. He, he can literally throw tailwinds both ways, like, it, it's, it's hard to tell which is normally what's opposite. But huge backflip bar spin, no hander there. 720 double bar spin. Oh my goodness. So much height. Yeah, take another look here. This was another shot of the first hit. It's just so precise with everything. It's just so dialed, it's so methodical. And again, going oppo with the whips over the last hit there. That was a that was a very good run from Logan. He's definitely stoked with that one. That's uh, I think without a doubt going to put him on the, on the top place there. Okay, so here we go. Do we crack into the 90s on this one? And we do. Almost at the mid 90s right there at 94.66. Logan Martin finds himself in the top spot here in the latter half of round number one. So it's Martin, Riley, and Wallwork here, one, two, three. So then a bump Pat Casey down to that number four spot for right now. So with two riders left to go in the run order here, things are definitely heating up here in the latter half of round number one, Todd. Out of Virginia Beach, Virginia, this is Justin Dowell taking a silver medal in BMX Park uh, at this year's X Games. Just missed the podium in BMX Park Best Trick. He had to settle for fourth. Justin has some super quick bar spins. We got a flip triple bar spin there into a 360 tail whip, went a little low into a 360. That's called a Twix, where you do a tail whip and you throw the bars at the exact same time. That trick just doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, when you see that, you have to see that one in slow motion to fully appreciate what in the world is going on there. He has such fast bar spins. I, that was insane. I mean, that went around so fast. Land enough. Little sideways on that 360 bar spin. They're still managing to get that last trick. A 360 bar spin tail whip, that's called the Twigs. I mean, he's completely off the bike at that point what? in the middle of that rotation. I think he's got a flat tire, Jimmy, so he's maybe just from landing oh. a little bit sideways there. Well, fortunately. Yeah, I think he's pointing his ear because the with the tire blowout, those things, oh, I mean, you can speak from experience on this one. Those things, uh, it sounds like a shot out of a cannon when that goes off. So that one probably blew out the uh, eardrum temporarily right there. But taking a look at our standings here, Logan Martin, that top spot, only rider to score in the 90s as of right now. But we still have one more rider to go here. 
Yeah, it's going to be hard to beat Logan's score there. That's a high, a high, high score. What are we? Is Tara going to explode? So trying to see where the tire actually blew out, was able to ride out into the airbag right there, but you can see him tapping that ear right there, and uh, that's never fun when you're that close to the old uh, tire blowout. That'll, that's, that's definitely one you'll remember for a while. Last guy to go in the run order here out of Corona, California. This guy is another one who's got style for miles, and he's a bit of a tech wizard when it comes to combo tricks. This is Daniel Sandoval, your overall champion on the 2022 Monster Energy BMX Triple Challenge. I think we're going to be in for a treat here, Jimmy. Daniel is so consistent. We've got a 360 oppo double downside tail whip into a 360 bar spin. Oppo tail whip bar spin to 360. Oh, I can't man. even keep up. Did you see that reaction right there? Wow. Lucky like so just throws that one in at the end. What is this going to do to the standings? Wow, I, that's going to be a tough one, Jimmy. I, I think that might have it. That was, that was wild. I, I couldn't even keep up with the tricks. He's stoked on that one. Yeah, I, I think I think that one's gonna take first place. So again, Logan Martin sits in that top spot with what I believe is a 94.66. But I mean, look at the mechanics of this run here from Daniel Sandoval. Three bar spin, tail whip to bar spin. 360 double downside tail whip there. Three bar down whip to bar. That's so many tricks. So dialed. Daniel's so consistent. <laughs> the best was the reaction out of that yeah. last hit right there. And he just look, just looks up at the fans and just throws that hand up and claims it. Right, yeah, got a little, came in a little hot on Ryder's right side right there, but rides that one out. That's a make, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be interesting, Jimmy. And at wow. 96.33, wow. so at the end of round number one, we have a new leader here in BMX triple hit here at the Nitro World Games. What a finish to cap off round number one there for Daniel Sandoval. So it's Sandoval, Martin, and Riley, your one, two, three, at 96.33, a 94.66, and an 88.83 for now. However, we've still got one more round of runs to go. It is still up for grabs. We've got plenty more BMX triple hit when we come back to Nitro World Games here at the Suncorp Stadium. Nitro World Games is brought to you by LEGO City. Ready, build, race. Queensland.com forward slash events. Be part of the action at Queensland's live events. And by City Beach Australia. Your number one destination for the latest skate, street, surf, and fashion.
what's going on guys, it's Logan Martin here. Me and my family are spending the day up in Brisbane at the Lone Pine Koala Sanctuary. Come join us for some fun wildlife experiences. Do you like it? Is it your first time having a koala? Definitely my favourite experience here was holding the koala. I've never held a koala before. Um, I've patted one, but never held it. I would definitely bring my family here again. Noah had so much fun. Luna loved the kangaroos. She loved checking all the animals out as well. So I'll definitely bring the whole family back. So there you go, Logan Martin and the family taking in some of the sights and sounds here in the greater Brisbane area. I mean, so many great things to see and do. I've had a blast. I've been here for almost two weeks now, Todd, just down there at Gold Coast for uh, Nitro Junior Games. And just, uh, what a beautiful city here, right on the Brisbane River. And I mean, this stadium is absolutely epic. You got over 52,500 seats here across three different levels for these fans to pack in out here for this BMX triple hit presented by Brisbane, Queensland. And Logan, who you just saw there at the Koala Sanctuary, finds himself in the number two spot, followed by Kieran Riley in number three. But it was Daniel Sandoval, last guy to go in the run order, that sits in the top spot for now here with a 96.33. However, we get to do this all over one more time. It is two rounds of runs, and it is the best run that counts. That's what's going to get you on the podium out here at the Nitro World Games. Jimmy Coleman here in the booth alongside Todd Mine calling the action. But, uh, you know, we saw some guys having a rough go there with some of their lines uh, kind of over rotating a little bit, a couple slide outs. And some guys wanting to throw some extra moves into the mixer. We go back up to the top of the order once again with Jacob Thiem. Jacob starting out with a 360 bar spin straight into that quadruple whip mid set, finishing off with a 720 bar spin. Unfortunately, not getting quite exactly what he wanted there on the first hit. He might have to take his first score. Messed up the first we'll jump. see. Yeah, that 44.33. It's got him in that number 12 spot for now. Yeah, I think he wanted a little bit more than that 360 bar spin, Jimmy. But that quad whip mid set to do that trick alone is just incredible. And to be doing it mid set, you have to be dialed, dialed at it to be able to do that. 720 bar spin. Still going to be better than his first run. I believe. We are about to find out here again. First round run there was a 44.33. It is the better of your two runs that determine our final rankings out here today. We have our top two riders in the 90s and then our rounding up the podium. There you go. Bumps up to 69.66 right there. So that'll bump him up two spots. He was in 12th pre one pre run. So that'll wedge him in there between uh, Hilder and James there. So not the one that he wanted, but still bumps up a couple of spots right there as we get set to bring in Boyd Hilder for his second and final attempt. Currently finds himself in that number nine spot. Boyd started off with a massive flip bar spin into that Superman seat grab one hander doing a tail whip X up on that last jump. You know, having two runs, Jimmy, and only one counting, you know, it does does put a lot more pressure on, on the guys than usual. Well, as you said earlier, I mean, this guy, he's got the street savvy. I mean, he's got this gnarly mix of gnarly riding and technical and extremely consistent. He really shines in the street category, but getting out here and boosting the BMX triple hit. Cannonball one-hander there. Into that tail whip, X up. Almost looks like a bit of a Superman there as well. Boyd's always smiling. He's going to stick with that first run score, that 68. Going to get the throw in, so that's going to keep him in that number nine position. So we get set to bring it back in Jake Wallwork. Now, he was in the top spot for a while, slowly slid down the podium. He finds himself just on the outside, looking in as of right now with that 87.66, Todd. Starting off with a massive double flip no-hander. We haven't seen that one yet. Front flip, bar spin to no-hander. Into a front flip tail whip. That is an unreal run from Jake. He is stoked. How in the world did that wow. just happen? Because he looked like he got a wacky landing coming out of that first hit right there. And that was a heck of a save. We'll have to see it again on the replay. But 
man, you can see him patting his chest on that one, and rightly so. Watch this. So the double back with no hander on the first set. Do you see the wobble yeah. and the flat going to yeah, that second Jake hit? Yeah, always makes it happen. He always throws down, has the biggest tricks out there. I, I'm glad I'm not a judge, Jimmy. How did he tuck into that late no-hander out of that? I mean, he wobbled across the flat and still had the presence of mind to do that. That's absolutely incredible. Jake is going to be over the moon with that run. And as I said, Jimmy, having the two runs, you know you kind of have, have to throw down as big as you can. You can't kind of give it... You know, kind of a, a half kind of effort because you have the best guys in the world out he's here. He's into the 90s, Todd, a 91.33. He's over gonna he's gonna overtake Kieran Riley and puts him back in the podium. He sits on the bubble spot. How about that run right there by Jake Wallwork? So now your top three runs all in the 90s. It's a 96.33, a 94.66, and now a 91.33. So it's heating up here in round two as we get set to bring back in Ryan Williams. I wonder if we'll see that double flip 360 on the last jump again. But starting off with that massive double flip, landing a little bit low. Front flip, no hander, getting set up. Will he pull it? Oh, just back tire heavy a little on that one. It ends up looping out right there. So close for Ryan. That's unfortunate. I know he's going to be upset about that one. Well, he's still got best trick coming up. He's already found himself on the podium and best trick on the scooter side of things. And again, uh, just always a great attitude and a smile on his face. A double flip on the first set. Setting up with the front flip, no-hander. That's his setup trick, Jimmy. And then that double back flip, 360. Just overcooking it just a little bit. I well, believe he was your 2000 and 2000, 2016 and 2017 BMX Best Trick winner here at the Nitro World Games. And uh, we still have that one coming up a little bit later on, but he's going to stick with that first run score here in BMX Triple Hit presented by Brisbane, Queensland. Josh Matthews looking to bump up from that first round score there. Had a little slip up there, finds himself down there at the bottom of the pack with a 25 flat for now here. Starting off with a double flip again. Will he get that 1080? Yep. Oh, there he you pulls go. it. Pulls it, puts it down easy here. In the number two. Roll. Wow. It's, uh, he's, that looked effortless. It was like he wasn't even trying. I thought he was going to do a 720. He was spinning that slow, but he brings it around, manages to make it to the last <laughs> jump with the cash roll. He's, Are you kidding me? There's so much pressure, Jimmy, dropping in, knowing that you've only got one more shot and you've got to put a score down on the board. Well, say goodbye to that score at 25 from the first round. Look at this. And I'll just land this now. Oh, I was pulling it around. Seems a, a normal thing to be everyone double flipping that first set. Into that 1080 there. With a cash roll to finish. Pushing over that jump. That's a good thing about that trick, Jimmy is you carry a lot of forward momentum. So after landing that little bit lower, you can push through with that cash roll. Yeah, it was say like maybe a little bit high on the knuckle on that one, but again, that 25 is going to go in. 89.83, that gets him out of the bottom of the pack and puts him in the number four spot. He's not going to jump up into podium contention there. However, jumping from the bottom to number four, that is a big, big run there when it was needed by Josh Matthews. Again, look at that. Amazing overhead aerial shot right there looking through the opening of the roof here at the Suncorp Stadium. David Godziak, he's got a 73.66. You saw that he wanted more in that first round. What's he got here in round number two, Todd? David starting off with a cork 1080 into a triple tail whip mid set, into a cash roll. See Jimmy pushing wow. through. He just slingshotted that cash roll at the end and definitely a little more fired up at the end of that run than we saw in round number one. Well, wow. that was a wild 1080. But pulling that on the first set is is difficult, super difficult. Cork 1080 there, landed perfect into a triple tail whip. Little low, but then pushing through with that cash roll. Triple tail whip, just making it over with that cash roll. Seems like everyone's putting it together, Jimmy. I, you know, it's just that energy when things start happening and everybody starts feeding up, feeding off of one another. See this, and that vibe, you can feel it in the air. 
Yeah, doing a 1080 on that first set is is uh, is very risky. Just put down the cash roll, goes right the bike into the airbag. You didn't like that camera angle. Take another look at it right here, and that reaction by David Godziak says it all right there. This is going to be interesting. And a 90.66 for him. That's going to get him into the 90s, but that is not going to be enough to overtake Jake Walwick. So that'll put him in fourth. So he will be on the outside looking in, but again, it bumps up into that number four position as of right now. So your top four scores here creeping all the way down into the 90s, and it is far from over. Still lots of riders left to go here. You've got Chris James high up the top of the rolling currently sitting down there with a 61.33 in that number 12 spot time. James starting it up with a massive 360 backflip. Front flip, no hander, getting set off the last. Double backflip, no hander, unfortunately, not quite having enough speed. Yeah, just kind of opened up in that one. That slowed down the rotation right there, and he's going to have to use that as a throw away, throw away run. So much speed, so much height. Chris goes so high. That front flip, no hander into a double flip, no hander, and unfortunately just turning out of it. But walking out of a double flip in my books is always a good thing. So here we go, Brandon Lupos due up next. That first run didn't pan out. He finds himself at the bottom of the pack here with that 34.33. Again, the scores in the 90s extend all the way down to that number four position. Second final attempt right here for Brandon Lupos out of Sydney. Start with that flip triple whip again. Landing perfect. Into a 1080. Cash roll no hand up. Oh. That was... And again, look at that reaction by Brandon. So oh the trend God. continues here in this oh second round of runs, Todd. Man, this is, this is going to be a tough one to judge. Yeah, the judging booth right now is a hot seat. That's a tough spot to be in. They're earning their keep here today. I'm glad I don't have that job. <laughs> it's a lot safer being here in the booth, Todd. Oh, way safer. That 1080 there, just pulling it around. Flip triple whip, so perfect. 1080, and then getting set up perfectly for that last shot. Yeah, Cash roll, no hander. The first time we've seen that one. I believe it was the 10 that did him in that first run. Had to dab a foot, but pulls it off clean here and then takes the hands off in the cash roll in run number two. The question is, what's it going to be on the score? Remember, the 90s creep down into that number four position. He's sitting in 14th pre-run as we await the score. Man, the second round is just going off the rails as of right now. But, you know, it's, that's kind of the trend. I mean, that's, that's just what happens every time we host one of these Nitro World Games events. So Daniel Sandoval sitting in that top spot, followed by Logan Martin as of right now. So Brandon Lupos is going to check in with the 92.66. That'll put him in podium contention. He's in the number three spot, so he bumps Jake Walwick down to fourth. So now it's Sandoval, Martin, Lupos, your one, two, three. So now the 90s creep all the way down to fifth place, and it is still far from over as we get set to bring in five-time X Games medalist Pat Casey. He owns a gold, three silver, and one bronze in those events. Pat starting off with that 360 Superman seat grab again. 360 basket, double tail whip this, this time into a cash roll oh, tail whip. Oh, and he hangs on it away. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Fuck Everyone is putting it together right now. The trend continues here. Talk us through this run, Todd. That 360 Superman seat grab Indy. Massive extension into that 360 bar spin, double tail whip mid set. Into that cash roll tail whip. That's the first time we've seen that today as well. Everyone is bringing out the bangers. Cash roll tail whip and stomping it, just holding on. <laughs> with him, he, you could see the reaction as well. 
Looking like he got a little wobbly run away from that one. I don't know. Either way, he rode that thing into the airbag. That is a make right there. So he was in ninth place pre-run. He was down there in the low 80s. He had an 81.33. So again, the judges are in the hot seat over. I don't even know where the judges are sitting right now, but I can feel the heat coming out of that booth right now, Todd. Yeah, it's definitely taking a little bit longer to get those scores coming through. And he's into the 90s, a 92.16, a 92.16. That's how crazy this competition is right now. That's not even good enough to get you on the podium. So now the 90s are all the way down into that number six, six spot right there. But again, that was a huge second run right there for Pat Casey. As we get set to bring in Kieran Riley, he was in the top three. He was sitting in that bubble spot for a while, and he now finds himself all the way down in that number eight spot with an 88.83. Starting off with a three, 360 double tail whip to double bar spin. Unfortunately, just missing his bars on that second one there. Yeah, that right hand just slipped right off, and he took a heck of a knock on that one as he took it straight to the chest on the flat right there. But he bounces up quickly from that one and uh, up and walking away under his own power there. So Daniel Sandoval at the end of round one just blew it up with that 96.33. Logan Martin had a monster first run with a 94.66. Then you got Brandon Lupos here in round two puts himself in podium contention. And again, the 90s just keep creeping as we welcome back in Jay Tui. Tui starting with that front flip, by flip, double flip mid set, switching his feet there into a quad whip. I don't know if you saw Jimmy, but but uh, Tui actually switches his feet around for his tail whip, so he's got to land that double flip, quickly change and rotate his feet around, and then kick that quad whip. So looking a little bit more happier at the end of that run, but again, look at how far away the bike gets from him on that first hit, and then tucks into the double. And then finishing off with that quad whip. That was a solid run there from Tui. Front flip, bike flip. That one looked like he had a little bit more control than the first one. Spinning that double flip and then into that quad whip. Yeah, that first one, he was so stretched out, just trying to reach out. I, didn't, I don't even know how he managed to get his hands on the grips and pull that one back under. But a lot more manageable here. And taking a look over the last hit right there, he got back wheel dabbed a little bit on that knuckle. He got a little wobbly on the landing, but he hangs on and rides into the airbag on that one. He had a 73 flat there in run number one that had him in that number 10 spot. Yeah, ch changing your feet around and riding that way is, is hard in itself. It, it feels super uncomfortable, but Tui's always cha changing his feet around mid runs and so you see your current leader there, that's Daniel Sandoval looking at the video wall there, the end of the stadium trying to see what happens there in the replays and what happens with the score. It's Sandoval, Martin, and Lupos, you're one at 2-3 as we await the score for Mr. Tui here. Again, it was a 73 flat pre-run. He finds himself in that number 10 spot as of right now. We have three riders left to go in this competition. And it's gonna be a 90 for Jay as well. And again, the, just, 90s, all the way down to seventh place. Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's crazy uh, to be doing these runs and not not making podium. So what that means now, with three riders left to go, two of them in the top three, there's only one man on the outside looking in that can shake up our standings. You've got Logan Martin coming your way next. He was your leader, and then at the end of round one, Daniel Sandoval best him. Can he trade back the favor here on this second and final attempt? Starting out with that front flip, bike flip as well into a 720 triple bar oh, spin. Oh my gosh. Into a barrel roll whip. I, I think he just got a little bit squirrely there with the bars, but I know he's stoked to be rolling away because missing your bars on a 720 like that, it doesn't normally end quite well, but... Logan, unfortunately, not quite getting exactly what he wants. But out here, you have to be throwing down your, your hardest and biggest tricks because it is tough out here. 720 double bar. Oh, oh, he never spun that third bar spin. That was a heck of a save oh. right there. We didn't catch that at real time speed, but wow. Uh, that's unfortunate. I mean, that's just pure determination right there. A perfect front flip, by flip. Makes it look way too easy. Seven bar bar, and then just getting caught up on that third bar spin. Here we 
see it again, Jimmy. That double bar spin, and I think it's just, it just did well, and, and then he just cranked it back. But he's still got it. He's still in second place. Can't be mad with that. So he'll stick with that first run score of 94.66. So he'll stick with that. So again, Sandoval, Martin, and Lupos, your one, two, three. We have two riders left to go. Justin Dowell coming up next. He is on the outside looking in. And then Daniel Sandoval, your current leader, is going to take us out of this competition here. The question is, is Justin Dowell going to be able to upset the standings? It comes down to this last run here for Justin Dowell. The flip triple bar spin again. 360 bar spin, tail whip bar spin. 360 twigs. Oh, the hangs on. I thought he's going to ride right off the side of the the resi right there, but he hangs on. He is stoked to put that run down. 84 flat pre-run. Pre runs it has him in that number 10 spot. Flip, triple bar spin. So much time. 360 bar spin, tail whip to bar spin. Into that 360 twig, which is a bar spin at the same time as the tail whip. That trick does not make any sense to me. And you can't, you don't appreciate the landing at that point from that camera angle, because he was going riders left. It looked like he was gonna ride up the side of that thing, but he hangs on there. So we'll see what happens here. He had that 84 flat. What do you think, Todd? Block that plank. Where do you think this is gonna slide him in right here? I unfortunately don't- Build a little drama. Yeah, I, I don't, unfortunately don't think this is gonna bump Sandville or uh, unfortunately make it onto the podium. Jimmy, the, the, what these guys are throwing down, is just, it's absolutely incredible. You know, th these tricks are, are really kind of up until five years ago, you know, everyone's kind of got their own specific trick, but now everyone can do absolutely everything and having three jumps, you gotta bring out your biggest tricks. Well, the score taking a while to come in here, so the judges obviously having a discussion about that one with one rider left to go. If you're just joining us here, it's BMX Triple Hit presented by Brisbane, Queensland. Daniel Sandoval, our current leader, waiting up on top of that rolling to take his final run. So Justin's gonna crack into the 90s, wow. and he will jump onto that podium. He overtakes Brandon Lupos, so it's Daniel Sandoval, Logan Martin, and Justin Dowell, your one, two, three. Why? Because with one rider left to go, he's sitting in that number one spot. So he is going to get a victory lap out here today. But how about that run there by Justin Dowell there to overtake Brandon Lupos and edge him out to get on the podium here? Yeah, this is going to be interesting to see if Daniel sends it or just uh, takes a nice, cruisy run. He's waving the hand there. Knows he's taking home that first place. 360 down whip into a 360 and finishing off. Oh, unfortunately just missing coming back around there, but he's taken, taken home the win, Jimmy. Again, last guy in the run order. We saw that monster run in round one by Logan, Logan Martin, that 94.66 and then Daniel going last comes up and throws that big score down. It's enough to get the win out here. Let's send it down to Caroline Buchanan. We are down here with the winner. Those scores were so tight all the way to the line. What does it feel like? How do you put this moment into words? You've never won here before. Oh, it's amazing. You know, a lot of hard work and uh, just happy. And what about, what was the key to executing? This isn't a skate park. There's three jumps, three opportunities to score. What did it take to execute that run? For me, it was just stay consistent, stay in my line, and um, do as hard tricks as I possibly can. Everyone, give it up for Daniel. He is your 2022 Nitro World Games Triple Champion. Yeah, and as we said, you know, at the top of this first round, I mean, he's just that kind of like, he's just got a deep arsenal of tricks. He's all about the combo moves, and he's the kind of guy that would really to practice that consistency, it's the smoothness, it's, it's the style, it never looks jerky or mechanical and whatnot. And he really, I mean, to talk about the scope of this event, I mean, you've got to put together three big bangers in a row. And as you've said several times out here, I mean, they've all got to be big and they've got to be perfect. Yeah, those tricks out there were, without a doubt, the biggest tricks you'll see in BMX. Daniel is absolutely stoked. He puts in so much hard work and uh, he, he really deserves this one, Jimmy. So we haven't contested BMX triple hit 
here at the Nitro World Games since 2017. And now Daniel Sandoval etches his name into the Nitro World Games history books by walking out of here with the win. Logan Martin in second and Justin Dowell taking home third. But let's take a look back at some of the highlights as to how we got to our podium here inside Suncorp Stadium. Yeah, Jimmy, that, that was a, a wild contest. Again, I'll say it, I'm glad I'm not a judge. But Logan with that 720 double bar spin, fortunately not quite getting the three on the second run. But that opposite quad whip, I think he might only be the only guy in the world doing that one. Daniel with that 360 double downside tail whip, 360 bar spin, down whip bar spin to 360. Whip. I, I can't even keep up with this, and I, and I ride, Jimmy. <laughs> the reaction just says it all right there. By the way, we can't forget we got the LEGO Innovation Award. The judges have an extra duty to do out here. They've got to determine one trick or one run, if you will, uh, that goes out to someone that's really pushing the levels of progression out here. And we'll find out who's getting that LEGO Innovation Award once we do uh, our podium presentation. And uh, my eyes spy right there. Some dudes on some dirt bikes right now. We've got uh, freestyle motocross coming up here in just a little bit we got best trick for those guys as well we still got bmx best trick coming up as well i get to call that with you again here later on yeah you inspired up about that one i i can't wait for that one you know riding riding nitro circus all the time and having this this massive jump you know we're seeing things that are just absolutely mind-blowing and, and i can't wait for best trick i definitely know there's a few guys out there with some some uh big gems to come out We've got plenty more surprises still to come out here tonight. Right now, we check in with Micah Kranz with our podium presentation. Brisbane, Australia, can I get some noise for that amazing triples contest? Wasn't that great? Unreal, as you can see, our freestyle motocrossers are getting themselves situated and practicing. But we gotta do this award ceremony. In third place, from the United States, can I get some noise for Justin Dowell? In second place, your Olympic gold medalist. Make some noise for Logan Martin! And our winner from the United States of America, make some noise for Daniel Sandoval! Make some noise for our podium, please. And our Lego City Innovation Award for an opposite quadruple tail whip. Make some noise for Logan Martin. Winning our Lego City Innovation Award. Make some noise for BMX Triples. Well, taking one more look here at Logan Martin in that Lego Innovation Award. Touch, talk through what exactly Explain to the fans watching at home why the judges gave him that. Well, doing a quadruple tail whip is, is something on its on its own, but doing it opposite is is absolutely incredible. He's the only one. I, I'm pretty certain he's the only one doing that opposite quadruple whip. So that doesn't surprise me at all for him to take it home. <laughs> Well, that is a wrap here for BMX Triple Hit presented by Brisbane, Queensland. But uh, like I said, Todd, we've got BMX Best Trick to call together a little bit later on. Still plenty more action to come. When we come back, we've got freestyle motocross. You see the boys getting warmed up. It is going to be a party under the lights here in the Suncorp Stadium. It's plenty more Nitro World Games 2022 still to come when we come back to Brisbane, Queensland. Freestyle motocross and Nitro World Games is my favorite event to watch. Not only do the best riders in the world have to throw down tricks that have never been seen before, and wild the judges, they have to wild the judges on each individual jump. Every jump is scored, so the riders know as they're going through exactly what they need to do to win this event. And if they're not winning, they know they're gonna have to reach deep in that bag and throw something even bigger. Freestyle motocross final start. Top of the ramp, there we go, front flip. Not only do these riders have to do the craziest tricks on the biggest ramps, but they have to do certain tricks in a certain order. 
These guys know that they need every trick in the book, and they need it bigger and crazier than anyone else in the world. For freestyle motocross, they have to do the craziest tricks on each discipline. They have to be the most well-rounded rider on earth. There's a lot of guys that got the potential to win this one, and I'm still hoping Josh Yan finally pulls off that Nitro World Games win. Back everyone to the Sun Corp Stadium, nicknamed the Cauldron here in downtown Brisbane, in the state of Queensland. After a three-year hiatus, the Nitro World Games finds a new home here on Australian soil. As the sun sets, we fire up the lights, and the party vibe keeps rolling here as we get set to kick off our first freestyle motocross event of the night. It is the FMX final. Jimmy Coleman here in the booth. I am now joined by Jackson Strong in this event being brought to you by Lego City. Not only do we have our podium, we have our Lego City Innovation Awards to hand out here tonight. But before we get to FMX final, let's check in with Caroline Buchanan and Travis Pastrana. 
I'm Caroline Buchanan. We're down here, the nunner himself, Travis Pastrana. We're about to kick off FMX. The hype that has just come from the triples is insane. We're about to roll into this next category. Can you talk us through the three ramp setups? Yeah, I mean, first off, who enjoyed BMX Triple Hit? Those guys absolutely sent it. I just absolutely blew my mind. But now we have FMX, and this is cool because we have three completely new ramps. The smallest ramp, that's the one we've used all the time. Now we've got a Levi ramp that the guys have an option to do even bigger uh, to a little bit of a softer landing. So if they want to send it, that's the one to go to. But the Moon Booter, what we only use for FMX Best Trick, is used in freestyle. And then they're adding more height to the Moon Booter for FMX Best Trick tonight. It is going to be absolutely insane. I cannot wait to see what these guys throw down. Two runs, crowd get behind these riders. FMX is about to kick off. Well, there you go. What a beautiful sight as the sun sets there behind the skyline of Brisbane here in Queensland. Well, Jackson, we're used to seeing you out there competing in these events. However, it is an honor to have you here calling the action with me in the booth here today. We have five riders in the field. What are some of the things the judges are going to be looking for as we get into this event? It's going to be a crazy event tonight, Jimmy. I think we're going to we're definitely going to see some innovation, especially in Best Trick later on. So definitely very excited. I think that uh, I think I'd rather be down there than up here watching everyone, though, because the tension's pretty high and I get nervous. So yeah, so in this one, we have five, five riders in the field, and basically out of those two runs, it's the best run that counts, and the judges are working off a 100-point scale, but there's some criteria that they're working through. There's certain things that these riders are gonna have to do. You're gonna get seven hits out here in your runs, but they're looking for certain criteria. You have to do certain types of jumps in your run. They're looking for style execution, and uh, and I guess who, who brings the biggest game? It's all about who's going to throw down the hardest and ride away wheels down. Traditionally, in, in our best trick, we normally see the, the biggest stuff happening in the first run, and then the second, if they, you know, that, that's the, um, the backup. But normally, it's... Are we in? Oh, this is so Benny this Richards, is my yeah, pro yeah. This is your boy right here. This is this is my protege. This is it. This is him. Him and Tom Richards, his brother, absolutely ripped. So we saw a massive quarto flip, followed up by a massive ruler flip on the Levi ramp. Next gen. What have we got? This is the whip. Upright, double grab in. He makes that look so smooth. I don't know how he does that with so much style. I definitely didn't teach him that. Just the great extension right there. So again, you're gonna need a right side up trick. You're gonna have to hit the next gen ramp. You're gonna have to do a whip combo. There's two different flip combos. Oh, huge. Heart attack indie flip, perfect style. That trick's hard, especially off uh, off that ramp extra. If you miss that grab, you, uh, you're uh, you having an early night, put it that way. They're also looking for a flip innovation uh, as well as an There's innovation. It's a win, huge. He's got some style. He's definitely got style. But he's, got, he's, de he's up there with the most style in this whole, whole contest. So just easy to watch. Yeah, you want to have those big tricks, but you want to have the style as well. So again, it's going to be seven hits for each one of these riders. No and hand, that holding that thing off for some time there. What have we got? We're coming around to the moon booter. This ramp, this is something else. I know Benny's been working a lot on double flips here the last couple of years. So let's see if he can pull it out. Just see him right there playing to the crowd, taking the hand off the bars and waving everyone, trying to pump it up right there. Check it that. Look at the height on this thing. Smooth as silk. Yeah, Benny. How about that? We're starting off a freestyle pump, and at the end of the first run, he just throws a double backflip like it was nothing. Unreal. Benny's really good at not cracking under pressure. He, can, he just keeps it cool, cool, calm, and just collects. And that's what he did here tonight. So again, we talked about the criteria of the different jumps. You don't have to do them in any particular order. You just have to go through that criteria that we talked about. And if you don't do that, you try to double up on one of these things, the judges are going to deduct you. How's this KD flip? Huge. To do that trick the right way up that big is something else. Benny just, he's, again, he's got the style. He's got it. Look at that. Perfect. He's easy to watch. I sit there and watch him ride all day. I do sit there and watch him ride all day, but watch this. Bang, spots a landing, tucks her in, sits there. Sits there, fat, dumb and happy, doesn't even do anything and just coasts it in. Uh, that was just calm, cool and collected right there. Just another day at the office on the double backflip right Absolutely. there. Absolutely. What are we going to get? What are we going to get? Put us up there. They're working Early on run. This is going to set a bar here. 90.66. How good. We're in the 90s to start it off right there. Good so. boy. Benny had his debut at X Games this year and he did really well. He put together a solid run, double flip the super kicker there. And, uh, you know, having the moon booter, the, the new ramp, it just makes it so, it's open so many more doors to, uh, to freestyle. It's always 
was rough too, being the first one to start off a comp right there. You just kind of wonder what the judges are going to be looking for and how they're going to deduct or reward for certain things. And to come out here in the opening run and put down a 90.66, that was huge right there. Taking a look at our next competitor right here, another Australian in the mix. He's a Nitro World Games rookie. We're getting set to unleash Dylan McDonald on the course here. Pretty excited to watch Dill ride. Traditionally, he's more of like a free rider guy. You see him out jumping, you know, the bigger dirt hits, and and he's definitely got talent on a, on a motorcycle. He can can ride really good, and I, I'm very excited for this one, Jimmy. He doesn't have some of the big double flip tricks and stuff, so it's going to be interesting to see how he scores. He's got the talent though; it's all there. You can see right there that he's got the trick selection uh, taped to the bar pad right there as he rides around, giving the fans here inside the Suncorp Stadium a wave right there. So again, seven jumps in each one of these runs. They're gonna get two runs each. We're working on that 100 point scale. It's best run that counts. You kinda, you know, you gotta move around a little bit here because we got this uh, layout set up in between all the uh, different features here inside the stadium here. So here we see Dill starting on the, starting on the next gen. This is something new. That's an interesting strategy right there. Want to get that next gen one out, out of the way. Out of the way, maybe he's, he's nervous for the next gen or he's wanting to save his energy for the, to uh, put for something later in the run. So let's see. Yeah, that thing, I mean, it just sent you. I mean, that's what you look at that thing, and they've added more to it here at this event as well to give it an extra pop on that lip right there. So waiting to get the green light here for Dylan McDonald for his first out of two. Again, if you're just joining us, Benny Rich set the bar with a 90.66 with a very technical, clean, and well-executed first round. Here comes Dylan McDonald. Smooth, smooth. He's got a, Dill's on a, Dill's riding a 450, so Benny was on the 252 stroke. A lot less power than Dill, so on the bigger bikes, they are probably a little bit easier to get over some of the jumps, but it's also easy to go a lot longer. Whip, there he goes. So he's he's ticked that box, that was nice. The right side, of very, right side up variation, as well as the whip, so two down, five to go here for his first attempt. Coming around into the next gen again. KD, look through, huge textbook. Don't think it's quite gonna sit up there near Benny's run, definitely not, but he's uh, he's doing what he can out there. Just putting the visor into the front fender on that last hit right there. No hand flip, maybe a little deep there on the uh, on the 75. Come around, he's moving his, uh, moving his steering stabilizer up there, so we're probably gonna see a no hand flip here, or his hands are gonna come off the bars. He's tightening his steering up. What do we got there, a whip flip? I don't know what that was. It looked uh, de definitely something interesting. It's going to be a tough one for the judges there. I think he was trying to tuck into the bars on that one right there. Again, you do get two flip combos. It can only be one trick within the middle of the flip, and they both have to be different. Double grab's definitely going to let Dill down a bit here, not being on the moon booter. And uh, the flip levers are up. These these help help the uh, rider when they do a backflip to lever onto the bike. Some guys use them, some guys don't. So let's see what Dill's got with them. What well, adventure you guess that this is gonna go into the flip innovation category for him Any right flip. there. flip, that was good. A little deep, a little deep. He's, uh, he's not gonna be up there with Benny, but definitely a good run. He put down a good one. Yeah, again, as we go through this, there's no time clock on the runs. You just get those seven hits and you have to execute the different categories like we talked about. So that's why you don't see these guys getting after it in between each one of the jumps. And just like you land one, go after it, adjust what you need to, and then go into it. As long as you get those seven different hits that we talked about, that's what the judges are looking for. So he's going to clock in with an 81.33. I think he should get an extra 10 points for that haircut, though. That's pretty special. <laughs> What would you call that right there? That's not quite mullet. That's not quite. It's looks like up front, but it's not quite party in the back just yet. Looks like something out of an 80s adult film. That's very Patrick Swayze <laughs> right there. That, that, that's Swayze, you, Swayze. You that's, that's what I was looking in for. Roadhouse. <laughs> Roadhouse, that is literally my favorite movie. Oh, man. He's rocking the Dalton out here, Jackson. Dalton. Here we go, running through. It's uh, Definitely not up there with Benny's run, but again, this is Dill's rookie year, so we can uh, we're going to see more more out of him in the future, and he's uh, he's showing he's showing he's got what it takes. Yeah, coming out here in your first ever Nitro World Games and not cracking under the pressure there. Look at that! You see the Pfizer going to the fender on the way back. Huge indie flip there. 
That's the good thing about this next gen ramp. It just gives you that much more time to hold the tricks longer in the air. We've got to thank uh, Travis for that one and Levi Sherwood. Okay, two down, three to go in the lineup here. This is round one out of two. Another Nitro World Games rookie. He comes out of the Gold Coast. This is Brad Bird, show writer for Showtime FMX. As uh, He also has done some appearances on the Nitro Circus live tour uh, down here in Australia and also doing some shows for the Airtime FMX team. He's maybe a rookie to Nitro World Games, but uh, no rookie to the world of freestyle motocross. Brad's actually, uh, Brad's a pretty old hand at this. I remember when I first started, Brad was there with me and we were doing a lot of riding together. And he actually owns Airtime FMX and they go to a lot of the shows uh, around Australia. So, so there's a lot of people out here that have seen Brad perform before and he's uh, definitely got some fans in the crowd. So I'm very excited. I heard in the change, I heard a little rumor that he might be sending something pretty big that he hasn't really done at all or much before. So my eyes are going to be pretty peeled on this one, Jimmy. So they've been keeping it pretty close to the vest, but you got the inside scoop right there. So we might see something uh, outside of the norm right there for Mr. Birch. You see the boys hanging out down there in the athlete staging area. You got Adam Jones and Josh Sheehan lingering in the background right there. So looks like we're about to take a quick break right now. When we come back, We'll have our final three in the lineup here in round number one. It's freestyle motocross final here at the Nitro World Games. Beautiful downtown Brisbane, Brisbane, Queensland. Welcome back, everyone. Downtown Brisbane here in Queensland inside the Suncorp Stadium. It is the 2022 Nitro World Games. So we get set to continue freestyle motocross final as the sun sets here on the skyline and we fire up the lights to keep the party going out here. Jimmy Coleman here in the booth alongside Jackson Strong, Benny Richards got this party started. He sits at the top spot right now with a 90.66. We still have three riders to go in the lineup to wrap up this first round of runs, and then we go into round number two. But coming your way right now, it is Brad Birch set to try and impress the judges here. 34 years old out of Gold Coast. What's he got on tap for us here, Jackson? This one's gonna be exciting. We're gonna see something big out of Birch. He's gonna start it off with holy grab to double grab. Unreal, nice and clean. Brad's a really textbook rider. He seems to 
make everything just look smooth and easy. So coming next gen, flip levers are up. We're going to see some sort of a flip combo. I'm going to put my money on a KOD flip. Heel clicker, I was wrong. So there you go. He's got the right side up category box ticked right there and one of the two flip combos right there. So two hits down, five hits to go here I, and run I, one hang, for Brad. Hang on a minute here. I just saw a foot hook and he's hitting the moon booter. Could mean one of two things. Cliffhanger flip. Not exactly what I was expecting, Jimmy, but I think we're going to see something pretty special later in this run. That was the little bit of the teaser that you were alluding to before we went to break on that one. He's definitely teasing us right here. Okay, again, they do get two runs out here, so maybe eyeing that one up for run number two. Massive indie flip, nice and smooth. So there, again, Brad makes everything look really easy. So there's your two flip combos in the books right there for this first run. Did that put go on it? No, it didn't. We're running into 75. Nah, is that, does that classify as a whip? I if he whips it by? Yeah, that's, that goes into that whip category right there. You got the right side up one is in the books, then the whip category there. He's got the two flip combos right there. We'll see what he caps this off with here. Oh, nasty. That thing was huge. Again, that next gen just gives everyone that little bit extra time to hold them longer than what they possibly could on the, uh, on the 75. Can I see that? I, I'm looking at that foot go under. You thinking it's going to happen are in you, this run? Are you thinking what I'm thinking, Jimmy? I think so. I thought maybe that one was going to get saved for best Come trick, on, but here we go. Yes! Slow, 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 slow. Ah, oh, no! Oh. And he's okay. That thing, I could tell that thing went a little slow off the lip. Just wasn't rotating quite quick enough. Hats off to Birchie. I know he hasn't practiced that. He, he came in uh, a little last minute into this thing and came in absolutely swinging. To, to not be practicing double flips every single day before the event and come out and try to do that, that's a real testament to the size of his underwear. <laughs> to do that at the end of the run, that could have been a lot worse right there. He got out of that one pretty unscathed right there and able to get up and ride away under his own power after that one. That, that's where this has evolved at these days. I mean, you can see guys crash a double backflip and still get up and take their second runs. I mean, that was insane right there. And hats off to Brad Birch. We're so lucky with the progression that Nitro brings with the, with the ramps at this event. Gives you the opportunity to, uh, to to get back up, not like uh, the 75 landing on the side. If you go down on that, you're not getting back up. You're staying there for a while. Yeah, no, that was kind of the name of the game when we started this back in 2016 with the progression was to make these resi bags and these landings to allow that creativity and progression to happen. I don't know if that one's going to... Well, in the whip category, it's going to be interesting to see where the where the judges got put a little that sideways one. right there. We'll see if they dig him on that one. Oh, that was nice. Again, that next gen just makes it makes it easy for the guys to um, to be able to send it a little further. This one, oh, slow, 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 and boom. Oh, <laughs> that one's going to make the highlight reel. Hey, that could have been a lot worse, though. I mean, watch what this he got out of the and the bike missed him, didn't tag him at all. Ready, he's gone under, and just happy day. He didn't want to let go. He was, he was, he was, uh, he, he wasn't throwing it away that easy. Just kind of tucked the head under the roll of that one, and then instantly gets up from that one. If he got his feet back on, that would have been something special. <laughs> So again, to get up and ride away after that one. So a 75.66 for him. That's going to leave him in that number three spot for right now. So Benny Richards, your boy, started it off with a big first run. It's got him in that top spot with that 90.66. And then Dylan McDonald sitting in second. But we still got two guys left to go here in this round. And then we go back up to the top of the order. Well, this gentleman right here, he is a veteran when it comes to freestyle motocross. He's the elder statesman in the crew at 38 years old out of Reno, Nevada. And this guy's got such a deep arsenal of right side up tricks and style for miles. It's Adam Jones. Adam's been around since the beginning of time. When it comes to freestyle, he's been there and done that, been every show. He's brought lots of innovation over the years. And he's, uh, he's someone who myself and a lot of other guys grew up watching it and sparked inspiration through everyone. So they seem still out there in the field and bringing the heat, bringing a definite podium and potentially even higher than that at the top, sitting on the top of the box. It's pretty, something pretty special. 
So you see him giving the ride by there, getting some high fives from the fans there. He is your Nitro World Games 2018 bronze medalist in the best trick category. We didn't contest freestyle after 2017, so it's been a while since we've done an actual freestyle comp. But he is under power and starting off run number oh. one with great extension. That hit my back just looking at it, Jimmy. I don't know how he bends himself in that way. Uh, he, uh, that's just that what I was talking about, man. That's the kind of extension that he does. And again, with these, with these right side up tricks, he is the master. Into the hill quick. Got smooth. So I don't know what I was talking to one of the judges, Chuck or others, and he was saying you got to do one combo on those flips. So it'll it'll be interesting to see how that gets scored. Maybe that falls in the innovation category. So Adam adjusting the flip levers there, coming around to hit number three here. We're rolling into the next gen, are we now? He stopped, reset. Adam's smart. He he knows that he can take his time in this. Oh. Does it get any? Does it get any bigger extension than that? Do you think that was unreal? I mean, the pop, the boost, the hang time that you've got off of that ramp, and what it allows these guys to do in that hang time is just absolutely impressive. As is that extension out of Mr. Jones. That that was definitely special there. We're going to come around. We're coming back into the next gen 75. Double knack, that was textbook. I wonder if that one's gonna be categorized as the whip jump. I was gonna say, kind of kicked out, kind of went flatliner a little bit on that one. So uh, I would say that one's gonna be the one that ticks that whip category box there. Oh, yeah, it's that. I just, yeah, it's insane how he gets- At 38 years old, he can still bend down and get his feet through the bars. I mean, a lot easier than what I can. That hurts my lower lumbar just <laughs> yeah. watching that right there. And he, again, with that, dead body flip right there. I mean, he's perfectly flattened out and over the bars. And that one's sketchy because if you it, get hung up going over or coming back over the bars, that'll ruin your day real quick. Yeah, there's only one way to go if you're sitting out the front of that. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be interesting to see where he sits in the... Uh, run two, we're coming back. You see him, he's kind of downplaying the run a little bit right there, Jackson. He's I like, don't think he should be downplaying. It was definitely, definitely huge, but we did not... We didn't... Uh, we saw a, a bit on the next gen ramp. We didn't see a double flip, but there was well, definitely no everything replays. else was uh, was really good. So it's gonna it, again, it's a really tough one for the judges tonight, isn't it? You need a clicker. That's at two combos in one trick. So that's got to that's got to do a little more for the scoring there. Adam's well versed on the moon booter ramp in the Levi because he rides Nitro tours all year round. He's one of the he's, he's a veteran of Nitro. He's there's not many shows he hasn't missed and he would have to have one of the, the higher show numbers than anyone else out there. I mean look at this. Not only is he flattened out, but he arches the back as well and then still gets the feet back over the bars and does that at the end of the run there. I got a little left in the tank. So what is it going to be? We've got scores of 90.66, an 81.33, and a 75.66. <laughs> judges talking it over there in the booth talk. again. <laughs> Two runs, best run counts. Judges working off a 100-point scale. 91. Jonesy going to take the top spot right there. Wow. So it's Adam Jones, Benny Richards, and Dylan McDonald. You're one, two, three as of right now, but hold on, everybody. We've got another freestyle veteran coming up right now. It is Josh Sheehan. I'm excited to see this run. I've literally got my house sitting on Josh Sheehan here, so you better do well, Josh. Well, at least starting off with it. Holy crap, that's definitely a very technical trick. It's a, it's a lot more technical than floating back to your grabs because the chance of uh, chance of missing your bars or tagging your front brake, or it's why you don't see many people do it. Well, he's changing it up from what we've seen out of the other guys. He's not wasting oh, that line, and that thing was huge. He's not wasting any time in between each one of these hits, and after every jump, he's turning around and acknowledging the crowd. It's like he's going for that intensity score. It's like he's at an X Fighters right now. He's a showman. Moon better would. Oh, one hand seat grab to double grab. Josh is one of the only guys out there that you'll see double flipping and single flipping the moon booter. It's it's a de definitely hard to to have the the control to be able to do that on the moon booter. See, after every hit, he's just trying. Three sixty heel clicker, huge. I saw him do one of these in practice today. And he nearly ate it, so it's good to see him ride that one away and, and do it smooth. He's got that one in the books. We're going to see the foot hook. We're seeing the foot hook for a double flip. I'm going to go ahead and 
cool. We're going to get a double flip combo here. Oh, I like that playing with the Andretti. Oh! He's sending it. Why did Andretti wave to the side? You gave him credit for wave. If it's, not, if it's not enough to do a double flip, hey, let's just uh, look, so, look, look sideways and give everyone a wave. That's the show with him right there. I think he was pointing at the judges and saying, just make sure you're watching this, guys. He's pandering to the crowd and making sure that the judges have all eyes on him. And look at the oh. extension. Josh has been doing that trick for a long time, and it really shows there. Absolute textbook. So Sheeny's like, come on, where's right the wide. noise at out there? Look at him in between each one of these hits every single time. Just pandering to everyone here We're in the stadium. We're going into the main bit. We're seeing a double flip combo here again, for sure. What have we got, Joshy? <laughs> Huge. No, Andrew stood up when he let go. He knows exactly where he's in the air. He's got so much aerial awareness. Again, he's an old hand at this, and it definitely makes it look easy. It's just crazy to me to see that in the middle of a double back look, I'm getting the hands off and just like you said, standing up just full extension and just casually hanging that one out like it's nothing. And he just showed a little burn out there. That's the uh, Donny Brook bogan coming out in him. <laughs> that run was full in a centipede soft roll. It was really something special. It's like he's he, it's like he's at a show right now. He's just playing this off like a show. He's going for more. <laughs> I don't know. I think we should have blurred that one, Jimmy, but... That was the Bilko special right there, throwing the worm out there. I don't know, but this guy's having a blast right now. He, he should have some sort of, like, sport ambassador award right now. He is having the best time out here out of anybody little, we've seen in any of these comps here tonight. A little, uh, little more history on Josh. He was the first guy in 2015, and the only guy, I might I add, to do a triple backflip. And he's obviously left his glasses at home. Give it a hit. Yep, they're back. We're on. And uh, yeah, the only guy in the world to ever do a triple backflip. And hopefully, fingers crossed, there is rumors that that is going to change tonight. So we may see history written here tonight inside the Suncorp Stadium. Look at him just going off at the camera right there. He is hamming it up. See how long he held that and stood up? That makes the trick so much more difficult when you get separation between yourself and the motorcycle because it slows the rotation, makes it harder to get back on, but somehow Josh makes it look easy. Little point to the judges there. How's the energy on him? He's excited, isn't he? That is that, an understatement. That one there is something special. Josh is really well versed on these ramps as well. He spends a lot of time touring Nitro with live shows, so he's, he's right at home. I mean, just the overall intensity throughout that entire run right there. You saw everybody else just kind of cruising through after every hit, not him. And there was the bonus. That that's, got to be a, that's got to be a bonus. It's just why not? I mean, isn't that the whole point behind 95, all this? 95, yeah, Joshy. That's gonna, it's gonna be very, very hard for anyone to contend with that. So round one is in the books. We have three scores in the 90s, and it's Josh Sheehan in that top spot with a 95 flat, followed by Adam Jones with a 91. And then how about Benny Richards getting this party started with that 90.66? So that is your top three as of right now, but we still have one more round of runs still to come. It is the best run that counts out here tonight in this FMX final here. Nitro World Games 2022, but uh, how about those scores? Right? I'm pretty pumped for Benny, man, to come out first guy out of the gate, put that run down. I mean, expect that out of Adam and Josh, but Benny really impressed me here. I think that Benny can maybe slide that up one more notch if he does everything a little cleaner and bigger. All right, before we get to that second final round, let's check in one more time with Caroline Buchanan. We're down here with Chad Reed himself. He's with his family. You need no introduction, but very fitting timing. We're in the middle of FMX. Can you talk us through this setup and how hyped you are to be here? Yeah, it's crazy. I actually had surgery two weeks ago in Brisbane, and uh, so I'm actually here for not all the right reasons, but as it worked out, the event was delayed, and we were able to come from Melbourne up to here. And uh, anytime that there's dirt bikes and some form of action sports, the Reed family are all in to watch it and support it, you know, and uh, yeah, no, it's really cool. It's amazing to be here and get to see these boys do, do their thing. And we love having you here. Thank you so much, Chad Reed. Give it up, everybody. So there you go. Celebrity guest star in the house out here. Did not expect that one out here, but uh, Chad Reed, welcome to the party out here at the 2022 Nitro, Nitro World Games. We're happy to have you. So here we go. 
go. We're going into round two, but uh, we're being told by Sports and Comp that only two gentlemen are going to take their second run here in this second and final round. Everybody else is pretty happy with those runs, so uh, it's going to be Brad Birch. Uh, Sheeny's going to have the option uh, if he wants to take it. Right now, we're being told that only two guys want to go here in round number two, so uh, Brad Birch gets to start us off here in the second and final round. He finds himself in that number five spot with that 75.66. But again, going back to what happened in round number one, you got to give the man credit, trying to throw a double backflip at the end of his first run. Yeah, Brad, uh, he's definitely um, he's definitely wants this. You can see it in his eyes right there. He had a Barry Crocker on that first double flip. So hopefully, if I know Brad as well as I do, I know he's going to send it again. Did you see that kid in the stands behind him right there and that uh, leg cast right there? He wanted that double back as well. Here we go. He's under power. Holy run. grab, double grab. Run number two underway Textbook, here. Textbook, flip levers up, coming into the next gen ramp. Are we going to see a hill quicker flip, same as the first run? That's just what I was about to ask you. Do you think he keeps the same line and tries to do it in the end? Or do we change it up a little bit? There you go. You called it the heel clicker flip here in attempt number two, or hit number two, I should say. I think Brad's going to keep it the same. To change the run, you've, you've done it in your head over and over in the change rooms leading into the event. So to change it this late in the game is just too hard. I think he's going to try and stick it this time, and, and that's definitely going to push him up a little bit. Perfect cliffhanger. It's so hard to straight to do right side up tricks on that Levi ramp because it just kicks on the uh, moon booter, sorry, it just kicks you different. Yeah, you can see sometimes on those right side up tricks the way it's just, it, it's almost like you have to really put yourself in that mindset to just hang on longer than you would on a traditional ramp. And Brad's just resetting here. I think we're going for an easy flip it was last time. Huge, floats off. He's got lots of style. He's, uh, he, he makes everything look smooth. He's an easy one to watch. We're going in for the upright knack here. Perfect. The guys have to do one trick in their run that resembles a whip. The bike's got to move sideways off axis, and uh, and that's what Brad's done right there. My memory serves me correctly, Jimmy. We're going to see a KOD flip here coming up. That's the one, and then at the end, see so another. There oh, you go. He served that thing on a platter, and everyone's about to be on the edge of the seat. Is this going? For this, this is it. We're going to see the foot hook in. And Brad's got to pull this thing harder than he did last time. Pull it harder than he ever has before. There we go. Is We're he lining up. The double this time around, trying to best him. No. Ah, we didn't see it. He must have been feeling good running into that. Unfortunately, he uh, he didn't get the double. But it's going to slip him up a spot, I believe. So a 75.66 in run number one. He elects to not go for the double here in run number two. But I mean. He was so close on that last one. And to, to, to echo what I said earlier, I mean, to bounce off of one of those on a double and then get back up and be able to take a second run, uh, that's where we're at these days oh, in the world of freestyle one. motocross. Although he's up and, and smiling there, I guarantee that he's hurting. It could not have felt good what he did before, oh, so. We take a look back here at run at number two here for Mr. Birch. He's definitely hoping for something else there, I think, Jimmy. It was, uh, yeah, I don't know. He's gonna, it's going to be a tough one for him to swallow there. I think that's going to push him up a spot, though. Everything else he did was nice and smooth, and, and everything seemed to flow. So I would have liked to see a double flip. I know you would have. Yeah, but again, to finish out the whole oh. run and not have a crash at the end, that should improve the score right there. Good for him to get a run on the board. That KD flip was huge. So it is an improvement in 83 flat right there. So that is going to overtake Dylan McDonald right there. So that'll slide him into that number four spot. But again, good on him right there. That is Brad Birch finishing out in second place. And it comes down to Adam Jones here. because, As I said, we're being told that uh, only Brad and Adam uh, want to take their second runs. Everybody else pretty happy with how things played out in that opening round. But uh, the good news is, you're going to get another seven hits to eye up the style and wizardry of Adam Jones. And uh, I'm going to get you to walk this plank, Jackson. Uh, we got that LEGO Innovation Award. Who do you think would be a standout based off what we've seen thus far to get that LEGO Innovation Award in FMX tonight? The Innovation Award's going to be a tricky one tonight, Jimmy. I think one of the most special tricks we've seen this evening was 
Sheeny doing that double backflip no-hander and standing up and getting some separation between him and the bike. I know he's talking about it today, how he wants to stand up and get some real separation. And we're into Adam. Look at that. That might be something for innovation there. I think they call that the, uh, the dead body Paris Hilton. I don't know why they call it that. Number two, we're going to see a whip trick here. Into the heel click a flip again. That's those two combos there in one trick. So that's, that's got to mean something for the judging. So a little bit of a change up here in the second run to start it off. What's he got here? Rolling into hit number three. Into the, into the next gen. Double grab flip. Smooth as silk. Smooth as you like it. Adam's so well versed on these ramps. And he knows exactly the speeds and the angles of everything. And also a well versed comp rider. He knows to take his time here. Yeah, again, with no time clock right there, you don't have to rush anything. Perfect cliffhanger flip. I mean, that's... Doing that trick on that ramp is huge. He's, he's miles above. If his feet slip off there, he's going to... Um, he might he'll be definitely slipping somewhere else. I mean, that thing just sends you into the rafters right there. And, you know, there's nothing tentative. I mean, the extension is there, and everything is just absolutely smooth, dialed, and perfect. I don't think this is. Um, I don't think this one's gonna gonna challenge Sheeny. There's no um, no double flip there, but he he's just he's just here showing us all what he can do and how smooth he can ride and uh, and, and for how long he's been doing. It. I mean, this guy's oh. been in the game forever and how flexible he is too. <laughs> So there, there we you go. go. Another dead body flip right there out of Adam Jones. But again, going back to what Sheehan did in that first run right there. You had the double backflip with the no-hander. I mean, you had a 360 out of Josh in that first run right there. And that's why he's in that top spot with a 95. So FMX final is in the books right there. But how about two great runs out here tonight right. by Adam now Jones? That was all I had. That's it. That was good. We're going to see a little more, more, little more than I'm 91 out of that one. He threw that. an Indy on the dead body there earlier. And uh, that one felt good. There, that's it. That's that's uh, definitely throwing a little extra spice on it. Adam's the only guy that can do them that big. Adam goes out there and he's, he's all about innovation. He's doing different tricks to every rider. He's doing different tricks on different ramps. So he's, uh, he brings his own little spice to everything, doesn't he? I don't know how he manages to get his feet through there so well. I mean, I've seen him do that time and time again in competitions as well in the Nitro Circus shows, and even in demos as well. 91.66, that's good. He threw himself up a little bit. Well done, Adam. So Definitely making use of his second run. Oh, is Sheeny going to take a second run now? I think Sheeny's taking a victory lap. Oh, he had the goggles on just in case. We got told that only Brad and Adam were going to take their second runs, but he's he's all geared up. He's down there in the start gate. Looks like he's going to go anyway. So uh, this is going to be a victory lap if he, in fact, does elect to take this second run. And it looks like this is the bonus, the 2.0 here in the FMX final, if you will. <laughs> Come on, Josh. <laughs> I think we might see another... Uh, Another Bilko pumper coming out of here. The old, the old Bilko worm, if you will. He can whip too. He's a he's a big contender for best whip, whip contest. He's at the top of the uh, the X Games best whip every year. So, so again, it's, it's just <laughs> double flip. Is it? He's not quite sure what he's doing. He's having a good time. Is he, what he's doing right now. He's probably forgot he's like where a, he's forgot where he was. So he's, he's like asking a, the crowd what he should do, and I think they've come back with double flip. He's taking requests. He's like a little kid out there right now. He's just having an absolute blast. The little fist pump on the way around, just to show, just to show that it wasn't hard enough already. That's how easy the double backflip is for that guy, because you can play around and have some fun with it in the middle of that rotation two times around. He would have, Josh would have done the, uh, <laughs> I've seen Josh <laughs> nearly crash goon riding more times than doing something hard. But Josh is one of the, uh, probably the best double flipper in the world, I'd say. He's done more double flips than anyone else, without a doubt. And uh, Fracker, the mechanic says, he's got, he, he's got the bike for him, so Josh can, um, he's like, what have done. we got? A little dance, some streaking maybe. Saying hello to the fans, well done, Josh. Yeah, that was the first time I've ever seen him throw up the old long dart fender slap right there. <laughs> I've yeah. seen it too many times, and I've seen it nearly cartwheel too many times I've, as well. I've seen some people playing around before, and sometimes those things come back to bite you when you're out there just having some fun. But how about the night Josh Ian has had out here this evening? Podium one, two, three. I would have liked to see Benny run a, do a second run there. 
I think he had a little more in the tank. I was curious to see because you kind of teed that up a little bit. You said he was going to bump up, and I wanted to see another go at it right there. But let's take a look at some highlights of our top three finishers here in the FMX final. That trick there, if you miss she grab, you're, um, you're winding the windows down for a long time. The only guy out there doing 360s as well, and he throws in a 360 heel picker. Double flip, no hand out. It. And there you go, having some fun and putting on a show for good measure right there with the old Bilko jump. Let's send it down to Caroline Buchanan with our winner. We're down here with Josh Sheehan, also known as Sheeny, the winner of FMX. This is your first time. Talk us through what this event means to you and winning in front of an Aussie crowd. Yeah, look, the Aussie crowd is the best. Absolutely love riding in front of a home crowd, but it's been a couple of years and, and I've, I've yet to win either best trick or a freestyle at World Games. So absolutely stoked. Thank you, Brisbane, so much. Thanks for. Thanks for coming back on a Monday. The, the weekend's weather was terrible, but thank you all for coming back. I love it. So thanks for everyone that made it happen. They want to know if you're going to do a shoey to celebrate in true Aussie form. <laughs> oh. Have you, can I borrow your shoe? I'm going to wear this again. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. What do you have to say about the triple flip? You're the first to land it. The boys are going to go down tonight. What's your thoughts? I'm really excited. Uh, firstly, because I don't feel the nerves now that they'll be feeling. But secondly, I knew this day would come eventually we, with the advancement of technology, the inflatable landings, like things just get uh, safer now and we've tested so many different ramps, we, we're on another ramp that was twice this high and it just it wasn't safe enough but finally the boys, are, they're getting so close, they're, they're looking good, I'm excited and uh, you guys are in for one hell of a show so yeah, but bring it on, hopefully they both land it, uh, I'm rooting for both of them. Congratulations, give it up for Sheeny. Thank you. He was so casual about that. We were that close to getting a sheeny shoey right there, but I like how he just looked through Caroline under the bus and was like, can I borrow your shoe? I still got to wear this <laughs> later on. He's, he's still got best trick to come, so he doesn't want to be sludging around in a, uh, a smelly... He's, his Nobody boots, wants a soggy boot when you're out there. His boots smell enough already, trust <laughs> me. Yeah, just, you know, he kind of teased up what we were talking about earlier, the triple backflip attempt coming up. But that's best trick, and that's the last event of the night. FMX final is in the books, but how about your boy Benny starting it off? He finds himself on the podium with a 90.66. Adam Jones, the veteran and elder statesman in the group, walks out with second place, but it's Josh Sheehan finds himself in the top spot on the podium here at Nitro World Games in the FMX final. We're getting ready to send it back down to the floor once again with Micah Kranz for our awards presentation. An absolutely amazing contest. Again, pushing action sports is what Nitro World Games is all about. It's my honor to bring you Freestyle Motocross Podium. In third place, landing one of his first double backflips in front of people. Can I get some noise for Ben Richards? Our next rider has been fighting retirement, but this should tell him where he stands in freestyle motocross. From Reno, Nevada, give it up for the legend, Adam Jones! And our FMX Finals champion. You know him, you love him. We call him the unicorn. Give it up for Josh Sheehan! Make some noise for our podium. rider of the night with one of the coolest tricks, the backflip dead body. Make some noise for Adam Jones, Lego City Innovation. Back to you guys. So there you go, your FMX final presented by Lego City. Benny Richards, Adam Jones, Josh Ian, and then Adam Jones 
Walking out of here with that LEGO Innovation Award there, Jackson. That was good. I, that was a, a good pick there. And um, I thought we, we were going to see Josh Sheen take the only crash to the night. They're trying to get up on top of the thing. He's, uh, you definitely don't need a long neck to be a goose, do you? <laughs> Not at all. Sheeny's no stranger to the FMX podium out here at Nitro World Games. The first year we contested it in 2016. He walked out of here, I believe, it was second place, which it was, and then he got third place in 2017, and now he finds himself in the top spot here in 2022. Your winner out here. How's he ever made that Lego City trophy? He needs to be standing on the podium as well. That thing's something special. I know, that thing's uh, Adam gonna have to pay some access baggage to get that thing on the <laughs> flight home back to Reno, Nevada right there. Well done, yeah, boys. That's only a taste for what's coming. Best trick is where it's happening tonight. That's where the... Speaking of best trick, that's a great little segue to our next event. We've got two best trick events to cap off the night. So excited to be here in Brisbane. But coming up next, we're going to get you out of the booth. By the way, it was a pleasure having you up here. And uh, can't wait to see you out there in the field riding in competitions uh, soon. But Todd Mines jumping back in the booth. We got BMX best trick. And then to cap off the night out here tonight, it's FMX best trick. Still plenty more Nitro World Games to come when we come back to Brisbane here inside the Suncorp Stadium. Our Willie has been king, but anyone in this field could win. It is the most stacked field I've ever seen, the most competitive discipline in Nitro World Games. Now wait to see what comes out today. BMX Best Trick is about to blow your mind.
is the pitch. Jay Tui for round three. Jay Tui going for a triple back with which is massive. Nice triple back coming in. Bring back to the rotation. You gonna lose yourself? Quit testing me. That's just insane. With my favorite trick, I can't believe it. So second time around, I've won BMX Big Air. I went out, I knew what I wanted to do, and I laid it down, and it, and it got me the win. So I'm keen to come back next year and win once more. Let's make it a hat trick. Don't let me lose my mind, like Wesley tests me. Next, we have BMX Best Trick. This one is without a doubt the event that I've been looking forward to most this weekend. We have a heavy lineup and I have some of the tricks in front of me that I'm reading here and I, I'm baffled to say the least. You got the cheat sheet, you got the golden list right there. I, I can't believe some of these tricks that are on, on this sheet. There's uh, a lot of things here that I personally haven't even seen. So the crowd is certainly going to be in for a shock. Yeah, it's insane when you look at some of that stuff and you read it and your eyes see it, and it's a heck of a lot to process, but we are gonna see it as we roll through this BMX Best Trick Final out here tonight. There's a look at the first page of your start list. Talk about some of your standouts there, Todd. Uh, without a doubt, Pat Casey, he's a favorite of mine. Uh, he's doing a lot of tricks out there that a lot of people haven't done. So I'm rooting for Pat as, uh, as on the next list, Brandon Schmidt. I know he has some big tricks lined up. Yeah, there's definitely a list of heavy hitters right there. And unlike what you saw earlier tonight in the triple hits, this is all about sending it down that Giganta. And it's all about one massive hit right there. You're going to get several attempts out at it out here tonight. But it is the best run that counts as we crown a champion. We started off with a gentleman who rides both scooter as well as BMX. He's out of Estonia. It's Rumet Salik. First trick of the night is a 1080 front flip. That's a good way to start the contest off. This is a little bit different to the triple hit as they only have one jump that they need to pull. So pretty much they're going big. So that was a great way to start this one off. Again, they're going to get multiple shots at it out here tonight. You generally see him in a lot of scooter competitions, but showing you right out of the gate that he can hold his own here in BMX Best Trick. That is a perfect 1080 front flip. It's always good stopping your first run, especially having something like that, because that leaves some room to throw down and not worry too much about falling off as you've already got a good score on the board. All right, so we'll see what this does for the score right there. Maybe we'll see uh, how that score shapes up here in just a bit as we go back up to the top. He's going to get an 82.66. So again, working on a 100-point scale as we get set to bring in our next rider here. This is Dylan Devitt. Went out to our Willie Land for the first time last year at the uh, Nitro World Games Open Qualifier. They convinced him at that competition to try his first ever double flip, and now he finds himself at the Nitro World Games. This is his first Nitro World Games, and he's all also starting off with a 1080 front flip. You could also call it a cork 1440. There's a bit of a debate between them both, but uh, it, it's wild regardless. So two big hits to start it off here in BMX best trick. Rumet with an 82.66. Let's take another look here at Dylan's first attempt. So slow, spots the landing, brings it around. Perfect, can't get much better than that. Pedaling down to get an extra speed. These guys are going massive off this jump. We, we actually call it the moon booter, Jimmy, because as we say, it takes you to the moon. All right, so what's this going to be? He's got an 83.50, so going to rank just a little bit higher than Rubet. So that'll put him in that top spot for now. However, we are just getting started here. So you're going to see these names jumping around that leaderboard quite a bit out here tonight. Taking a look at another Nitro World Games rookie out of Sydney. This is Sam Gibson coming down the roller. Is that a, a 1080 front flip bar spin? I, I ride Jimmy and I can't even keep up with what these tricks are. I feel for you, dude. You're in the hot seat over there. Because even I, with the cheat sheet, you got to figure out. I, that I mean, out. I, there's too many tricks to look at on here. I, they all look absolutely mind blowing and I don't understand even what's going on. This, this is the third jump of the night so far in BMX Best Trick. 
And uh, as I said, it's always good to throw down and, and land your first run because it gives you some room to, to really go big on, on the remaining jumps. 1080 front flip, bar spin. Dare I ask the question, it looked like he maybe wanted to throw something else into the mix right there. The body language looked like he was maybe sizing something else up. Either way, he's in the top spot with an 87 flat. We're only three riders in. And we've seen three different lead changes already. I mean, the first three hits have been good. And we've got three different lead changes. And this is just going to keep on rolling. Coming up next, he's 25 years old out of the Gold Coast. Another Nitro World Games rookie. This is Liam Quinlevin. Liam's got some bangers. This is his first Nitro World Games. Double backflip Superman to start off. Liam actually qualified for this. The qualifiers are at our Willy land a year back. So I know he's stoked out here to be thrown down with the boys. I mean, watch how far off the bike he comes on the first part of the rotation. Jimmy, if you miss those feet going back on for that second rotation coming around, pretty much it's not coming around. So that, that trick is uh, certainly a risky one. So where is this going to slide him in the mix? A 78, so he's going to have to settle for fourth right there. That's going to put him just behind Rumet and Salik. But as of right now, Sam Gibson sitting in that top spot with a high 80s with an 87 flat for now. Moving on into the local boy. See lots of uh, different online clips of him. This is Brock Horman. Backflip, bar spin to no, double backflip, bar spin to no hander. Brock has some wild double flip combinations. I don't think I've ever seen anyone do that one before. We're about to get another look at it right here as we get set to tee up some slow-mo replays of Brock's first attempt here. The risky thing about this trick, Jimmy, is it's the same as the double backflip Superman before. Pretty much, if you miss those bars on that first rotation, it's not going to end up good at all. So that's definitely risky throwing the bars in at the start. Massive no-hander there to finish it off. I mean, to catch those things and then tuck your knees under like that to get the hands off in the middle of two rotations with the height that you have coming off of that thing. And he finds himself in the number two spot right there in the high 80s with an 86. That'll put him just behind Sam Gibson. So we are off to a great start. And I have a feeling that this is only going to get wilder and crazier as we move on. So we get set to bring in Pat Casey right here. As you mentioned, one of your favorites. And uh, I mean, <laughs> what this guy is just an absolute master when it comes to combining tricks. Of a cash, a 1080 front flip whip. I need to be. I need to read this sheet, Jimmy, because that's why with that, I handed that thing straight to you. I was like, here you go. You got your work cut out for you out I, here tonight. I should have studied this before I sat down. Got tail whip, cork 1080 tail whip. Unfortunately, just washing out there. But he's got a couple of more attempts. Well, you're going to get multiple chances added out here tonight, so that is going to be a throwaway run right there for Pat. Here we go. Coming up next, part of uh, Ryan Williams' crew at our, our Willy Land. They call them the Hill Willies. This is Harley Allen. Just crank it in there. This is going to be double backflip 360. What? Absolutely perfect. He's one of the only other guys out here throwing down that trick. That one's still pretty, pretty new in the world of BMX. But I know he's going to be stoked on that one. Cranking down, getting as much speed as he possibly can, flipping around, spotting that landing. And that was, you honestly couldn't get any smoother than that. And Jimmy, this is the first run. Yeah, I mean, we're literally just getting underway here in the first round of runs. So what is this going to be here? Ferrari right there, again, it's an 87 flat as the top spot. He's into the 90s with a 90.16. So here in the early part of round one, Harley Allen finds himself in the top spot. So now it's Allen, Gibson, Hartman, your one, two, three. Take a look at those scores right out of the gate there, Todd. We're already into the 90s. Harley's in a good position, putting down a solid 90. But we still got a heavy group coming up, Jimmy. Oh. Well, Brandon Schmidt, they call him Schmitty out of New Jersey, one of the regular staples on the Nitro Circus live show tour. Welcome you back in here to Nitro Roll Games. Oh, just coming up short. Smitty going for that double backflip, double tail whip. Unfortunately, not quite enough speed, but happy to see him walk away from that one. 
see the reaction right there from Ryan Williams as Schmini comes down to uh, talk to the medical crew. Backflip, double tail whip, and jump. Oh. Kind of glad to see him walk away from that one. I was going to say, just the way that he came in on that, he kind of like did the, he the helmet slide on the resi there. But I mean, he got up for, from that rather quickly and, and, and able to get up and walk. Did he knock a tooth out on that one? Up this tooth out. Have to wait and see if he comes back there in round number two. Brandon Lupos, you saw him earlier in triple hits. Trying to put in some work. You see him right there at the top of the roll, and I ended up going through the motions right there. Here we go. We'll welcome him in for his first attempt here. Best trick. A backflip, quadruple tail whip. Unfortunately, not quite getting it around. Lupos used to ride full time with the Nitro Circus, so he is used to this ramp. Was looking at a potential podium earlier in BMX triple hits and then just got edged out by Justin Dowell in that last round. So going to have to go get some work done on that bike and look to the next round right here. This is Chris James out of the Gold Coast. This one's going to be a big one. And front flip, Superman C grabbing, rolling away. The hang time on that was absolutely ridiculous. And did you see how deep that he sent that one? And it gets the Ryan Williams seal of approval right there. Is Ryan standing on the staircase? That trick's a risky one. If you if you put your hand on just that little bit too late in the front flip, you're you are just that front flip rotation comes around so fast and it doesn't normally end very well. But he's that. You see, watch how he arches his back right there. Look at where his feet that are. That is insane. How do you not over rotate that? That is 10 out of 10 for execution, height, position, everything. It just seems like you'd have so much momentum coming back around after that extension that it would want to throw you forward. But he puts that one down with an 84 flat. That's going to put him on the edge of podium contention right there. That'll slide him into fourth place. As of right now, here comes a best trick machine. Here we go, David Godziak out of Poland. Whoa, was that a 1440, Jimmy? I, I, I wasn't told I was gonna have to do math out here Well, tonight, no, Todd. the thing is that this jump is just giving these guys so much more time than any other usual jump. And this is just giving them insane amounts of time to do tricks that pretty much the, the possibilities are endless. I just, I think that was four full I, rotations. Take a lovely look at it. One, two, three, four. And perfect, Every, everyone is stomping everything right now. This contest is definitely a heated one and, and this is my favorite event of, of the whole night. I mean, first hit right out of the gate for David right there. And again, you saw him earlier tonight out here. Triple to 93, and he takes over the top spot. David Godziak with the 1440 puts himself in the top spot here in round number one of BMX Best Trick. Where in the world are we? In? This one always gives me anxiety because where do you go? It just the level just keeps getting upped every single round. Here comes Andrew Hutchinson. We call him Gecko. We got a cash roll bar spin to invert. So he spins a front flip rotation, looks backwards, which is, that's that's what we call a cash roll, spins the bar, and then on that last rotation, puts in the invert. Cash roll, bar spins, to invert. And look at it, he kind of manuals yeah. out of that a little bit. I thought I thought that saw that at real time speed, but watch this, watch the back tire. To manual. And four, four points. And he just played it off like, yeah, I meant More. to do that. <laughs> <laughs> More points. So there you go. A 76 flat for him right there. That'll slide him in that number nine spot. Hey, how about that save though right there? You put that down back wheel right that, like that, and you ride that one out in the manual. Well done there, Mr. Hutchinson. J2, he coming off of uh, two X Games medals earlier this summer. He got a uh, bronze in Mega Park, the first ever BMX Mega Park event uh, at X Games, and he got a silver in dirt. 
looking for a little bit of redemption out here in BMX Best Trick out here tonight, Todd. Watch when Tui rolls down the ramp. He pretty much pedals the whole way down. I don't think anyone goes higher than Tui, and I think we're in for a treat with this one. One, two, triple backflip. Couldn't have asked for a better landing. And that is a great run to start off with. There's that smile. That first run goes the way that he planned that. But look how deep he sends this one down into that landing, too. I mean, and you called it. Look at him cranking down the rolling. Man, it's absolutely incredible. Tui's on the live tour, and he does these every night. And the consistency on them is just... Yeah, just unreal. You know, it, it was only a few years ago that, you know, a, a triple was done and then the quad, and, and now Jay's throwing triples down like it's nothing. And makes it look so easy. Look how high he goes. That's why he gives it those couple extra cranks coming down the roll in there. And what are the judges going to reward? A triple backflip at 92.33. So that'll slide him into that number two spot just behind David Godziak right there. So nicely done here. Round number one, J2, he finds himself in the top three. And here comes Ryan Williams. He's walked out of here in the top spot the last two times we have contested BMX best trick here on this ramp at the Nitro World Games. What's he got for us? His first got go Oh my Front gosh. flip, front bike flip, and stomps it. He is gonna be over the moon with that one, and that is, it's gonna be a super hard one to beat, Jimmy. He's the only guy in the world doing that. He was the one that first started doing just the front flip, bike flip, and now he's doing it in, in front flips. And to, to be honest, I don't think anyone else is, is gonna ever be doing that trick. Our Willie is a special kind of human, and he has an endless bag of tricks. Watch this, Jimmy. Front flip, front bike flip, grabs it, pulls it around, and perfection on that landing. I mean, watch where he catches this, and look at his body positioning, and he has to pull that back around under his feet, and then finish out that rotation. That blows my mind, that trick. Absolutely incredible. I mean, how do you even come up with that? Like, I'm, I'm gonna front flip, I'll try and throw my bike around, and hopefully it comes back to me. I mean, he's in a full KOT position right there. It's like a front flip, front bike flip, nothing. I mean, he's fully inverted on the catch. That blows my mind. See, I really used to, and still is a scooter rider, but he jumped on a bike one day and just started bringing all these scooter tricks to BMX and started changing the game. And he brings a 96.33 and puts himself in the top spot. Let's send it down to Caroline. Congratulations, Ryan. You have put yourself back on the map here tonight. How have you managed to juggle three disciplines? You've already been in scooter, you've been in the triples, you're now back in BMX. How do you do it? I can tell you I'm exhausted right now, but it's for all the fans in the crowd, everyone at home. I wasn't gonna come out here and not put my best Tricks on display, added a little spice to that one. That was for everyone at home. Thank you so much, Ryan. Give it up. Well, that was pretty casual. He's just going to call that spice, right? If that's spice, <laughs> man, I, I'm nervous to think about what's coming in those next two rounds. I mean, we we're going to get three runs out here tonight out of all these boys in this lineup. But man, what a finish at the end of round number one. A very excited Ryan Williams there, and rightly so. He starts it off with a 96.33. This is what we stand, or how we stand as of right now, I should say. The scores in the 90s go all the way down to fourth place as of right now. Round one's in the books. We got two more rounds still to come when we come back to BMX Best Trick Final.
Elite Helicopter is going to head to Spice's Hidden Vale to ride some uh, e-bikes. I think it's one of the best uh, Australian mountain biking tracks out here. Today we're going to um, take you to the very far part of the park, so 500 metres above sea level, 7 kilometre. I can't believe this is only an hour out of Brisbane. 20 minutes for us in a helicopter, but only an hour drive, and then 20 minutes up the mountain. It's incredible. It's like a paradise out here for mountain bikers. Good views, good tracks, and good times with your mates, really. So a sportsman's paradise out here. When did you guys find time to go out there and go do some trails riding like that and take a helicopter ride as well? This was an amazing experience, Jimmy. Just riding those trails and as you can see, uh, Willie's always sending it. He had a big crash, lucky to walk away from that one. But uh, we were shown to some pretty epic sights around yeah. Brisbane. Yeah, it goes off in the daytime as well as the night. Speaking of going off at the end of that first round of runs, it was Ryan Williams making an absolute statement here, Todd, in BMX Best Trick Final. Man, that's going to be, be a, a tough job to beat that front flip, front bike flip. It's absolutely mind-blowing. I, I, I can't comprehend it. And as I said, all these tricks in front of me, there is definitely some more to come. Yeah, that's one round of runs in the books. It's three rounds, and it is the best run that counts out here tonight. So it is far from over. Look at this massive expanse of ramps and resis that are packed inside the Suncorp Stadium out here tonight as the Nitro World Games finds a new home here in 2022. We go back up to the top of the order. You normally see him. He's a top world-ranked, worldwide-ranked scooter rider. This is Rumet Salit getting work done here in BMX Best Trick. Oh, just letting go and flail into the ground, but he lo looks okay, just walking off a little bit disappointed, I think. Don't think he obviously, well, obviously he didn't get what he wanted, but he's still got one more run to go, Jimmy. Yeah, he's got that 82.66 from round one. It's got him in that number nine spot for now. We'll see how that holds up going through this round and into round number two as we get set to bring back in Mr. Dylan Devitt. Gonna get a replay out of Rimet. It looks like we are not. We're gonna move right on. So this is BMX Best Trick Final presented by Monster Off-Road Wheels and we Dylan Devitt. Front flip, bike flip. It wasn't too long ago, Jimmy, that, that that trick was unheard of and now people are throwing it down every other day and, and Dylan stopped that. Getting a pat on the back. And a little love there from Brandon Schmidt. So what is it going to be here for Dylan in run number two? Cranking in, front flip, bike flip, reaching out, just catching on to it, and stoked on that one. See, the, the good thing about this to, to, to Jimmy is that when you're doing these tricks, like they're massive. So when, when you're rolling away and you know you're safe, that, that's a win in itself. So he's gonna get a 72 run number two, so he's gonna stick with that first run score of 83.50. See Schmidt in the background there, doing a little meet and greet with the fans, signing some autographs. We're getting word from Sports and Comp that Brandon is not going to come back and take round the run number two or three, so uh, hopefully he is okay, but you see him standing down there and hanging out, so it sounds like he's electing to sit this one out. Uh, just watch the rest of this unfold as we bring back in Sam Gibson. He currently sits in that number five spot as of right now. We've got a 1080 front flip. Jimmy, I, I can't keep up with all these spins and they're gonna need to re-watch that slow-mo. But flailing out of control there. These guys just have so much time to do these tricks that the they're just throwing in bar spins and extra spins and extra flips. One, two, three, four. So 1080 front flip or 1440. 
three and three quarters. Yeah, almost. On the, oh, and he's still got another round of runs to go here, so we'll have to see him trying to put that one down here in run number three. Here comes Liam Quinlivan. He sits in that number 10 spot. He had a 78 flat that first go around. I like the look in their faces. That's when you know something big's gonna go down. Double backflip, Superman again. I, I think he wanted to take his hands off on that one, Jimmy. As you can see, he's got back up in the butt. Yeah, you, yeah, can, you can see right there. You can see him talking about it, looking over there, and uh, you can see him, he wanted to tuck and get the hands off like you called. See if you can see it in the rotation here. Superman pulls back in, and if you, if you miss that point in that double flip to throw your hands off, then it, it's it's really hard to take them off because the momentum's not there and um, the bike flies away. That's all right, you got another run, Liam. So round three, remember, out of these three rounds of runs, it is the best run that counts out here tonight. So he'll go back up to the top of the rolling and wait this one out. Yeah, Brock Horn with Horn with an 86 flat he was in the top three spots there for a while he now finds himself three spots out of podium condition as he slides down to that number six position with that 86 flat Brock's dropping in we got a, another double backflip bar spin same deal Jimmy I think he was looking for another one in that so backflip bar spin and I think he wants to throw a second one in the second flip yeah, he's talking you through it right there. He can hear you out there. He's talking you through it on, on the video wall. Backflip, Boston, pulling it back around. And you have to be so precise with when you throw the bars, otherwise the bike's just going to fly away from you. Don't think he quite got the rotation that he wanted to feel safe enough to throw the, that second bar spin. I mean, it, I mean, it's tough even in the slow motion replay. To, he spins those bars so fast right when he tucks into that rotation right there. I mean, even in slow-mo, you still have to really pay attention at it to catch it right there. Somebody just hold <laughs> yeah. that whole sentence and see do that better. Sign? Do better. <laughs> A little bit of... I think you're doing great, Brock. Bonus motivation going on out there. Here comes Pat Casey. Had a little bit of slip up there in run number one. Ten, going for that 10 front flip again. Stopping it this time, getting it on that second run. Pat's going to be stoked with that. This level of riding is, is next oh level. I mean, I don't even know how the judges can sit in that room and process and go through all this at real time speed and sit there and have these conversations. Look at this. I know if I ever got asked to be a judge, I'd 100% without thinking about it say no, because there's no way that, that I want to be responsible responsible for judging these tricks and what they're worth. Okay, so what does this do to Pat? Score, he's in 12 for the first round. Score of 42 flat. See where this is gonna slide him into the mix as we await Harley Allen here in his next run. Again, three rounds of runs. It's the best run that counts. We're working off a 100-point scale out here. Not Pat Casey finds himself in the 90s. It's a 92.50. Welcome to the podium for right now, Pat Casey. So it's Ryan Williams, Steven Godziak, and now Pat Casey, your one, two, three, here in round number two. That was huge right there for Pat. Harley Allen in the 90s as of right now. He's got a 90.16, but as of right now, that's only good enough for that number five spot, Todd. We got, we got a triple, oh, triple backflip, no hand What? He rolls away from it. How did he get that what? last rotation around Todd? Man, I did not think that third one was gonna come around then, and he just stomped that. I he did, can't even believe it. I can't, I was like, there's no way. Oh, there is, and he did it. Man, yeah, Holly. So this is what I love about action sports. You know, everyone's competing against each other, but everyone's on top of the ramp, cheering each other on. Everyone just wants the best for everyone. And Harley just nailed it. I mean, that reaction says it all. Watch, I mean, he too is cranking One. down that rolling. Takes his hands off. But right here, how did he Man. tuck that last rotation in? He's leaning way over the bars and hangs on to that. He, I, I think he's lucky that he pedaled as fast as what he did into the ramp because that gave him that couple of extra feet on the length, which gives him that little bit more time. And he definitely need that little bit more time, but he just stopped it. He's pulling on those bars for dear life. And look at, I mean, his chest was in the crossbar on that one. 
I just love watching the reactions on their face like they can't even believe. Look at how far forward he is on this last rotation on the landing. Man, it, I, from from past experience with this trick, I you know th on that last one there, he was thinking, please come around because I feel like he can't even believe it and this is going to be interesting, Jimmy. So an 88 flat for that one right there. So he's going to have to stick with his first run score of 90.16. And even though he forces that one around, that is going to keep him in that number five spot as of right now. So again, Brandon Schmidt is electing to not take runs number two or three. And that is going to bring us back to Mr. Brandon Lupos here. He's down there at the bottom of the pack after that first attempt there. Todd sitting at that number 14 spot with a 28 flat for run number one. Yeah, Lupos have some, has some massive tricks, and he is without a doubt a contender for the first place trophy. You see him getting ready to drop in. Got that look in his eye. <laughs> All of them do. It's, I mean, I love to watch this event, but it's also absolutely terrifying when they get that look in their head at the top of the roll. And what's it going to be and for Brandon? that is a double backflip 360. We call that the Aussie roll. And he's pumped to get that one done and roll away. Don't know if it's quite enough to take first. But he... But now he's got a score on, score on the board, so that yeah. leaves some room to, to save something for his third run. Definitely looking to bounce out that 28 for now here in round number two. Lupos just is such a smooth rider. You can see him just spotting his landing on every rotation of that trick. And he couldn't, couldn't land any better. Okay, so now we sit and wait and play the score game here. We got Chris James coming up next. We still, have, we still have a game full of riders to go here in this round, and then we get to do this all over again. And I know Lupos has a couple more in the bag. I think he just wanted wanted to get that score on the board. So he's into the 90s now with a 90.30, so that'll slide him into that number five spot. So he's wedged in there between Jay Tui and Harley Allen, so he'll overtake Harley for that number five spot. So. The 90s now creep down as far as that number six position. And then you got a couple of high 80s there with Sam Gibson at 87 and Brock Horman with that 86 to round out the top eight right there. I think it's going to be hard to beat that 96, Jimmy. Yeah, we've said this a thousand times already tonight, but I've been saying it again, the judges have their work cut out for them and they are earning their keep this evening. As we take another look, come down the rolling here, it's Chris James on a Gold Coast. We've got a front flip cannonball. So you obviously do a front flip, take both feet off, grab the seat with both hands, and pretty much hope for the best. So he's going to have to uh, keep his eyes set on round number three right there, but getting up and walking away from that one, no worse for the wear right there. But I mean, they, these guys have to be throwing down their biggest tricks because what we're seeing right now is something that you don't get to see very often. And, and this ramp that we have in front of us is just opening up so many possibilities for the sport. So we're down to our final four here in round number two before we get into that third and final round of runs. Your next rider in currently sits in that number two position with a 93 flat. It's David Godziak. Oh, just missing the handlebar there, coming around on that seven. seven I, 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 I need to get better at math, but I just they're just spinning so fast, but he, he's he hit his head but it looks like he's okay. Well, you can see the medical staff, they're talking to him right now. And just making sure, I'm assuming at this point, possibly talking it over for maybe concussion protocol there. If you, if you miss those handlebars, putting your hands back on, then, then it just affects the whole way the rotation spins. See, the, the bars just fell out of his lap there. Oh, and look at his left hand. He's grabbing the underside and, of the grip right there, too. And he's literally landed completely backwards. And, oh, yeah. just You can see right there at the end of that replay, he got the whiplash and quickly holding on to his helmet right there. So that's why they were quick to sit down and start talking to him. You can see him holding up fingers in front of his face right there. And, uh, going through the uh, the motions there for concussion protocol. So we'll see if he's able to come back and take that third and final run 
which is going to bring us back to the top of the roll in attempt number two here for Andrew Hutchinson. I've heard some rumors, Jimmy. I think the crowd, crowd is about to be treated to something massive here. He's down there in that number 13 spot. We'll see if he's going to unleash it here tonight in this second run, Todd. What do we got? Going for the double front flip, no hand. Unfortunately, just pop it, popping off the back end. Not what I thought he was going to do. Maybe he's saving it for the last jump. I hope he's saving it for the last jump. And so he's going to be taking his first score. Was that the uh, teaser, what he just did with the hands right there, possibly what we're going to see? Um, I don't want to ruin it, Jimmy. I don't bag. want to, and, yeah. Oh, man. That just gave you goosebumps just thinking about it right there. So here we go. With J2, he was in podium contention. He now finds himself just one spot out, sitting in that number four spot. Oh, going for the front flip, bike flip there. Unfortunately, the back wheel just clipping his stomach. That, that trick is, is a wild one. Pretty much you, you've got to spin the bike around in front of you and watch him lean back to try and get out of the way and unfortunately not getting out of the way in time. So he'll be taking his triple flip score. So now they've passed off the do better sign to Schmitty down there. He's not <laughs> taking the second two runs, so he's down there holding up the do better sign for everybody as they come off of the ramp right there. Last guy in the rotation before we go into the third and final round. He also happens to be your current leader with a 96.33. It's Ryan Williams. Willie is in a great spot right now. We got, oh! Oh, man. 7.20 double flip. I'm glad he's up and he's okay. Yeah, he, but he's he in a, bounced he, up quickly from that one. He's in a great position. He's, he's on top at the moment. He's got a massive score. And uh, it's going to be going to be hard for anyone to top that. But this is Nitro World Games. See him talking it over to the medical staff right there. It looked like he got a little bit of a head bounce there. He's pelling in here. here. Oh, that was his first trick, the front flip, front bike flip, which has given them, him the lead. So that's two rounds of runs in the books. It's Ryan Williams still sitting in that top spot. The third and final round still to come. Who's going to walk out of this one, the victor? We'll find out when we come back to Nitro World Games. Lee Helicopter is going to head to Spice's Hidden Valley to ride some uh, e-bikes. So it's one of the best uh, Australian mountain biking tracks out here. Today we're going to um, take you to the 
very far part of the park, so 500 metres above sea level, seven kilometre descent. Mate, I can't believe this is only an hour out of Brisbane. 20 minutes for us in a helicopter, but only an hour drive, and then 20 minutes up the mountain. It's incredible. So we're down here with the Nitro Circus BMX crew, our paddock and skate path. And we're running a under 10s and under 16s scooter, skate and BMX con called the Hot Wheel Superchargers, fueled by Nitro Circus. So let's get into it. since we've been apart from each other, so it's great to be back in the first event back to bring everyone together as a community event. There's no better feeling. It's super important giving back to the next generation, obviously, because we've had such an amazing platform to be able to do these kind of events and give the Groms an opportunity to do what they do best is pretty awesome. Hot Wheels Superchargers, fueled by Nitro Circus. What an amazing weekend. Now it's time for us to go and have some of our own fun. Those Hot Wheels Superchargers events are always such a good time. Got seven of them on the calendar here in 2022, including one coming up next weekend in Sydney, and it feeds into our Junior World Games, which we just had on the Gold Coast last weekend as well. But here in Brisbane, inside the Suncorp Stadium, we've still got some business to take care of here in BMX Best Trick Final, presented by a monster off-road wheels. It's Ryan Williams sitting in the top spot for now. However, we go back up to the top of the order. Everybody's going to get one more shot at it here tonight. Todd and uh, it's best run the count so this thing is still up for grabs as we bring back in Rumet Salik. Rumet dropping in we've got another 1080 from flip unfortunately just just coming up a little bit short that's a shame yeah but I mean he started off that first round of run runs great style 82.66 but that's gonna leave him in that 11th place position here in round number three so we quickly move along to dylan at debit here Dylan sitting in that number 10 spot he too was off to a great start but that 83.50 good enough for that number 10 position here he's always so happy always got such a big smile on his face and this is his first nitro world games i know he's happy to be out here and throwing down what do we got jimmy We've got a double backflip 360 and unfortunately just coming up a little bit short. Just kind of bounced right there and you can see that just kind of tucks the limbs in right there and then slides that one out. It was still a pretty heavy impact, but uh, he gets up from that one no worse for the wear. That's such a such a wild trick, Jimmy. It's it's so hard to figure out and see where you are because you there's so many blind spots in the trick. And that's why, unfortunately, coming up a little bit short and not being ready for the landing. Okay, so that'll bring us down to Sam Gibson here. He had that first round score of 87 flat. It's got him in that number seven spot. We've got another cork fr front flip 1080. These guys are all going for this one trick. And unfortunately, just sliding out. You need a 92.50 or better if you're gonna crack into that top three as of right now. That's Pat Casey sitting in that number three spot. David Godziak with a 93 flat. And then you've got Ryan Williams sitting in the lead. However, here comes Liam Quinlivan. He's in that number 12 I, spot and he is visibly pumped up right here. Todd, what are we gonna see? I wonder if we're gonna see this double backflip Superman to no hander and unfortunately just misses the no hander. That trick you have to be so precise for because when you take your hands off on a flip, you want to be just about upside down because that's when the bars fall into your lap. 
If you take him off any later, the bike's just going to fly away from you, and it's not going to end well. He was so close right there. You can see just trying to pull that in to get the knees under right there to get the hands off the bars. Thank he says just that close. Thank so he's going to stick with that first run score, 78 flat, leave him in that number 12 spot. So we take a look at our current standings. Again, it's Ryan Williams, David Godziak, and Pat Casey, your one, two, three. David Godziak, we're being told by Sports and Comp, is withdrawing from this third and final round. So he's gonna have to hope that 93 flat holds up here in this third round. So developing situation here in round three, your number two ranked rider not taking run number three, but here we go with Brock Horneman. We got that double backflip Bastman again, unfortunately not getting what he was after, which was the double backflip, double bar spin. It's so crazy, these, these variations alone in a single flip is, is something, but you know, these guys are doing it in double backflips now. And as I was saying, Jimmy, that's that's why this ramp's so great, because the, the trick lists are just becoming endless, and, and these guys can pretty much throw anything down on this because they have so much time to do what they want. I mean, it's just look at again. I mean, look how this is shaping up like it wasn't triplets. I mean, look how far down the standings, the scores in the 90s go. I mean, an 86 and an 87 are only good enough for seventh and eighth place as of right now. Coming down the roll and sitting in third place, it's Pat Casey. Oh, what? I'm gonna have to look at that one again. <laughs> I believe that was a 720 front flip tail whip to downside tail whip. But I'm unfortunately just missing that kick back. So Pat's going to stick with that 92.50. Hopefully it keeps him on the podium as of now. Again, it's Williams. Godziak and Casey, your one, two, three as of now. Harley Allen put down a big one, big one there in round number two, but it's only good enough for six places of right. That's how crazy this is. Yeah, I, I wonder if he's gonna go for it again. Some people might be wondering why it didn't score too well, and that's because, you know, these tricks. Oh, oh! these tricks. Oh, I hope he's. Unfortunately, taken a rough slam there. Coming up short on a triple backflip is no joke. And he's coming in with so much, so much speed from that rotation. So when you come up short like that and you get catapulted forwards, you, it's just, it's a recipe for disaster. Medic's just taking some care of him. And the medical staff tending to him now. And he gets up and walks away under his own power right there. And you can hear the roar of applause from the fans here. The crowd is certainly getting a show. I mean, you hate to see that, but you love to see these guys get up and walk away after it happens. Just missed that pop a little bit. And at that point, once you're spinning a triple flip, you can't pull out. So. You pretty much know as soon as you take off that lip if you've got a good enough spin or not. And pretty much if you know you're not coming around, you're pretty much holding on just. From that just... angle, he saved himself there because he kind of tucked around and took most of that on the back versus getting all that on the left collarbone right there. So, that I mean, that was great awareness right there by Harley Allen. And again, I mean, hats off to you for getting up and walking away and smiling no less after taking a hit like that, Todd. Yeah, I'm glad he's okay after that one, Jimmy. That was certainly rough, but Harley's certainly a tough one, and not much will keep him down. Okay, last round of runs. Brandon Lupos climbed out of the bottom there. He was ranked 14, finds himself in that number five spot. Can he bump up once again? Again, you need better than a 92.5 if you're going to crack into the top three as of right now as we send him down to Roland for his third and final attempt. What have we got from Lupos? And a double backflip 360 tail whip. That was absolutely wild. There's only one other guy that's done that trick before, Ryan Williams. But uh, it's the it's absolutely wild because he, as you can see, he spins the double flip 360, spots his landing, and then kicks it on the last rotation.
So that whole last rotation, when you're kicking that whip, you have no idea where you are. You are completely blind. Um, devastated he didn't roll away from that one. These guys are throwing down, Jimmy. So that's going to bring us down. And we're taking a look at the standings again to tell the story here. David Godziak sitting in that number two spot. And we were told by Sports and Comp, he is not going to take this third run. So that means we are down to our final four. You got Ryan Williams sitting in that top spot who gets to go last in the run order here. Uh, well, there's only three people left, essentially, then that can challenge here for that top spot. You got Chris James up on top of the roll in there, locked and loaded right here. Yeah, I'm, I'm just looking over some of these tricks here and I'm just trying to figure out which one J Chris is going to do because uh, we are down to the final runs, so it's now or never. Ryan up there just having a good old time and cheering him on right there. So here we go, third and final tip for Chris James. Front flip, double seat grab Superman from Chris, unfortunately just under rotating that front flip. The thing with that trick is you have to under-rotate a little bit to know that you're coming around because if you're not back on and you've already completed the front flip, you're just getting whipped forwards and uh, it doesn't normally end too well. So, unfortunately, just coming up a little bit short on that. So we'll skip David Godziak here in the lineup here and that'll bring up Andrew Hutchinson who finds himself in that number 13 spot with a 76 flat. Are we going to see it? D double front flip, no hand up. Same deal, unfortunately, coming up a little short. Landon heavy on the back wheel. And so that means we have two left. You have Jay Tui still to go. And then you have Ryan Williams. So Ryan on your right there, your current leader. You've got Pat Casey sitting in that number three spot. David Godziak sitting in that number two position. So Jay Tui is the last man standing between those three gentlemen being on the podium. He's one spot out. He's on the outside looking in right now. He's knocking on the door. To, Just a couple of tenths of a point behind. Can he do it, Doc? If he pulls this one, I think it's going to give Willie Rock for his money. Front flip, bike flip to tail whip. As you can see, I, I think he wanted the double tail whip out of it, but that's that's still a solid trick. And I mean, this is going to be interesting because Jay's in fourth place right now, and everyone wants a podium. So I mean, this is this is a tough one. Yeah, you got a 92.33 and a 92.50, so they're neck and neck right now. Uh, front flip, by flip, to tail whip. It was R. Willie first doing that trick, and then Tui was actually the next guy to come and start making this trick a normal occurrence. Take a couple more looks at this last attempt here for Mr. Tui. The head-on angle just gives you full appreciation of what's going on in this trick. I mean, we've got one, one rider that can possibly take out R. Willie at this point. Don't know if that's going to be enough. It certainly could be a podium finish for Tui. So your current leader sitting up on top. He's the last guy to ride as we await the score here. So it is not going to be enough. He's going to stick with that first run or 92.33 from okay, round number one. So it. a fourth place finish. That means our podium is set. And so is our winner because he's the last guy to ride and he's going to walk out of here with a victory lap. And I know our Willie well enough to know he is going to throw down something massive for the fans. Our Willie just is always, always down to throw down. It doesn't matter Believe if he's first yourself, place at the it, moment. Baby, he is going to throw down something, something massive. He says third time's the charm. He's got written on the finger right there on that left glove right there and just having a great time out here as he's waiting for the green light to send it down the roll. And, and here we go. He's already got the win. And this will be his third, the only one who's ever won BMX best trick on the Giganta that we've contested it here at the Nitro World Games. The inaugural one in 2016 in Rice Cycle Stadium. He got the win. Then in 2017, we did do a BMX best trick, but it was in a park comp in 2018. It was Brian Fox that walked out of there with the winner of that one. So here we go. A victory lap for Ryan Williams. Here we go. Double backflip 720 and unfortunately just looping out, but it does not matter. He is taking home 
first place. I don't. I think Willie is undefeated on this setup, and he is over the moon. And it's so awesome to see all the riders down there cheering each other on. Well, let's send it down to Caroline Buchanan. Ryan, you have done it. Third time is the charm. You have got yourself back on the top of the box. What does this moment mean for you? It means so much. I'm just so happy to have such an amazing event. Thank you so much to everyone that came out. I know we couldn't get it done on the weekend. I know it's hard to get in Monday, but you're here. And that was for you. So I really I appreciate you all. Thank you, Action Sports. I love you so much. I'm absolutely exhausted, but I gave my all today for you, and I love you. We <laughs> Congratulations, Ryan Williams. So there you go, making his second podium appearance out here tonight. Remember, he got second place at Scooter Best Trick to start off the afternoon here inside the Sunport Stadium. And uh, yeah, he's gone for the trifecta now. The three times we've hosted BMX Best Trick on this ramp, he's come out in the top spot all three times. Yeah, and as you can see, he's just got got certain tricks that just no one else can even really i don't think come close close to here we have the front flip front bike flip and getting it down in the first run just makes you feel so much more confident going in into your last tricks but it, it's just perfect it, it looks like a video game trick I, to be honest i don't think you can even do some of these tricks on a video game uh, it's absolutely insane how vertical he is in the middle of that race. It's like he's in a KOD and just tucks that one around and just, it's, uh, I could watch that replay over and over and over again. But uh, man, what a finish right there for the uh, BMX Best Trick Final presented by a Monster Off-Road Wheels. And uh, Ryan Williams making history out here tonight by being undefeated on this setup, as you said earlier there, Todd, and I, uh, that smile couldn't be any bigger right now. Yeah, it's gonna certainly gonna be hard to take take him off the top on that trick. I and mean... Also, let's walk the plank a little bit here. Who do you think's possibly in contention for the LEGO Innovation Award out here tonight? Uh, I keep forgetting about that one. I mean, that's that's kind of hard. You know, you've got da David Godziak, you know, Lupos, even Harley, I mean, even though he didn't ride away perfect, that triple backflip no-hander was just something else. And then, unfortunately, Brandon Schmidt getting taken out early. Yeah, it had to withdraw from rounds two and three, but uh, hopefully uh, he's okay. You saw him up and walking around it, talking to the fans out there and signing some autographs. So we're just waiting to uh, get the awards ceremony underway here. Hey, everybody, Jimmy Coleman here. That's Todd Mine over there. And uh, we've had a, it's been a busy night out here, and we still have one more event to go. And this one makes me really nervous. We got FMX Best Trick still coming up. But uh, how does it feel to be up here in the booth? I know you're normally out there in the field riding uh, and on the shows, but uh, your first time in the TV booth, how do you feel? I, I feel good. It's a little bit different being up here and, and watching all the boys send it. But to be honest, it's it's been unreal to be up here and you know ha pretty much have like a bird's eye view of all the action. BMX Best Trick is my favorite event. But what's coming up next, I think, is what we've all been waiting for. There's, there's been so much hype on social media on what we are about to see. And I mean, I mean, Pretty much, you either land in it or you're rolling away in the back of an ambulance with, with what's coming up next. Well, it's all about to unfold as our final event of the night. For, for right now, let's send it down to another guy that you're very familiar with on the Nitro Circus Live Tour. It's none other than the MC Micah Krantz, who has our podium presentation. Queensland, Australia. Can I get some noise for that contest? How amazing! One of the best in the history of BMX right here, Nitro World Games, will be written down in the history books as one of the best contests of all time. Now to our podium. In third place, Riverside, California, it's Pat Casey! In second place, only needing two runs, 
his brother podium at the Rampage. This week at World Games, he's standing up himself. How about some noise? Second place, David Dodziak! He's a cyborg. He's a phenom. He's the greatest living action sports athlete in the world. Donna, your boy did it. Give it up for Ryan Williams! And on Lego City Innovation Trick of the Night, you know what it is. Forward front bike flip from Ryan Williams. Give him the trophy. Lego City Innovation. Make some noise for your podium. BMX best trick. Scooters in third place. Give it up in third place. Dylan Morrison, get him up on the podium. Yes, sir. Can we get him? In second place for Scooters. You know him. You love him. Tell him right now what you think of him. What do you think of Ryan Williams, second place Scooter? Three events, two podiums for the Phenom. Give it up for Ryan Williams. champion beating yo it's david Bert goliath today make some noise for your winner triple backflip no ander reese watch us and our winner tonight Lego City Innovation. Jaden Stanley. Yep, Jaden flipped the backflip. You are our winner. Come on over, get your trophy. Make some noise for Jaden. Doing a variation of his own trick. How about some noise for Scooters? So there you go, your BMX best trick podium, followed by your scooter best trick podium, and a big night out here for Ryan Williams. He started off the day with a second place in scooter best trick, and he walks out of here top honors in BMX best trick as well as the LEGO City Innovation Award. However, there is still more to come. We have the icing on the cake still happening here at Nitro World Games inside Suncorp Stadium. We've got the FMX Best Trick Final when we come back.
Finally accomplish it, land a triple on a hard landing right away from it, it it's awesome. I just it's still sinking in. It's such an amazing feeling. For starters, a massive thanks to Travis Pastrana and Nitro Circus for, for being crazy and having these crazy ideas and and just for all my sponsors for helping me out, for getting me sorted with the gear and, and product for allowing me to do what I do. So awesome, thanks. Oh and massive thanks to the Aussie guys for coming out. It just really took the stress away and, and made me feel more at home. So it uh, made everything a lot more fun. Shinny is a bogan from Perth that just did the biggest trick in action sports and potentially the craziest stunt that's ever been done. And he is just Josh Sheehan, an inspiration to the working class man and an inspiration to me. Travis set off on this journey, he had no idea how it would end. It was far more difficult than he ever imagined. The hardest part was finding an athlete that could continue where Travis had to stop. Josh Sheehan proved to be the only one in the world with the skill, strength, and heart to match Pastrana's vision. Together, Travis and Josh elevated action sports to a height never before imagined. The stakes are so high in freestyle motocross, especially the best trick, because there's one chance to do something that's never been done, higher and further and crazier than everyone's ever done it before. And these guys are jumping with 450cc, 250 pound motorcycles, flipping, twisting, and spinning. The only man on earth to ever do a triple backflip, Josh Sheehan, is in this competition, as well as Harry Bink, former winner. With John Harry Bink, rock solid front got it, got it, got it. Absolutely amazing. My money this year is on J.O. Archer. This guy has been chomping at the bit to send something that we've never seen before. It should be good. Get ready for the biggest and baddest FMX competition on the planet. It's going to be a lot of epic sends. Probably going to be some big crashes. But there can only be one Nitro World Games champion.
Welcome back, everyone, at Nitro World Games 2022 in its new home on Australian soil this year here in beautiful downtown Brisbane, just off the banks of the Brisbane Brisbane River here in Queensland inside the Suncorp Stadium. The sun has finally set. The lights are up. We've got one more event to cap off the night. It's the one everyone's been waiting for. It's the FMX Best Trick Final. Hello, everyone. I'm Jimmy Coleman. Now joined in the booth by none other than Travis Pastrana. And well, Trav, let's just talk about it and rip the Band-Aid off and get the cat out of the bag. Everyone's been talking about what we're going to see on social media. There's been some teasers. There's been some hits. So I'll let you throw it out there to the fans. Uh, yeah, honestly, I'm scared for all of these guys. Everyone's <laughs> doing something they've never landed before. I mean, even, um, you know, top dog Scott Fitzgerald is Superman Seacrab indie front flip. We have seen that. Um, you know, a couple years ago, but he's, but Top Dog's never landed that. I mean, you got Adam Jones is the only American. He's starting off. I mean, he had an amazing pair of silver. I don't know what he is going to do uh, for this one, but I, you know, he might be the only rider that's going to land a trick tonight. And I, I, I really hope that everyone lands. And, and I've never been more nervous in my entire life, not competing, just looking at every single person. And uh, I mean, the height that they're getting on these ramps, and they're so big. They're just. It's just blowing my mind. There is so much buildup going into this and so much training and practice. And most of you have uh, probably seen some of this stuff going on on Instagram, but I'm not going to fully let the cat out of the bag just yet. We'll talk about it as we get closer to it. But right now, we're about to take a look back at some highlights from earlier in the week of what was going on here in training sessions. We had to do a bit of dodging in and out with the weather, but there were some big things going on here. See Harry Bing and J.O. Archer right there talking it over, looking at that massive moon booter ramp right there. What's in store, Travis? Well, Josh Sheehan have been hitting a ramp that was 40 foot tall, and these guys are hitting this moon booter, and they're going, I mean, it, it's huge. It's over 20 foot tall takeoff, uh, but they're trying to get around a competition setup, and I, you know, I, I just been telling these guys, I'm like, I don't think you can do it, but they're all built. I mean, these are the strongest guys you've ever seen in your life. You know, as a joke, um, Josh Sheehan and uh, um, Jacko, and uh, right there, Harry Bink go on to Australian Sparta, the Spartan <laughs> Games, and they win. They, these are some of the strongest human beings on the face of the earth. Harry's going for triple backflips in the rain, mind you. Like, look at that laid out double. That was the pinnacle of my career. And he's just laying it out, preparing to hit this vertical ramp, seven Gs on the takeoff, and spinning a triple in the rain. That's, that's me right there going, there's yeah. no, absolute, what did I just watch? The look on your face right there said it all. Yeah, but do you see how low they're getting the triple around? I'm just watching all the other events today when the guys are, are you know, they're kind of, they're crashing the triples on all the other events and people are going nuts when people land. I mean, a scooter best trick, a guy lands a triple backflip no-hander and it wins the event. They are going 10 times higher on dirt bikes that are 250 pounds doing a triple backflip. Seven Gs on the takeoff, bending handlebars, all, they're strapping their feet in. They are strapping their feet into the motorcycle. They cannot bail off. There is no out. It is all in. It is 100% commitment. Strongest guys you've ever met in your life. Just ripping these 250-pound bikes. They are the most modified. They're like factory, factory supercross motors trying to get the speed to get this thing to rotate. It's, it's, it's blowing my mind. Yeah, and if you're watching this at home and you're thinking, oh, well, they're going to an airbag, that thing is not a safety net. It is far from safe. I mean, you can look and you can see how high they are in the air and then the impact. And then on top of that, you've got the weight of that bike. You got a job number one when it goes south is you got to bail out and get away from that But thing. you can't bail out because your feet are locked in. Yeah. So J.O. Archer breaks his femur going to that flat airbag before. No one has ever even jumped this new jump to the landing because you got to go so high. And if you're not Flipping, it doesn't work. And they're going to send it out here tonight for the fans here inside the Suncorp Stadium. It's our final event of the night out here. The weather threw us a curveball, but we're here. We're going to make it happen and possibly break history out here tonight as we move along through our final competition. Seven riders in the mix here in FMX Best Trick. Now, looking at the rule book, they're going to get two attempts, but you got to take them one right after the other. However, depending on what we see go on here tonight, Travis, you and I were talking about that. They're probably they're, you're, you're not, not going to take that second no, If you land a triple backflip, if you land a, a front flip, dead body if you let any of the tricks that are these guys are going for you, 
you're not getting up to do another one. I mean, I hope they do, but this is nuts. Okay, so we're gonna start it off with Adam Jones. You saw him in the freestyle comp earlier tonight, and uh, you had said this before, like, what is Adam Jones gonna do? The guy has an awesome arsenal of right side up tricks, and he can also throw those into flip combos. USA, never USA. Never count this guy out. He always throws surprises at us. It's Adam Jones out of Reno, Nevada, starting us off here in FMX Best Trick. Probably one of your best all around riders, but here we go, Adam Jones hitting the ramp. I don't even know what he's gonna do. Oh, look at that. Dead body, backflip, absolutely awesome. Great extension. He's stoked. And to be fair, like, he is pretty consistent on all of his tricks. He knows he's got full extension. Uh, he knows he's got a, a pretty high score. He's going to get all the perfection scores. Um, you know, here he goes warming up on the other jump. But basically, this was a trick because he's looking down the list going, I don't know if anyone else is going to land tonight. Dive to play the safety card right there. And again, he's got other variations he can do. So again, if you're going to go for two attempts out here, you go one and then you go with your second attempt right there. So he's lining up for attempt number two here. Let's see if we get a replay of the first shot. Right I mean, this, we'll this is a moon booter. This is, you got to see this to even believe it. This ramp is so tall. They're going so high. And look at the extension, just holding it there. Um, you know, for 38 years old, I tell you what, he gets his knees through there. Absolutely awesome. Uh, he's definitely playing up the crowd. Look at look at that extension. I mean, that is that is beautiful. And that is about 55 feet off of the ground. In case you for reference, that's five and a half stories up. Uh, yeah. Puts that one through textbook right there. And he'll also, I mean, he's so dialed with that trick right there. I've actually seen him do that in shows time and time again right there. So he starts that off with an 81.66. The judges are working off of a 100-point scale here tonight, just like they did in FMX. So Adam Jones is under power for attempt number two. There we go, cliffhanger backflip. And you know Pat Bowden with the DOD, so they changed the format a little bit this year, but if you execute a trick that's not quite as difficult to its fullest extension, you can still score pretty high. Um, I, you know, it's not gonna score higher than, than anyone riding away, doesn't matter how poorly uh, with some of the other tricks, but his perfection is there. He's gonna go as high as he can. I mean, he's in the 80s. This is a solid score, and yeah, not trying to underplay this. This is not one of the coolest all. things I've ever seen, but the, the other stuff on this list is just, it's not even in video games. But that's the other thing too, is what you were talking about, the strategy card right there. If people aren't able to land their tricks and you get out there and you do two things to the level of what we just saw Adam do right there. So that could be enough to put you on the podium right there. It could be enough to win. Frankly, I'm just, I'm looking down these, there's, there's, okay. Big, never, two, I get it. These guys have never been gone to this landing before. So, I mean, this is awesome. I'm so stoked for Adam. He's riding the best I've ever seen him ride. He's crushing it. Um, you know, he's the only American in the field today, which is, such a big power swing. He's probably going to yeah. laugh at me when I make this reference, but he's like a fine wine, Travis. He gets better with age. He does. No, but the power swing has gone to Aussie. I mean, they, these guys, I don't know what's in the water over here, but they're, you, they're all completely crazy. And uh, it's been awesome. So AJ throwing down one heck of a perfect run. 82.66, um, yeah. six, six, so he betters that on jump number two. So he jumps up by a full point right there. Adam Jones, you're having a great night, sir. I'm winning. He's winning, <laughs> USA, USA. That's the best part about being what? first in the lineup. No matter Crazy. what happens, you're still the top scorer. But again, just joking around there. Great, great job there. You got an 81.66 and an 82.66. So again, it's the better of your two scores. So consistency is the name of the game for that guy. He's already started the podium once out here tonight. Adam Jones, as we get set to take a look at another guy who's already found podium success here tonight. Josh Sheehan, winner of the FMX comp earlier. Now he's going to uh, showcase some skills here in Best Trick, Travis. Now, Josh Sheehan was robbed, kind of like I said, the DOD format. Uh, we had Pat Bowden go out and basically do the exact same jump that AJ just did. You know, it was absolutely perfect. It was amazing. Sheehan did the world's first double back flip, kiss of death, crashed on his first run, got on, barely rode it out the second time, uh, but he was so sketchy that it didn't get him the score. I think now the judging has been changed a little bit. Chuck Carruthers, your overall uh, head judge, has the, the, the right to change to basically whatever he sees, and I think you're going to see a double flip, kiss of death coming out of Josh Sheehan. We'll see if I'm right here. Okay, here we go. He's under power here for his first attempt. Oh, no. Sorry, double flip, no hander. The, okay, when you do a double backflip and you take your hands off, the centrifugal force is so strong that you add a, actually have to wrap your, he's hooking his feet underneath the, um, the shift cover right there. Um, it, I haven't seen anyone do a double backflip, no hander without the bike going away from him. And he gets so much extension. Uh, that is one of the most difficult tricks you'll ever find. He threw one of those out in the FMX comp and he, he was almost like a Jacko called it. It was like, it was almost like he was standing up. I mean, 
Look how long he keeps the hands off the bars, and you still have to put uh, it back no. on and yank for the rest of that rotation. My gosh, and if your bars go sideways at all, it, you know, they, they almost lock the bars completely straight, but if they go sideways, uh, it, it ejects you completely off. The bike starts spinning. The centrifugal force, or the uh, basically the rotation force of the front tire, uh, if the bars go sideways, it's like instantly ejection. Uh, so for that to do that well is, uh, is pretty impressive. Um, and it's a super technical trick for Josh. This is, he, Josh is the only rider to ever land a triple backflip. He had that, but this is such a small ramp compared to what he did it on a 44 foot tall takeoff, 65 foot tall landing. And uh, he just didn't quite have the strength to get it around with these guys were. So Josh is gonna check in with an 86.33 right there on the double backflip, no hander. So again, with their two attempts, they line up, hit one. If they wanna take a second run, they can come back and do that. They come consecutively. So Josh is lining up to take Hit number two, do we see another double backflip combo here, Chapman? Possibly a 360 combo. Double backflip right there. That was, I mean, it was even better than the first time. I think what he was thinking is that the double backflip no-hander is so much more technical than the double backflip. He's already done that. So to do this better than anyone else in the world, to hold your hands off longer, uh, this was a really smart move by Josh, and it's actually, um, yeah, there we go. We got the Bilko in the house. <laughs> I was going to say, the Bilko worm is back. He's three for three on those out here tonight. But again, what a great night he's having. And uh, I mean, the fans absolutely loved him. He got out there and the way he was just playing to the crowd there in between each one of his seven hits there in the freestyle comp. Look how long he holds his hands up. Then you see him jump back on that throttle, speed up the rotation again. I, it's absolutely amazing how controlled he is with the double backflip. The amount of force that it's, it's he's putting on his toes to basically hold himself to that motorcycle is, uh, is pretty amazing. It's insane to, I mean, I've seen him do this time and time again for quite a while. I haven't and seen him do it that big. It's just amazing how easy it looks. I mean, he just makes it look so effortless right there. So it's going to be uh, three tenths of a point higher right there. 86.33 the first go around. He gets an 86.66 on his second attempt. So that is going to be the one that stands. So yeah, even a single flip uh, no-hander is, is actually a lot more difficult than, than it looks. It's super safe. <laughs> Josh, easy beat. Uh, it's, it's super amazing to see that, that he's able to do that in a double. I mean, we used to do doubles. It was everything that we could do to get him around. I mean, that was the pinnacle okay. of my career. Uh, now yeah. it's just, yeah. 2006, I mean, you terrified everybody before that happened inside the Staples Center at X Games. Mm -hmm. And then you rode away from that, and it was absolutely amazing. And the energy in that place, I mean, you couldn't describe it. And then now guys are doing that in practice before freestyle comps. I mean, just, you were the pioneer of that. Then you had Cam Sinclair come out a couple years later at X Fighters and do one in a freestyle comp, and it just kept building and building from there. But and they're warming up with double backflips. The I ramps know. are so much bigger. The, the riders, it's just, you know, there was, uh, you know, Olivia Reynolds, she's uh, 11 years old. A uh, girl came over to the house and started learning backflips. I'm like, what? Dude, you remember with Kerry Hart? I mean, he ends up marrying Pink because yeah. he tried a backflip. And now it's like everybody is just, the level has gotten so much bigger and so much crazier. It's just, it's, I remember at an X Fighters year, I mean, this goes back to 2013, and I watched Sheeny crash a double flip and get in qualifying. There's no one in the building, and he gets up and takes, it's like, just dust it off like it's nothing, and then takes his second run. I mean, that's how far this has evolved from 2006 when you started that double backflip into motion. Now, this is the big air of action sports. You got Scott Fitzgerald. This is Top Dog. Um, just a really good friend of, of Harry Bank, of, of J.O. Archer. Um, you know, he's been around from the beginning. One of the best dudes you'd ever meet. And it, it's cool. It's seeing like our Willie Land and where all these guys that used to come to kind of my house uh, back in the U.S. Now, everyone's coming here to these Aussies guys' houses and they're, they're working with these ramps. I mean, uh, you know, that Josh right there, one of the guys with the mullets, um, you know, has been working with J.O. and working with all these guys to try to make sure the ramps are, are set up perfect. And um, it's amazing how far they're pushing all of their friends. So Scott Fitzgerald, uh, top dog we call him, uh, is going to try a front flip, seat grab, indie. Um, he's never ridden out before. Well, we're gonna let these guys work some ramps into play right there. The front flip assist ramp getting set up there by the grounds crew. We've got Scott Fitzgerald's best trick attempts coming up. We've got more Nitro World Games here at FMX Best Trick when we come back to the Suncorp Stadium here in downtown Brisbane. On most tricks, when someone else does it, someone else copies it. That's not going to happen with this trick. With the force, the height, you know, the, the speed, and 
just so much energy in the air spinning and how are you gonna land that? To reach that is absolutely putting your life at risk. But you can't drop from outer space and expect to walk away from it unless you land on the wheels. Just seeing the footage of the, the triple flip to the bag, I mean, it just looks so violent and so many panic revs and so tucked up just to get that thing moving around. I don't really know what would possess anybody to want to do this. sixth and final event of the night. It's FMX Best Trick. We've got two runs, two rounds of runs in the books, I should say. Josh Sheehan sitting in that top spot as of right now, followed by Adam Jones. We've got Scott Fitzgerald due up next. But before we get to his two attempts, we send it down to the field with Caroline Buchanan. I'm down here with Adam Jones. We're getting to the pointy end of the night, what everyone has been waiting for. Talk about progression tonight. We're currently moving the ramps. What is going down? Well, everybody needs their own particular ramp for their own special trip that they're trick that they're doing. But uh, yeah, this is like the pinnacle of progression right now. I actually came into this weekend and I had no idea what half the guys were getting ready to do. So big surprise for me and uh, I'm really excited to see it. And let's talk about hype with this crowd. Yeah, you know, normally as the night goes on, you see the crowd really kind of thin out, but that's not happening tonight. So I think I know what everybody came here to see tonight. And that's, ironically, that's what I came here to see as well. And this is a historical moment. Give it up for the boys. I'm going to send it back to you guys. I like the energy there, Jones. He's like, uh, ironically, I came in here to see that as well. He's sitting in the number two spot as of right now. But uh, you're taking a look at uh, J.O. Archer right there. He is uh, one of our last two riders. Him and Harry Bink are going to close out this party here tonight. As uh, well, you saw some of the, you saw some teasers in that uh, video package that we ran uh, right before we uh, came back from break. And well, Travis and I were talking about it. We are uh, possibly going to see history in the making out here tonight, Trav. So J.O. Archer has been working. Uh, tirelessly basically to try to figure out how to get a ramp that he could rotate three flips that he could do w within a stadium within uh, the, the confines of not building a 65 foot you know mm -hmm. hill and landing um, and he made it happen and he worked with Harry Bink that's the coolest part about being over here all the guys are working together they're trying to figure everything out um, you know but Jay was welding his own ramp he said you know the guys at Black Rifle have been basically all the military guys have been coming down and being like how can we help you how can we get you stronger how can we get you more fit how can we um, work on these ramps what can we what technology can we add to your motorcycle and it's been this this progression unlike anything else. Well, there you go. They're, you're watching at home and you're not too familiar with the cast of characters here in FMX. That's J.O. right there with the uh, orange shoulders there on the jersey there and uh, Harry Bink to the right there. They're talking it over with uh, Josh Sheehan who's sitting in that top spot as of right now here in FMX Best Trick. But now we've got the front flip ramp into place there and we are ready to bring in our next competitor out of Gold Coast. It's Scott Fitzgerald. Travis, as you said earlier, they call him Top Dog. Nitro World Games rookie competitor. Competitor. No stranger to the Nitro Circus live show here in Australia, though. And uh, one of the oldest in the field out here at 36. Yeah, well, Top Dog, he's uh, known for taking a, a, like a flyby. He's, uh, you know, requesting a flyby just uh, to kind of get a feel of it. I don't know if he might hit his right now. Uh, he might take uh, one little pass to kind of figure it out. Um, he's, oh, he's going for it. Nope, flyby. All right, there we go. He's trying to buzz the tower right there. 
So he's uh, going to come back but, and re-rack right there, just sizing it up. So again, they're just they're interchanging. That's why we had such a long delay between uh, Sheehan and uh, Top Dog here, because we had to move different ramps into play. So that's why we had the hold. So this is a front flip ramp. Uh, mixed reviews, it's basically like hitting a curb at the top of the ramp. It doesn't naturally do anything. It's one of the scariest things you'll ever do. It's hard to jump this jump normally. He's going to try a Superman seat grab Indian Air front flip. He has never even jumped this front flip ramp to that landing, but he said, you know what? I got it dialed into the foam pit. I've tried it to the airbag. He did it in the rain. Uh, this is his first really major competition, but he's one of those guys that always throws down. He's always with the boys. He's always helping out. He's building his own ramps. I would love to see him ride out of this. This would, I don't think it would be a world's first. It'd be a world's first in competition, but I tell you what, Top Dog is ready to rock, and he nailed it in the rain. If he can do it then, I know he can do it right now. I mean, that's gotta be a confidence builder in itself right there, to get out there and do this in the rain and make it happen, but can he make it happen here when the judges are watching? Here we go, Scott Fitzgerald, first attempt. Superman C, oh, he's under. Yeah, oh, he got it. it out. Yes. That was awesome. Top Dog, absolutely amazing. I, it's just so cool to see this guy. I mean, you have no idea how tough it is. You can do it to a foam pit, you can do it to an airbag, you can do it to, to whatever, but when you're out here in front of, you know, 20,000 people, live TV, you get no warm up. You can't warm up on that jump, you just gotta go for it. Especially it's the last event of the night and you've been sitting here all day long and these guys haven't had any practice since way earlier in the day. And I mean, I, I, I thought that was gonna go south. Yeah, which, I didn't think he, what, he, was a, he was a little under on the takeoff. He does not get the pop. He gets great extension, pulls it in, and tucks it right there at the end. Almost goes over the bars. Now, do you think he's going to go for a second one and try to do it better? Do you think he's going to go home and just uh, be happy he's, he's, uh, he's alive on this one? I don't know. Just look at that extension. Yeah, top dog. Watch the chest. He gets slammed <laughs> into a bar pad right there, and then just looks around like, yeah, I'm good. I made it. Hey, I'm going to say that was about as good as it could go. That was, it was an amazing extension. Oh. He rode out of it. Oh, great, great job, man. That's, uh, that's amazing to come into an environment like this and be able to pull it off. Uh, you know, that's the first time he's hit that ramp to a landing. That's, uh, that's really impressive. Is he going back into athlete staging or no? It looks like I'm going to block the plank here, Jack. He might be lining up for another tent. Yep, 89-3-3. That is a solid score. Uh, what, uh, she, what did uh, Sheeny get? Sheeny got an 86.66. Yeah. Hey, that so puts him ahead of Sheeny. That is awesome. So the front flip, the ramps, yeah, top dog. They call it the cheetah ramps. It's uh, mixed reviews. It was built for like a, a show ramp. It's still, so it, it basically helps you to do the front flip, but it's like doing a one and a half back flip. It's one of the most difficult things to land. It's one of the most difficult things to time, even to that airbag landing. I broke tip fib. Um, it is sketchy, and he just absolutely nailed it. Did not, uh, you know, he went full on the extension. He went, he didn't skip. No, extension was great, and he fought for that, every last bit of that, to ride that thing out and hang on. And uh, yeah, that, That's the ramp. So everyone comes out to my house, and they're like, I want to hit the automatic front flip ramp. And they hit it, and they get ejected, shot off the <laughs> motorcycle. Their bike breaks, and after they're like, oh, well, that's not easy. I'm like, yeah, who said it was? It's like I, hitting a curb. I've heard people describe that thing plenty of different ways, but for you to say it's like hitting a parking curb, that's a brand new one on me. So he's, th he's got the goggles off. He's taking the helmet off, so I'm going to go venture or guess it. Scott's happy with that. He's not going to take run at number two here, and he's going to sit that puts him in the first. Point three three, but look, look at, at that. it again. Great, he even looks over at the judges. Look at this, he pulls it around at the end. And yeah, music perfect on that. And he, he rides it out. He is leading. Top Dog is leading. Nitro World Games, the front flip, Superman Seacraft, in here front flip. Uh, first time it's been uh, been written out, I believe, in a, in a competition. So this is uh, this is pretty cool. Look at, look at that smile. He gets a little it. wobbly, but rolls out and hangs on right there. And uh, puts himself, so it's Fitzgerald, Sheehan, and Jones. Your top three as of right now, that 89.33. He says, one and done, I'm good. So he's gonna park it over there and watch the rest of this competition unfold out here tonight. Three down and four riders left to go. Travis, we are set to bring in uh, Jaden South. This, another this, Gold Coast team. Okay, th these guys, are, they're all so strong. When he steps through this bar, he said it's so hard to get through. He has to go like he's doing a, a double front flip or a two and a half front flip off the takeoff and then he stops everything, gets his lengthy legs through the, basically through the handlebars, it, no speed runs, he's gonna go straight into this. this. He's never landed this, he's never ridden away, it has never been done, it probably will never be done again. This could be one of the coolest things, this could be your night winner. Oh, he's been coming up a little short of rotation, he has to throw this like his life depends on it because it absolutely does. Stop the rotation, 
full extension, get your legs through, and then he's got to figure out how to get back because he's going to be in front of the motorcycle, 250 pound motorcycle, upside down. If he lands short or doesn't get his feet back through, it, it, it's it's over. I don't I don't care, airbag or no airbag, it's bad. <laughs> We're being told no run up to this one. He is just going to go straight for it here on this first attempt right here. It's Jaden South, Nitro World Games rookie competitor. Probably the coolest, most technical trick that you will ever see using the front flip ramp and just absolutely everything he can has to go into getting this rotation started and then he has to stop it to get his feet through. Let's see if he can do it. Nope. Oh! That was actually really good. The extension was there but just didn't have the rotation on that one. That's uh, the airbag looks soft. That is a, that's a hard landing coming down uh, pretty much on that bike. I was amazed at how far he was able to get that rotation. L look how many G-forces go on that landing. That bike's, it's, it's pretty bangled. Um, love to see that again and hopefully show the replay here soon, but he took oh, it's off. coming. He just didn't quite get the snap on that takeoff. He was thinking more about getting his feet through. Um, we've seen him come up short, but somehow he manhandled that motorcycle round and got it very, very close. So. Let's take another look. Watch the pop right there. The extension, but just he's in a bad spot right there for that rotation. Look at him. Look at him hit. Oh, man, he got that thing really good there at the end. That's, that's a hard impact. He's a strong guy, but he just was thinking too much about getting his feet through. Did not quite get that at all. That's such a slam. And you're thinking, all right, airbag, but yeah, you bounced. I mean, you got the full brunt of the impact on his entire back. Yeah, and then, like, I mean, you knew as soon as he took off from the limb. I mean, he, you oh, called it right did when he hit the Did you see Josh, limb. the track guy, was helping him just trick, belly flopped over the edge? But no, so you need, he goes, man, it's so hard because it's a three-step trick. And I need to take off like I am doing. I'm going to over-rotate a double front flip, like full Greg Duffy, Moto Record Crew style. And he goes, if I don't do that, um, I'm not getting around. But then I have to stop everything and get my feet through. If I can't get my feet through, then I over-rotate the flip like it's a one and a half, and I land straight to my head. So he needs to do... Start the rotation for a double, stop the rotation, get your feet through, get your feet back through, and then pull the thing around. And I, sorry, I didn't mean to call that at the, the beginning. He just, he did not get that snap that looked like a double front flip hey, to me, but he apologize. still almost pulled it around. That's why you're in the booth, and that's why you get to call as the analyst for this, because you know, I mean, you're out there in the trenches, you do this. So, I mean, you saw it right out of the gate, but he still tried with everything that he had to fight to get I, I, that around. I can't believe how close he got on that. That is, and he didn't skip on the extension. These guys, these Aussies, they go for it. Once they're in their full commitment. Just did not quite get the extension, but man, I, I tell you, that's, it just worries me so much. He's going about one third the height that these guys are going to be going on the triples tonight, uh, and it's just the, the impact still on this landing is uh, is quite uh, it's it's impressive. That was that was still that was amazing. That was absolutely awesome. He got his shoulders through. He got his feet through. He didn't dislocate his shoulders. Like the amount of strength that it takes to pull your body through and then pull it back through and then continually rotate that around and it looks like Southie wants another go. I was just gonna ask you that like they're over there cranking away on that thing and trying to kick things into place like are they just trying to wheel that thing out of there or is he potentially thinking about trying this again? No he, these guys have no quit in them um, you know the bike's gonna be a little bit mangled but he knows what he did um, it, it's just it's really difficult because think about this as you're going up the takeoff if you commit to doing basically a double front flip rotation you have to then stop it somehow so if your feet get caught you do a one and a half you drop out of the sky you over rotate you land straight on your head so part of his body saying yes i want to rotate a double front flip off the takeoff so that i get my feet through and i stop it but if he catches his feet on the crossbar pad then that rotation does not slow down. He can't slow it down with his extension on the trick. And I mean, it's it's not good. It's, it's, a, it's a really bad situation. So he's got to look at that two ways. The safer option is to just make sure your feet get through. But if he wants to ride this out, if he wants a chance to win this competition, he's going to have to full commit on all three of the steps. You can see him right there trying to kick the right side of the bars in place and Harry Bink over there talking to him. What do you think Harry's telling him right now, Travis? Well, Harry did the rock solid front flip um, and his bike was bent up, he was banged up, but he got out there and went for it. The hardest part about this is he knows what he needs to do to land this, 
but the bike's not perfect. As you can see, he's, I mean, he's trying to bend everything back. It's still going to be bent when he takes off, but Southie, no matter what this bike is, I think he's going to throw those goggles on, and I think he's just going to full send it. And that's just the embodiment of that grit and that spirit right there, just wanting to make this happen, wanting it so bad right there. Again, I, you know, you didn't get the rotation around, but let's talk about the execution, and you keep hammering home the point about getting over the bars and getting back over the bars right there. Pulled that off perfectly. The extension was great. And still, even though he didn't have enough pop, and you called it right off the lip right there, he uh, just still tried to fight that I, thing I around and did not let go and was trying to just do everything in his power to will that one around. Yeah, it, it just <laughs> shows you, well, it shows you how good he actually is at doing front flips. Because at the end of the day, kind of like our Willie and stuff, you know, when you see him do the front flip bike flip, um, you're still stuck in the air really short, like where he's going to land straight upside down. And then he's able to get himself back on it to restart the rotation of this 250 pound machine. And so right now, this is a sketchy situation. His bars are bent. That's gonna make it harder for him to get his feet through the bars and back. But you know what? I think he's got this. I really think that adrenaline is gonna help do everything. He's got the, the rear of his bike. Nothing is, is matched. Everything is sideways. But you know what? I, I got I got a dollar on it. I say he's got this. All right, I'll walk that plank with you. Let's put a dollar on. He's got the helmet back on. The goggles Here we are go. on. Can Jaden South pull this one off on attempt number two? And you see they got that bookmark kind of there off the side. And so all the guys have different spots. They kind of start and they'll uh, they'll mark that. They'll walk it out in practice and kind of say, okay, how far do I need to get this exactly the same as I have it at my home and practice? But you know, as he's flipping, he doesn't have a lot of those landmarks. All he can see when you go up, all you can see is these bright lights. I mean, it looks like everything's bright, but it, you got you're completely blind, completely black above us uh, on the Suncorp Stadium, and you're so blind looking to the lights. So this is this is tough. Here we go, Travis. He's under power. Can he make it happen here? And attempt number two. Let's go. Stuck. Uh oh. Oh, so close! Oh my gosh, everything went wrong and he still almost pulled it off. I was gonna say, he looked like he got hung up getting the feet over the bars. He got it, he fought through anyway, got him back over cleanly and still tried to fight to get that one around. Look how, I mean, if you think that's a soft landing, look at that motorcycle. It is completely oh, destroyed. Man, good to see him walk away from this. Good to see him up. Crowd going nuts. I don't even think the crowd understands how have technical that trick is, especially for someone as tall as Southie is. This is a guy that the, the hardest trick for him to do is going to be a bar hop. And we'll see it on this replay. But he gets a little tangled up. I mean, you talked about it multiple times and we saw it happen. But still, even after all that fights, gets the extension, pulls him back. He, he got a better, so the snap was better right here. He takes off. He's got a better snap. But see, he his just, heels got hung up. Yeah, if his heels didn't get hung up on the way through and back through, he would have ridden that out. Man, that is heartbreaking to, to see that. I didn't see him get caught on the way back at real time speed, but. No, think about this. If you're there and you get caught here, you're stuck in front of the motorcycle just getting pounded. Like this is this is the sketchiest trick I've really seen tried. It's, it's amazing. I'm so proud of him for getting this far. I, wow. Especially trying to do that with bent bars and all. So you gotta give this guy props for the grit and determination to try this not once but twice. We'll send it down to Caroline, who's with Jaden now. We're down here with Jaden. First of all, are you okay? Yeah, I'm all good, just a bit disappointed. <laughs> yeah. With that win or learn mindset out here, what are you gonna take away from this and will we see you attempt it again? Oh, I've definitely got to have another crack at that. The second run, my bike was so bent, I couldn't even, I felt like I was just riding full bent coming in and I don't know, I just should have just got it around a little bit more. <laughs> Is there anyone that's been a part of this journey you'd love to thank? Yeah, I want to shout out to my mum for always supporting us. All these uh, fans, the management, just the track crew, just everyone that's come out to support us, friends, family, these are all absolutely amazing, love you all, so thank you. Give it up for Jade and everybody. I'm going to send it back to you guys. Yeah, and you could see that you got torn up pretty good there sliding out. You could see the the marks on the back of the jersey right there. But uh, it's just so close, just getting the heels tapped on those bars on the way over and the way back. Yeah, but I mean, you know, when the bike's perfect, it's still tough. And when the bars are bent, it's just, it's so difficult. And then the conditions, it's everything's so tough. But, you know, here we go. Next up. So we've got Clinton Moore. Five X Games medals to his name. All of them are bronze. He's the 2015 X Fighters World Tour champion. 
known for his flip combos and his burials. What do you think Clinton Moore is going to bring to the party out here tonight? Probably the Bundy from Bundaberg, Australia. This, uh, you know, well, maybe not. I, he's been really uh, close to the hip on what he's doing here. I expected him to go out and freestyle. I think he could have given a run. You know, Harry Bank, there's XJO, uh, Clinton, all of these guys were expected to do freestyle. And when, you know, Big Best Trick got so... Um, that so much hype everyone just pulled out of uh, the freestyle run and said you know what I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna put in something that no one has ever seen uh, you know Nitro World Games is the big air of action sport let's throw it so he's going with a different ramp and he's going with the, the Levi ramp the next generation ramp it looks like he's coming at it right now he's not wasting any time he's going right at for first hit right there yep body burial really really clean that I mean I can't believe he makes that look like that's that's something that we've tried to do for so many years and there's very very few people that are doing it it's another day in the office on the body burial there for Clinton Moore and uh, what's uh, now what no well, he's, still, he's still got the Bundy so I've seen a body burial. I think he might have been looking for a heel clicker after that or a, a, another variation of that trick that's what I was gonna ask combo out of that possibly man I I'm just maybe that's a, maybe he's warming up I'm, okay don't be wrong this is one of the most difficult tricks you'll ever see done. But to back out of FMX, I know he's got something that he's thinking. I haven't, no one else in the world does a Bundy. I think this could be a warm up trick for that. I think it also could be a warm up for adding another trick. Maybe get that foundation down on the first one. Uh, I'd be surprised if he doesn't go for another second second run here. It was also interesting to me how quickly he went after it. Like, he didn't waste any time. He didn't stop and reset. He just came around, went under the caution tape, and just went full power to go into that. So we are about to find out what he's got in store here for attempt number two. You know, something you're not, uh, no one really thinks about, but these guys have been there. We, they practiced earlier today, six hours ago. And now, like, there he goes. He's getting hyped up. He's got his adrenaline up. Uh, everyone, you know, the crowd's here. They, no one's leaving the stands. It's, uh, you know, for a Monday, just huge thanks to, to everyone that's out there for, uh, for sticking around, for coming back another day uh, to see history go down in Nitro World Games. Yeah, Clinton's pumped. Something, something is going down here. I, I, I would assume it's a Bundy, you know, his signature trick, but this is, this is going to be awesome. I'm, I'm excited. Okay, here we go. Back under the caution tape. Taking a lap around to uh, greet the fans right there. He is under power here for attempt number two here. Second final jump for Clinton Moore. Bundy, get it! <laughs> Almost loops out of the landing. That is absolutely amazing. Only one in the world really pulling that off. And doesn't just do it. That was a one-handed Superman, basically. Halfway through the Bundy, that burial that he does. He is just hanging on by, like, his fingertips. Uh, absolutely amazing. A lot of strength. Uh, Solid, solid run. That is uh, definitely the most technical uh, any kind of body burial you can do. Uh, he's, he's known for the burials. Uh, very, very impressive run there. We actually didn't get a score for that first attempt, so we'll have to see how both of these jumps score Look, once we get through watch these Watch this, watch this right here. He is just up in the air, almost doesn't get his hand back there, gets his feet back on. That is, that is, the extension on that was bigger than I've ever seen. Look at that uh, goon ride wheelie out of it. Yeah, where that left hand is. Look at this, right here, he is just, oh, he even went through oh, the bar. Oh. See the bars move oh. on that too? That was the most stylish body barrel I have ever seen. Look, he's in the air, he's boot grabbing, he's doing the executioner while he's up there, and then he misses his hand on the way. How does he get back on this? Just last second with that left hand right there. And then the Ronnie Mac out of it. <laughs> oh, good, good work, good work, Cliff. That is awesome. 86.33 on his second run. Uh, top Dog still that, leading. I was going to say, Top Dog's in that top spot, followed by Josh Sheehan and now Clinton there in that number three spot. Yeah. So that second one was the favorite for the judges. So that's the higher of the two. So that's got him in podium contention as of right now. And well, now we're down to our final two riders in this event, Travis. And we've got J.O. Archer coming uh, up next. So here we go. I, I, it is I time for I, these I, two gentlemen to shine. These guys, they have it. They've been working on it. They're both, I mean, J.O.'s just coming back from a broken femur that he got going to an airbag. He's never been to the landing. I cannot stress how insane this is, that they're going to be hitting a jump. Look at all the crew. You got Josh and all the track crew down there trying to get this just perfect, but it's they can't even hit this ramp to the landing. They're not exactly sure where they're going to land. He's going for a trick where you're so high, where you're strapped on to the motorcycle. If you miss the pop, there's nothing you can do. I am... I, I equally want to walk out and just... I just hear about his success as I do want to watch this.
We have two oh. riders left to go. We are looking at potential history in the making out here tonight. Who is going to walk away with the win? And will we have a Nitro World Games first? We will find out when we come back to the Suncorp Stadium here in downtown Brisbane for the conclusion of the 2022 Nitro World Games. Welcome back, everyone. Nitro World Games 2022 here in the Suncorp Stadium. If you're looking at the landing right there and you're wondering what in the world is that, that is the LEGO City Innovation Craft. All you LEGO City and Nitro Circus fans out there, LEGO City and Nitro Circus have partnered up to help kids make their imaginations come to life. Kids submitted their best LEGO City ideas for the chance to have their design built into a life-size LEGO City car. We are here today to reveal the winner's design and witness this gigantic LEGO City car go down one of our Nitro World Games ramps for the very first time. So an awesome thing to see the youth design these vehicles and the chance to watch their dreams become reality out here and actually get them out here inside the Suncorp Stadium here at the World Games and to see if their dream can actually fly out here. So first up, we've got the idea George from, from New, George Zealand. New Zealand, nine years old. We're going to see if his design can actually fly out here tonight. Actually, we're just going to see if this one makes it down the landing. I think uh, we, uh, we're looking for volunteers out of the crowd and no one raised their hand, but I think this Lego is going to be absolutely awesome. And uh, we'll see. Uh, they were uh, passing that idea around. They were talking about Todd Mine doing that earlier. And he was like, no, I don't think so. I got to get up here and announce BMX. I out here tonight, but they were trying to get multiple people to get out there to do it. Heck, they even asked Micah if he wanted to go down. He said, no, I'm busy out here hosting tonight as well, but we're gonna see if they can send this thing down the lander. Hey, Gecko, you ready, bud? Let's see it. There we go, Gecko. Oh, hey, I think Gecko's a little nervous. He's done some pretty big, oh, here we go. Drop it in. He's a little heavy on the back end right there, but he rolls out of that one, no problem. So Gecko makes it down right there. And George from New Zealand's idea come to life right here. 
Let's send it down to Micah Kranz now. So I think Max from Australia has made uh, the second uh, Lego City Innovative uh, Mobile. Oh, there we go. Our Willie smashed himself, makes it through the entire Nitro World Games. And then racks his knee on the <laughs> steering wheel right there. After two podiums, it's, it's the Lego innovation that hits him on the knee. So now let's send it down to Micah Kranz. Thank you so much, Jimmy. Thank you so much, TP. I am with the six-year-old engineer that put this whole LEGO City car together. His name is Max, and Max is pretty cool. I got, I'm going to ask him a couple of questions. Max, what inspired you to design your car the way you did? Because I race dirt carts, and it looks like a dirt cart, and it has a big engine to make it go fast, and just make it look very cool. That's what I want to talk <laughs> about. There, yeah, yell at Max, absolutely. Max, you put an eight foot flame off the back of your car. Do you like fire? Yes. Typical, I like that. One final question. Do you like playing with Legos when you're home, hanging out by you and the homies? Yes, and it's very cool and I never get bored with it. That's what it's about. Are you ready to see your car fly? Yep. Let's do it. Who's ready to see it fly? Make some noise for Max Lego City. And the homie Harley, he's going to make this thing fly. Oh, boy. Harley up on top. About to make Max's uh, Lego. Oh, they took that one all the way up oh, on top of no. the gigantic roll in. I like Max's stance right. right there. He's like, I designed this. You guys get out there, and you better not mess this up. Look how top heavy fly. that vehicle is. Oh, I, I'm, I'm more nervous for him now than I was doing when he was doing the competition. Can we get three? <laughs> Two, you you got him out. four or five people up there holding on to the back end of that thing, trying to look at him. He's like, what did I sign up for? That, that is the look of regret right there, potentially. And Max oh, is like, I hey, come on. Helmet. I got things to do tonight, people. Let's see this thing fly. So, oh, boy, here we go. Harley, drop it in. Looks uh, looks all right. Sends it. Send the, it. The form is there, and he lands it. Oh, my goodness. Give it up. Oh, <laughs> I definitely would have gone with a bigger helmet. Look at Max. That is awesome. Max is like, yeah. Max is like, yeah, I designed that. Max. All right, he's walking. Good job. Max, what's it like to watch a toy you designed fly 40 feet through the air? I think it's double cool. Are you going to jump in and drive it next time? Maybe. <laughs> How about some noise for Max and Lego City putting this awesome thing together? That car is awesome, Max. Great job, dude. Oh, Max is a cautious one right there. He's yeah, saying, yeah, I, I just designed, maybe I'll get it. Look at the height, look at the pop that he got right there. Oh, on the is, he doesn't even know what to, he just looked over like, did this just work? Am I living, am I gonna survive this? I'm pretty impressed with the flame feature on the back end of that thing didn't break <laughs> off because it, it wasn't attached to that thing very well when it was in the production office. Uh, and it even Allen. tail drags right there. Oh. I think he's Harley's more con uh, confused that it made it. But he's trying to keep that. Watch this dismount. Yeah, he's trying to keep that <laughs> steering wheel out of his undercarriage right there, Travis. Oh my gosh! He's like, I'm not trying to get gored by this thing, but take another look at it. Lean it back, just a casual Monday night. I feel like Harley. That went better than than anyone could have ex <laughs> expected. I, you know what? Max agrees. That's why he's out there with his arms folded. He's like, "Good job. You didn't wreck my vehicle." All right, now I just I just got to point out right now uh, they are setting up a triple back flip ramp. And they're actually, both of these guys, so like I had a different shoulder hurt than Josh Sheehan, where we're working on the bigger ramp, the different stuff. Um, I had to line up one side, he lined up the other side because uh, you know one of our shoulders, one of our arms pulled harder. These guys both have equally messed up left shoulders. So they both pull to the right. Now what's interesting is they actually are both lining this ramp up. I mean, they've never gone to this landing. They know about where they land, they know what it's gonna take. Um, you know, Harry Bink, is gonna need to land a little deeper. He likes to spot his rotations. He's gonna be a little bit under where J.O. J.O. likes to go and get all of his rotations done. J.O. has a little bit more of a chance to land high on this landing, which is gonna give him a softer landing. But he also, if he goes long, which he's not gonna know before he hits it, before his first run, um, you know, if he goes long, he's probably at a higher risk of over-rotating. I think they can both do it, but this is, uh, this is their journey, man.
Well, you can see him down there talking it over right now, looking it over with Josh Ian and Jackson Strong. But before we get to it, they're getting themselves psyched up right now. Let's take a look at the journey that these two gentlemen have been on trying to chase the triple backflip. land a triple on a hard landing right away from it, it it's awesome I just, it's still sinking in it's such an amazing feeling for starters a massive thanks to travis pastrana and nitro circus for being crazy and having these crazy ideas and and just for all my sponsors for helping me out for getting me sorted with the gear and, and product for allowing me to do what i do so awesome thanks oh and massive thanks to the aussie guys for coming out it just really took the stress away and, and made me feel more at home so it uh, made everything a lot more fun. Shinny is a bogan from Perth that just did the biggest trick in action sports and potentially the craziest stunt that's ever been done. And he is just Joshy, inspiration to the working class man and inspiration to me. Travis set off on this journey, he had no idea how it would end. It was far more difficult than he ever imagined. The hardest part was finding an athlete that could continue where Travis had to stop. Josh Sheehan proved to be the only one in the world with the skill, strength, and heart to match Pastrana's vision. Together, Travis and Josh elevated action sports to a height never before imagined.
on most tricks, when someone else does it, someone else copies it. That's not going to happen with this trick. With the force, the height, you know, the, the speed, and just so much energy in the air spinning, and how are you gonna land that? To reach that is absolutely putting your life at risk. But you can't drop from outer space and expect to walk away from it unless you land on the wheels. Just seeing the footage of the, the triple flip to the bag, I mean, it just looks so violent and so many panic revs and so tucked up just to get that thing moving around. I don't really know what would possess anybody to want to do this. Man, I, I don't know what, why anyone would want to do this either. I, I was scared to so much going to an airbag, but I tell you what, these guys, um, and if you're wondering why it's taking so long, they're more than seven Gs on the takeoff. They're bending handlebars on the takeoff. So they're basically getting everything out there. Uh, everyone has a specialized trick for, you know, for, for best tricks. And this is what um, I've always encouraged. And I've always thought, you know, the guys are going home, they're welding their own stuff, they're building their own stuff. Uh, but this is the only landing that we have big enough to sustain what all these guys are doing. So. Um, they're making sure that ramp is perfect because it's seven G's on the takeoff, um, you know, with 210, 220 pound riders uh, of solid muscle plus 250 pounds of motorcycle. If that lip moves an inch, there, it, it's it's over. If anything happens, if the, the back of it comes up. So you see these guys, they're taking a little extra time to make sure that. And rightly so. Yeah, I mean. This is the not the thing that you're going to want to rush. No, and I think that's what you see all the other riders. See Josh Sheehan down here. Uh, you, I mean, literally every single person is there making sure like that everything is perfect because, you know, as much as we want to see progression, as much as that's what, you know, Nitro War Games is all about, I, I, I have my reservations and these guys, you know, they're going to do it anyway. The landing, it's as safe as you can get. Uh, but these guys have been sitting around all day. They've been watching amazing stuff go down, but the amount of stress. And then also, this is the first time these guys will be doing it at night. So you're pretty blind doing a triple. It rotates so hard. Um, you got to be so perfect. You're hooked in. You're strapped. They're going to strap their toes onto these motorcycles. Um, and when they take off, they go completely black. Can't see anything in the sky. And then they're blinded by the lights. And then, you know, you see the spot the landing for a millisecond. Um, you know, the best part is that J.O., who's going first, doesn't really spot the landing. He rotates as hard as he can. And when he f finishes his third rotation, you know, he opens up as hard as he can to try to ride out of it. But they still don't know how many Gs. Just doing a double, it's the hardest thing to ride out of. So, I mean, just, that, I, I can't even imagine what's going through their, uh, their minds right now because this is, this is by far and away the biggest thing that's ever happened in a competition. I mean, a triple backflip, no-hander won scooters. A scooter weighs 13 pounds. They're going for triple backflips, eight stories in the air, 80 feet in the air, seven Gs on the takeoff, strapped in to their motorcycle, knowing that they both go right a little bit, that the landing is fairly wide, that it does have a little bit of give, but they're coming down from outer space. You can see that the concrete weights that they've got strapped to this thing right there to keep it from moving. And going back to something that you said earlier in the competition before we even got to J.O. and Harry, uh, you know, they haven't ridden for hours. I mean, once we got competition underway, uh, before we even came on the air out here tonight, these guys have not been able to get out there and just even do some straight jumps just to warm up. So to sit here all night long and wait for this, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm so, what so stressed right, right now. now. The, the only great part about this is that you use every ounce of power the, the motorcycle has, you use every ounce of strength that you have. You pull as hard as you can. You don't check for anything. You hold on for what's going to be about a four second ride. It's going to feel like 30 to these guys. And, and I know they can do it. They are dialed. They are professional. J-Ho has been chopping at the bit for three years. He has done all the research. They have gone through so many renditions of ramps to get it to this point where today is the day that they are going to do something that has never been done in competition. Should it be done? Probably not. But you know what? They're in. The crowd's in. This is absolutely, I mean, dude, my, my butterflies. Stomach it's is butterflies. Down to the final two riders. You saw the history, the evolution of this. Josh Sheehan did it in 2015 at your compound, Travis. And these guys have been chasing this for quite a while. And as you said, history in the making out here tonight as it's never been done in a competition. And you have your final two riders that are chasing history out here tonight. Now, 
look, look at the sweat going on. He just wiped his brow with his gloves. I mean, it's something you don't really think about, but he's, you know, there's so much that goes into this. The ramp is ready. You saw Josh right there with uh, uh, the guy with the mullet, right? These guys, they put their hearts and soul into building these ramps as well. I mean, everyone is here we go boys ladies and gentlemen boys and girls it's time for the big show look at everyone down there with our staff on the field the people in the stands most of them are starting to stand up right now as the enormity of this situation is about to set in here we go you're History. about to see something you've never seen before ladies and gentlemen oh are we doing speed runs what are uh, we doing i have no idea i just my nerve like the hair on my arms is standing up right now either way this I don't is, think no. Jay is going to take a speed run. He is uh, he is in. Here we go. He is under power. Uh, nope, speed run. Sizing it up right here. But I to try to accurately describe the enormity of this moment out here tonight. I mean, it's it's darn near impossible. I and mean, how high in the air are they going? Eight stories. You're dropping eight stories. The landing is three stories tall. If he hits the top, J.O. is going to need to hit close to the top of the ramp. He has no, he has a good idea of where he's gonna land, but this is the first time he's going to that landing. This is the most nerve wracking thing I've ever been a part of. It's a one thing to do it in a backyard with your friends, with your good vibes, with all the setup. The nerves in this stadium, and here we go. Here we go, the lights are rolling, the cameras are rolling. Here comes J.O. Come on, Archer. J.O. No, okay, you know what? This is one of those things that, uh, this is going outside the books. This is, it's a competition, but this is a stunt. This is so much gnarly and so much impact and so much rotation. Everything has to be perfect. And if it's not perfect on any one of the steps, He's, he's going into the ground. Now, Harry's got to watch this. Harry's got even more stress going on, thinking of what he's going to well, do next. You could see, I mean, like, he, he was putting his helmet on, then he took it off. Like, I mean, I can't even imagine. You know, they looked super calm when they walked up to this thing earlier, and they were talking it up with Josh when the ramp crew were uh, moving this thing over to get it a little more left. Like, we were talking about getting the scram on and everything, getting the weights down. Here we go. All right. You Good. can hear Come on, everyone on your feet. Let's go, J.O. Come on. In the stadium. Here we go. He's got good. Take off. Looks good. It looks Two, good. Three. And He's got it. it. First try. Oh, oh, are you kidding Triple me? Triple backflip. Triple <laughs> freaking backflip. Oh, perfect. Oh, First God. time around. He just did the impossible, ladies and gentlemen. He stuck it. First time ever off that ramp. The ramp proved it perfect. The setup was perfect. He overcame the nerves. Seven G's of impact landed exactly where he needed to land. This roof is about to come down. <laughs> he can't even get up on top of that thing fast enough right now. I can't even imagine what was going through their minds prior to that. Look how it's steep this landing is. You drop out of the sky vertically. Take a bow, Dan. Man, Look at his eyes right now, Travis. I can't even imagine what he's going through. And I'm thinking about this right now. What is Harry going through? I'm sorry not to jump ahead, but... Listen, I mean, like we were talking about right before J.O. I mean, he was gearing up and they took his helmet off and he was walking around like... You can see it on both of their faces. When you talk about J.O. wiping the sweat from his brow with his glove right there. No, but then your hand's going to slip off. Yeah. Like, oh, and now this feels like the end of the show and Harry... Is oh man, I if we see another look at that. Let's oh, see a replay. You're about to get a whole slew of replays, my friend. And I, I can't even imagine the weight that has that, just come that off that, is that a man's man shoulders. Composed. He did something, I mean, to a landing, sticking it perfect. So I'm so J.O., I'm proud of you, buddy. Picture perfect. Oh, that could not have gone better. Look at this all the nerves, fighting off the G force, fighting off everything. Snaps absolutely perfect. Doesn't spot the landing. Doesn't spot the landing again. Exactly where he knew it was. The ramp set up perfect. The landing was, I think he surprised himself on that landing. He almost forgot how to ride for a second. It was like Chad Reed on his first backflip. J.O. Archer, the perfect snap. Look at the composure in the rotation there. I, I, I would have never, I am so happy for him. I'm so proud of him. There's three years to get those three flips around. Everything came together on a perfect night. The crowd stayed till Monday, and he, look at this. Look at him pulling everything that he has. Oh, he, he stopped it. That was I, perfect, it's perfect. And look, I mean, you call, look at the drift right there. He's drifting from rider's left to rider's right. And I mean, you can see the reaction. I mean, you can see it through the goggles right there. Here, the his ramp eyes look at the riders. Out of his head. This, this is the coolest part about action sports is that everyone, top dog right there. I, I mean, he, uh. Well, let's send it down now to Caroline, who's with the man of the hour.
history has been made and we are down here with JL Archer. Talk us through the emotions, is it relief, the journey, your mind, body, there's been so much that's gone into this process. He's got to put his teeth in, hang on. <laughs> oh, honestly, I cannot describe this feeling. This is so much more than a competition and a trick to me. I've dedicated my whole life for the last three years to doing this. This moment right now, I've had a lot of obstacles, a lot of broken bones, a lot of knockouts. But I tell you what, I would do it a hundred times over to relive that again. Thank you, Brisbane! Woo! journey and made it a reality. I'd like to thank Black Rifle Coffee. They're, um, they've been supporting me for over a year now. It's been amazing. I'd like to thank Freeform Action Sports, Joshy Glenn, the whole track crew, all the Nitro team for not giving up on me. This man just here, Josh, he's been with me since the start of this whole triple flip. A lot of people gave up, didn't believe me. He stuck by me the whole way. So I'd like to thank my friends and family. My family are up here watching me. Love you guys. Um, my girlfriend Beth, everyone, all the boys, Top Dog, Harry, Southie, everyone, thank you. Congratulations, J.O. It's now time to watch Harry do it. How do you feel about that? He can do it. He can do it. I know he can. Let's go. Thank you. Harry, uh, that is a man that's very well composed after what we just saw happen. I, I, I can't believe how well he executed that top to bottom, handled the nerves like a seasoned champ. But right now, Harry Bink can still win this competition. A triple backflip just went down. The crowd went nuts. Everyone's, and it's not I, over. Th that's he what landed, I'm trying to wrap he my landed head around. Perfect, but then he got a little like whiskey throttle out. Look, just to land a triple backflip is absolutely amazing. But th this competition is, I mean, I can't believe there's two guys that are trying it. Uh, what is Harry thinking right now? I mean, the whole stadium just shut down when J.O. did this. But J.O. <laughs> Shoot, I, Harry can still do this. I, I, I was going to say, I mean, we just witnessed history right here. It's such an intense moment, and we're about to get another one right now. And, I, you know, what about the judges right now? If, you know, two triple backflips, like, how, I mean, they're going to have to, like, literally look at the minutia between the two to try to differentiate. There, there's, no, there's nothing less on the line. There's no less risk because someone else was able to pull it off. Hopefully that vibe will help Harry to be able to do this. Uh, Harry's approach is completely different, though. Um, he's going to take a couple backflips to get warmed up before he does the triple. I think that's a, a really smart move. Uh, he's had to actually send the doubles so big because when you're doing the triple, you need every bit of throttle. And if he doesn't power through, he won't land in the spot that he needs to. So this is a really smart attempt. You can't even straight jump this jump and get to where you need to. So he's warming up with double flips to test the distance. That's absolutely insane that we're at that point. But it, that's just, it's a different approach right there. And... And We're going to give him the opportunity to do what he needs to do to shine out here tonight. This is a little bit different from Nitro World Games compared to like an X Games or something else. This is about progression. And whenever it takes for that progression to be as safe as we can possibly make it, to be as successful as we can possibly make it, if riders need different ramps, different landings, if they build it themselves, here we go. Harry Bick warming up with a double backflip. And, and to see how he does that and how casually, I mean, Again, going back to the history books that we were talking about earlier, I mean, with you and the double flip in 2006, look at where we're at now that you can just casually send one of those. And so, it's a warm-up. So Harry's going to need to go further than that to pull off the triple, but it's hard to get wide open that hard uh, off the throttle only, I should say only doing two. But when you do a double backflip, even a laid out double backflip, it has a tendency to probably let off a little bit to not overspin it with a ramp that's that steep. Um, unfortunately, I'd say if Harry ends up that high on the landing ramp, the way he's been doing, he's been spotting the landing, slowing down the rotation, he's got a better chance of landing smoothly, but he's going to have to get further down the landing. See it, he's got to get it deeper down there. There's Clinton Moore and J.O. Archer. J.O. There's Pat Bowden, multiple time uh, World Games champion. I'd be surprised if Harry actually goes for this again, um, only because if he lands any shorter, he's going to bounce to the bottom, uh, but you, you never know. Whatever Harry needs, he's going to take it. Um, and a crowd's back on their feet. That's, that's too much for me. I'm about to have a heart attack. I, the here. intensity right now in this building, I mean, it's, it's indescribable. I mean, all the fans down there, everybody's on their feet. I mean, you've literally gotten everybody that have come out of the production offices, all the security staff, everybody here at the Suncorp Stadium. I mean, I mean, 
they've seen the Instagram clips, and I mean, we've kind of told that story a little bit. We've been teasing it, and to see it happen and come to fruition out here tonight under the lights, especially all right. after all the weather and everything else that we've gone through, and to see that finally happen out here with one more attempt at it by Harry Bean. Don't here say tonight. one more. Here we go. Look, our Willie is up there in the crowd, getting everyone fired up. He's hooking his feet in. I tell you, even doing a, a double flip attempt to a bag, you're always thinking like where your feet are. Like this position, here we go. Harry Bink, line it up. Double. That's where he needs to land. All right, he got it. So he needed, he needed to get that a little bit further. Um, so we have, J.O. basically has spent the better parts of three years. After um, Josh Sheehan did the triple, everyone's like, well, it's still the same amount of risk. I'm not going to do that again. We're never going to be able to get that in competition. And J.O. came to all the guys at Black Rifle and said, you know what, um, help me. Came to Nitro guys, came to, came to I mean, everyone. It went to, um, went to Harry Bing's house, set the ramp up. And Harry saw it and he goes, this is possible. And, uh, you know, Harry even coming in right now, Harry has a couple broken ribs, still not fully healed. Uh, but when he saw the opportunity to do this and he gave it a shot and it came around, he said, there's no way I can't. He goes, this is a moment that I have to be a part of. Look at our Willie, just, just revving the crowd up. Uh, the emotions right now are so high, but there's such a good vibe. If he can get the distance that he did on that last one, Harry is going to stick this and ride this thing out. Uh, he had one bad jump in practice when he just didn't quite get uh, everything that he needed off of it. I mean, look at these. These, are, these guys are huge. They are strong. They're bending handlebars on the takeoff. And you can see right there his gloves. He wants, he's sweating through the gloves. Um, yeah. And if, if you, you sweat through the gloves, it's slick. And if you pull off the handlebars, your feet are stuck to a 250-pound machine, and that's, that's it. So, um, you know, everything trying to get perfect, getting himself pumped up. Harry does good mad. He does good when, when he's just absolutely on the brink of berserk. The crowd is on their feet, uh, listen and he's to that there. Out there right now. This is what he needs. He needs that energy. I think he's got this. But he's got to get deep. He's got to go all out, all or nothing, and it looks like he's ready. That's the key you're saying is the deeper in the landing right there on the on the resi. Yeah, Jules, yeah, on the resi. It doesn't feel like a resi from 80 feet in the air, that's for sure. These, the landing is so tall, the takeoff's so tall that it doesn't look like they're that high, but here he goes. He's psyched up. He's ready. He's coming in, ladies and gentlemen. Whole new modification to the bike. It is lighter. It is better. He's hooking his feet in. There here he goes. We go. Harry Bink. Keep it straight, Harry. Puts that one down and just... He pulled that around so, so well. Just got a little bit uh, sideways on that, that landing, just a little bit under-rotated, sucked. Uh, honestly, if that was a dirt landing, I think he probably would have ridden out. Uh, just didn't quite have the distance that I feel like he's going to need to get that. You'd love to see him move the ramp a couple feet in. I know Harry can get on the gas a little harder, but as high as you go, you go another couple feet up for every you know half foot in distance. For how high he dropped out of the sky on that and just kind of slid out of that and bounced right back. I mean, you just watched a person do a triple backflip on a dirt bike and then bounce right back up. Fall from outer space. I'm sorry that I didn't talk at all during that. I, my it's heart, I, I can't. I, this is something, and Harry's gonna go again, and that bike is gonna be a little bit bent. If it's bent at all, as hard as they're pulling, it's really easy to go right, it's really easy to go left. He knows he needs about two more feet in distance four, which is about four more feet in distance up. He's gonna be going higher. Um, you know, I, I'm just happy he's walking away from this right now, and I, I know he's not walking away, he's gonna be hitting this again. Yeah, I, I'm still I'm absolutely blown away by how quickly he was able to slide out of that and get right back up. So Harry fighting through right now, just getting over a couple broken ribs, still not 100%. Um, his hand, uh, it doesn't look like it right there, but his hand is, is broken, and he doesn't care. He's going for this. Look, did not quite get the greatest snap, but pulls it around so tight. It, it, everything looked really, really good on that. You look at him pull that bike in. Look at the strength that it takes. We're gonna take two more looks at it right here from that angle right there. You can see the snap that he, I mean, look how high he is in the air on that rotation. I mean, his snap was just a little stripper. Watch how small he gets in this tight ball, gets that thing around. It, it was so close to perfect, but he just didn't have quite enough time to open up on that landing. Luckily, he got from that height, he got all of suspension. Uh, he got landed pretty much exactly like, if he just gets another three feet in distance, a little further down that landing, he'll have a second to open up. The amount of impact, the amount of G-forces that he's been taking into this, and as beat up as Harry is, the fact that he's even riding 
is absolute testament to just how much this means. You know, it's not about doing something first. It's about doing it. He doesn't care. Exactly. Metal, no metal. Harry wants this for him. He wants to be the man that was able to overcome all the fears, was able to put it together, and was able to land it in competition. This is absolutely amazing. Hell yeah, Harry. Here we go. Going to give it attempt number two. You see Ryan Williams over there giving a little extra motivation right there. All right, now, Whew. so when your bike is bent up at all, which I'm sure there's no way that it's not, you can't land from that high. Um, you know, people are like, oh, why, why didn't he just ride that out or how did it slide out? The, the amount of inertia that you have from a single backflip compared to a double backflip, you say you multiply uh, the energy as, as well as the difficulty by three for every flip. So, you know, this is nine times more difficult than a, than a backflip, which in 2000 we thought was completely impossible. And here these guys are warming up with laid out double backflips. And this is what concerns me a little bit. He's getting his bars straight. Like, he had a hard time getting around when everything was perfect. He knows he has to go a couple feet deeper. His bars are a little bit bent, which means he's probably gonna go a little bit right or a little bit left, depending on which side's down. Um, all these things are weighing through, and he's sweating. He's got, um, you know, he had sweaty palms on the first one. Now he's got all these nerves, he's got all this adrenaline, and he's gotta figure out how to calm that down. Harry does a good job when he's not calmed down. To be fair, he does probably better when he's angry, pissed off, and right now, uh, that's probably where he is. Yeah, just, well, how do you control the emotion for something like this? Try, especially on your second attempt, after going through that the first time around, but here we go, the goggles are back on, and you can see that his body language is getting a little more animated right now, so he's getting in that space that we saw before the first attempt right there. He's getting a little mad right there, starting to psych himself up, so here we go, Trav. Here we go, on a positive note, I've never seen Harry over-rotate this. He's gonna need all the anger, he's gonna need all the energy. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, get on your feet! This man is about to try his second triple backflip of the night. Okay, here we go. Line it back up for this one. And as you say that, you can see everyone, at least on, from our viewpoint over there on the far side of the stadium, up and out of their seats right here. He's got to get down that perfect level of full adrenaline and ideal timing. Uh, you see, look at his bike. He cut all the knobbies off. He wanted that whole front. He wanted everything to be as light as possible. Here he comes. Can he master his inner demons can he figure out how to forget about all the pain that he's in and can he launch this absolutely perfect on a second attempt here we go, here we go. he's under power with the second time being a charm looks good looks good looks good twice. perfect oh! hell yeah harry we've seen it not once but twice out here tonight are that, you kidding me that was good that landing was perfect that was did we just see a triple well, we saw a triple back was going to lose this event which one is going to win? I, I, it does does it matter even, if you did it first? Does it matter if you crashed on the first one? That landing was perfect. His takeoff was perfect. He was not sideways. Ne neither one of these athletes honestly care for win this competition. I, not at all. I, I can't even process the emotion that both of them are going through right now, knowing that they've done it and it's over. I mean, the pressure going into this and going back to what we said earlier, I mean, they haven't been able to ride at all, not even practice jumps at all for about six hours now. No amount of money is worth what they just did. No amount of fame or glory. These boys did it because they love what they do. They push the envelope. They figured out a way. I, I've been telling these guys from day one, do not come into these triple. Do not do it in competition. And they both said they could, and they proved themselves right and me wrong. They are the men. I mean, and with bent handlebars. I mean, it, look how bent that is. Look how straight he's going. Perfect. Could Money. not be any better. If that's not a hundred, if that is not a perfect hundred, I'm walking out. Somebody's getting a strongly worded letter from Travis if that's not a hundred in the judges' booth. Oh my God. I can't believe you've seen it twice tonight. I, I'm, I'm so relieved. Twice. I'm so proud of these guys. I'm so proud. Look at the track crew. Look at the riders. Look at the fans. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for all the support. Look at that bike was already overheating when he took off because oh. he took the radiator off the thing. Just, he can't believe it either. It was perfect. It was perfect form. It was perfect Boom. execution. It was, I mean, that, that he landed that triple like he was landing a single flip on like his first ever try. This was absolutely unbelievable. Look, you got the BMXers, you got R. Willie, you got the scooter riders. This was the greatest day, greatest single half hour in action sports history. I, I'm just proud to be in some way, shape, or form just here, to be a part of this, see where Nitro World Games has come.
Well, Thank you, boys. Let's send it down to Caroline one more time while the judges sort this one out. Caroline? What a fairy tale night to not just have one, but two, your friends, you've trained together, your compound is down the road. What has the journey been like to get here? Oh, it's crazy. I can't really put it into words. I've dreamed of a moment like this. Since I was a little kid, I watched Trav. I was in year six at school when Trav did the first double backflip, and I remember watching that over and over, thinking that I'd never live a moment like that. And to do that, like in front of all my idols that I never thought I'd meet, it is a dream come true. And the physicality, we have seen it online. We know you work hard. What has gone into that preparation? Uh, it actually, I, I actually only started riding. Like I learned this trick last week for the first time. So uh, my stress levels were just through the roof. Uh, man, I just I, I was in a really dark place before this just because I, I didn't have good flow state going and I couldn't even work out in the gym properly. Man, it's just, uh, I'm proud of myself for not giving up. And yeah, uh, hey, Joe, you're a legend. You stole that man. Well done. <laughs> you have made history, both of you. Congratulations. You've done it. Thank you. Well, you heard him saying he didn't think he would have that moment. Well, guess what? Harry Bing, that moment has arrived here in Brisbane in 2022, and it's arrived for both him as well as J.R. Travis, we saw history out here tonight, not once, but twice. Every, every, every event, but I mean, this is, I can't even explain the amount of time, the amount of effort. And yeah, so let, let's compare these jumps though, because th today we're going to have to make, so, I mean, the judges are going to have to decide which triple backflip loses. I, I, is that? <laughs> I, I, I you, can't imagine, I can't believe that sentence just came out of your mouth. So now look, J.O., the form's perfect, everything's perfect. He does it as a different form than Harry. Harry seemed a little bit more in control, but J.O. lands exactly where he needs to, and he just gets a little loose on that landing. But think about this, Harry didn't land the first time. If J.O. had a second run, would it have been as dialed as, as Harry's? But I mean, look at this. He's got his right bar is bent down. He's got a broken hand. He's got broken ribs. He's got an overheating motorcycle that's smoking because he cut off the radiator. And he landed it perfect. The amount of G-forces that they have to sustain on that landing. And these guys are the strongest human beings on, on ever to ride a motorcycle. Oh, so now it all comes down to the judges talking. You know, this it, doesn't one even, over. it doesn't even matter. This is the first competition I've ever been at. Okay. <laughs> they I, both win. I, I guess, <laughs> can we time. give out two gold medals, Trap? I mean, I can't believe that we're saying that someone's going to do a triple flip and then Harry Bing have to settle for second place. And Harry Bing with a 99 knocking on the door. Perfection right there. He is going to get the win out here in FMX Best Trick. Absolutely unbelievable. J.O. Archer landing at first, Harry Bink crashing the first one, hitting the second one absolutely flawlessly, and uh, both wa walking away. Honestly, this is a win for Action Sports. It's a win for FMX. It's a win for Harry, uh, for J.O., for, <laughs> for everyone that witnessed this thing, and for all of the, the track crew and those guys that support them. These track crew weren't our normal track crew. They were these guys' buddies that all took off work to make sure that it was dialed in. Ladies and gentlemen, Round of applause for two superhumans up there, both landing triple backflips today. I mean, even they're, they're sponsors, they're, they're friends. They're, how many people it took to make this a success? And their flat will, they J.O. Archer, or sorry, uh, uh, Top Dog, third place. These guys all really, really good friends all trained together, all worked together, all welded ramps and building stuff and working at the compound. And, uh, you know, kind of like our Willie Land, these guys are why this sport is progressing so far. And I'm just, I'm an honored to have watched tonight go down. I mean, it's an epic finish to the night out here. I mean, we've shown the video pieces all night long. We've talked about the journey starting with Josh Ian back in 2015 and with what these two have gone through over the last several years and going back to talking about J.O. and the amount of injuries and, and just, the, the grit, the determination, and that never give up attitude that brings you to that moment. And then here, inside a stadium packed full of fans, not to mention the weather and everything else that we've had to overcome this entire week long to make this happen. You know, hey, shout out to the fans. Uh, you know, 2020 was canceled. They stuck with us. They came back. It rains Friday, Saturday, Sunday. 
and they they are back you know over 10,000 people took off another day on monday thank you all for coming out to, to watch this i just cannot believe there was a competition in a motorcycle competition that a triple backflip did not win oh look at kiefer wilson from skateboard bird now they're hanging out giving Harry some congratulations i mean ah, this I, I my head still can't fully process and comprehend what we've seen out here tonight on multiple levels i mean we've had six amazing competitions but in the end, you see two guys come out here and throw down triple backflips. Scott Fitzgerald walks out of here with the bronze with that 89.33. JL Archer sends it first with a 98.33, but after a failed first attempt, Harry Pink comes back with bent handlebars and all Travis and puts it down picture perfect and walks out of here with a 99 flat to get the win in FMX Best Trick. Absolutely amazing. Then you got, I mean, Josh Sheehan off the podium. I feel like Josh, he had an amazing day, but Clint Moore, Adam Jones, American, not in last. There we go. Let's well, go down to Micah for the awards. This is, this is amazing. <laughs> Speechless. That was one of the wildest things I have ever seen. Australia, can I get some noise for this incredible event? Did you believe what happened? And let's discuss our best trick podium. In third place, make some noise for Scott Fitzgerald, top dog! In second place, Landing the first triple backflip ever done in public. Give it up for J.O. Archer! And our winner, gaining the highest score of any competitor in Nitro World Games history. Make some noise for Harry! How about some noise for this unbelievable podium? How about some shoeies? What do you guys think of this podium? Are you impressed? And our Lego City Innovation winner. Our prize goes to the very first ever done triple backflip. Give it up for J.O. Archer! And now a word from our winner. I got second, brother. You won the best one. You know what? It's been a pretty good night, Brizzy, but there's something I want to do to make it a little bit fucking better. Beth! To Beth. Will you marry me? Another Nitro World Games first, our first ever podium proposal right there. So how about that surprise finish right there? J.O. Archer making history out here tonight alongside Harry Bank and then throwing another curveball into the mix with the proposal as well. And he walks out of here with our Lego City Innovation Award in FMX Best Trick. I, I am at an absolute loss for words after what we've seen out here tonight and how we finished out here as the boys are preparing to do shoeies right there on the podium. And a big thank you to all of our competitors making it out here, all of the podium finishers. Thank you to the fans for coming back out here and braving through the rain to come back out here for the contingency night. History was made out here, and we thank you guys for waiting for three years for the Nitro World Games to return. And thank you, Brisbane and Queensland, for playing host out here inside the iconic Suncorp Stadium. That is a wrap for us. Don't forget, you can get, check out all the replays at nitroworldgames.com. 